States and around the world. I'm Jake Tapper in Washington, D.C., and there is just one single lead on the lead right now. National, global, political, metaphysical, all wrapped up in one millions of Americans going to the polls, choosing either the first female president or the first president who have never served in government or the military beforehand, a true outsider. Whomever wins, it will be one for the books, and signs are voters know that. Turnout appears to be quite heavy. We've seen Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and their respective running mates casting their ballots. We're about an hour away from the first exit poll data and three hours from the first statewide poll closing. We have also seen the Trump campaign fire the first legal shot over actual balloting in Nevada, and we've just seen a judge answer. We have correspondents out across the country. Let's begin with Sarah Murray. She's at Trump election night headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. Sarah, you're there at Trump election night headquarters in New York City. What is Trump doing today? Where will he be watching the returns? Well, Jake, Donald Trump is at Trump Tower today, and I just want you to think for a second about what it is like for him in these final hours. He has spent nearly a year and a half running for president. He has never done this before. And at this point, really, all you can do is wait. Your ads are on the air. Your field staffers are out in battleground states. And so Donald Trump is there in Trump Tower. He passed through the war room they have set up there earlier. Uh, I'm told he was greeted with a standing ovation uh, at Trump Tower. And he's, you know, touching touching base in some battleground states. He did a couple of radio interviews, but essentially just waiting. We're expecting him to stay there this evening to watch the returns there. And then later on, he's going to head over to the Hilton for his official victory party. Sarah, the Trump campaign filed this request with a, a Nevada court to try to preserve and separate the ballots from voting machines in four early voting sites in Nevada. Why did they do that? And what is the status of that request? That's right. We saw Donald Trump himself talking about this over the weekend when he was campaigning in Nevada. Uh, they were particularly concerned about a number of polling places that they told they told CNN that they stayed open so that the people in line could vote. The Trump campaign felt like they had unfairly stayed open late, and that's why they put in this legal challenge. But the judge did rule from the bench, essentially denying their request. And look, these are areas where we saw heavy Latino turnout in Nevada. Obviously, there's going to be a big election day vote there as well. So we're waiting to see how that all pans out for the Trump campaign. But it was certainly something that they were worried about going into today, Jake. All right, Sarah Murray, thanks. Stay there. We're going to check back with you in a little bit. Hillary Clinton will be heading out any moment now from the family home in Chappaqua, New York, for perhaps, perhaps, maybe the last time before her life changes in ways that no American woman's life has ever changed. She'll be spending the afternoon in a midtown Manhattan hotel, a very nice one, before going to New York's big convention center, which is named for one of her Senate predecessors, the liberal Republican Senator Jacob Javits. CNN's Jeff Zeleny is covering the Clinton campaign and joins us now live from New York. Jeff, we saw Hillary Clinton voting this morning near her home in Chappaqua, New York. What's she been doing since then? Well, Jake, she did vote this morning early on, and that was just a few hours after flying back to New York after a final midnight rally in Raleigh, North Carolina. And as I watched her get off the plane, you could see that there was uh, a bit of confidence um, in her as she's closing this campaign. They believe that uh, this is this campaign is in a better position than it was a few days ago. But you get a sense of where they are still trying to turn out the vote by the number of radio interviews she has done throughout the day. Detroit is one, Charlotte is one, Raleigh is one, New Hampshire stations. So those are states she is definitely trying to get her voice into um, and she is trying to uh, get out the vote there. Now, she will be coming to uh, Manhattan to watch those returns in the Peninsula Hotel um, and then she will be coming here to the Javits Center, where thousands of people will be gathering here beneath a glass ceiling, if you can see it above me here. And of course, that is a metaphor that I'm guessing we'll hear throughout the evening. And the stage that she will be speaking on behind me here as well is in the shape of the United States of America here. So once we see those shots later on this evening, that's some of the uh, theatrics and stagecraft that uh, will be happening here at the Javits Center for what they hope will be a victory party. But it's far too early to know that yet, Jake. And Jeff, uh, Clinton obviously getting updates from her war room. Uh, taking in all the information about where they think voter turnout is not as high as it needs to be. Has the Clinton campaign indicated to you which states they feel most confident about in terms of these very contested battleground states and, and which ones they're still concerned about? 
Florida seems to top the list when you talk to a lot of advisors here and on the ground in Florida as a state that they feel confident about, largely because of the boost of early vote. So much has changed since that Florida recount 16 years ago. So much early voting has happened. So Florida, they believe they have an advantage because of the early vote. Other votes um, that they're keeping an eye on, other states they're keeping an eye on, Michigan. Michigan has emerged as sort of a ground zero battleground state. Really in the final hours, final days of the campaign, they are slightly nervous about what's happening on the ground in Michigan, as well as North Carolina. If there's one battleground state that they think they can definitely win, but they're not sure, those 15 electoral votes in North Carolina are on their mind. They're trying to get out the vote there for several hours yet. We're talking about this already, but there's several hours left of voting, or at least a few hours left of voting. So those are the states they are focusing on right now. Jake. All right, Jeff Zeleny, thanks. And here's something you might have noticed, especially if you're a New Yorker, for the first time that we can remember, both election night headquarters will be in Manhattan. And not just Manhattan, both of them are going to be in Midtown Manhattan. You can walk the distance if the weather's nice and that pizza-eating rat doesn't hassle you in about 20 minutes. Joining us now, Clinton Press Secretary Brian Fallon. And Brian, thanks for joining us. Polls have been tightening in recent weeks. What's the one state that you're most concerned about right now? Well, Jake, to be honest with you, we're feeling pretty good right now. Uh, just to give you a sense of one of the critical battlegrounds that we've been watching all day, Florida. Uh, a state that Donald Trump must win. If he doesn't win Florida, it's game over for Donald Trump. And not only did we see strong performance in terms of the early vote, where you saw Latinos in particular, uh, a million of Latinos voting in the early voting phase in Florida, that's more than double 2012 early voting levels. And then in terms of the vote that we're seeing today, if you look at a heavily Democratic county uh, like Broward County, home of Fort Lauderdale, big county along with Miami-Dade and Southern Florida, which is uh, key to any Democratic victory in the state of Florida. As of 3 o'clock today, we were looking at about 98 percent of the ballots returned already, uh, and that's even before uh, the afternoon post-work shift. Uh, similar numbers in terms of uh, the pace compared to 2012 in Hillsborough County in the Tampa area. Again, uh, close to 100 percent already at 3 o'clock today compared to 2012 levels of turnout. And so if we can stay on that pace and we have that type of turnout in those uh, Democratic performing counties in Florida, uh, we think that this could be a very strong night for Hillary Clinton. Okay, so Brian, of course, I asked you about the state you're most concerned about, and you told me the one that you're least concerned about in terms of the battlegrounds. Let me ask you about Ohio. Uh, I've heard uh, that turnout in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland, uh, is not where you want it to be. Are you worried about Ohio? Ohio is a state that Donald Trump absolutely needs. I mean, at, at this point, if we're able to win a state like Pennsylvania and hold on to Michigan, both of which we feel very confident about, it requires Donald Trump to essentially run the table of the states that remain. He's going to have to win Ohio. He's going to have to win Iowa. He's going to have to win North Carolina. He's going to have to win Florida. Uh, so Ohio is a must win for Donald Trump. As we've been monitoring the vote today, we were pleased with the early vote patterns in Ohio. We've seen uh, turnout numbers in Cuyahoga County, Franklin County, Hamilton County uh, that make us optimistic, but we'll have to watch closely as the night proceeds. So this afternoon, a Nevada court denied a request from the Trump campaign to issue an order directing a county registrar to preserve and separate battles, ballots from voting machines, machines in four early voting sites in Clark County. Um, do you expect that there are going to be more legal challenges like this one, perhaps even many more, before this is all over? Well, Jake, this uh, challenge was completely frivolous, and we're pleased that the judge acted so quickly to smack it down. I mean, it is a fact. Everybody knows, and everybody watching a program that is thinking of still turning out later today should know. If you are in line at the time uh, when uh, polling closes, you're allowed to vote as long as you're in line. Uh, and that's all that they were accommodating in Clark County, Nevada, that uh, is now coming under challenge from the Trump campaign. And they're suggesting that that somehow was some unlawful extension of the voting hours in Clark County. That's not at all the case. They were just following the, the rules. It was a, the, uh, another example in Nevada of you seeing record Latino turnout uh, in Clark County. You were seeing those long lines. They were t being tweeted out at the grocery market last Friday night. And that's a big reason why John Ralston, who's sort of the guru about Nevada, is saying that essentially uh, Donald Trump has an insurmountable deficit at this point. So 
Uh, the Trump campaign was waging a completely frivolous challenge there. We won't be surprised if they try it in other states, too. It's not going to work. He may be trying to sow the seeds for trying to question the legitimacy of the outcome tonight, but you've already seen Republicans distance themselves from his efforts to do that. Brian, just one last question for you. Uh, I know um, you don't know what's going to happen tonight. None of us have any idea what's going to happen tonight. In the event that Hillary Clinton does win, there's been talk about whether or not Donald Trump will concede. How much are you considering that in terms of what you do going forward if the networks do declare the race won by her? Well, you just made a great point, Jake, which is the networks like CNN, the Associated Press, news organizations, they make the judgment call about who the winner is based on the raw vote totals. That's how it should be made. No, nothing depends on Donald Trump making a con uh, refusing to make a concession, even in light of uh, compelling data that the race has been won. And so that'll be a big part, I think, in resolving that, even if Donald Trump refuses to acknowledge reality. Another thing I think that will uh, suppress Donald Trump's ability to try to call anything into question is the fact that so many of these battleground states, the elections there are administered by Republican secretaries of state, who themselves have spoken out in the weeks leading up to today, saying that there's no basis to question uh, the uh, integrity of the election results in their state. These are people that are, are going to be out there in the days after saying that these uh, elections were properly conducted. And I think that national Republican leaders like Reince Priebus and Speaker Ryan are not going to indulge any of these attempts by Donald Trump to litigate this if the result is decisive tonight. Brian Fallon, thank you so much. Appreciate it. A lot more ahead as we count down to our first exit polling and then to the actual results. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Election Night in America is brought to you by Norfolk Southern. One line, infinite possibilities. And by VoteForEnergy.org, a program of the American Petroleum Institute. Log on to learn more. Go to CNNPolitics.com for more about this momentous election. Fewer than three hours until the first statewide poll closing. Six states at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by a batch at 7.30. We're also about 45 minutes from our first exit poll data. Plenty to cover. Turnout today appears heavy. It looks like voters want to be a part of history today, one way or the other. Again, we have correspondents across the country. Tonight, let's go now to Gary Tuckman. He's in Charlotte in the battleground state of North Carolina. Gary? Jake, in this battleground state, there are about 10 million people who live here. Of the 10 million, 6.9 million are registered voters. And those 6.9 million people are coveted by the candidates. And these people know they're coveted, and that's why so many are turning out of polling places across the state. This is the Mount Moriah Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, in the heart of Charlotte, but it is now one of the 2,700 precincts. The way the voting works here, no voter ID is necessary in the state of North Carolina. People come to this table, they fill out a form with their name and their address, they then take the form to this table where it's verified that they're in this precinct. Folks, you excited about voting? Oh, I didn't ask. I didn't ask you for a lot of cheers. I may kick us out if you cheer so loud, but you're looking forward to it. You followed the election closely? Yes, yes, I You followed it closely, too? Yeah. And you're excited? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited voters here. They're motivated. There's been a line here the entire time we've been here. Once they get their address confirmed, they come here to the video screens, and they not only have the presidential election here in North Carolina, which has brought out voters, but they also have a very close gubernatorial race and a close U.S. Senate race. The decision with the U.S. Senate race could ultimately determine which party controls the Senate. Jake, one thing I do want to point out to you that's very notable, elaborate early voting here lasted 16 days. 3.1 million people already voted early. That's 45% of the total number of registered voters even before anybody turned out today. So they're going to have a big turnout here in the state of North Carolina. Jake? All right, a lot going on in the Tar Heel State. Thank you so much, Gary Tuckman. Let's check in now with Miguel Marquez. He is in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. Miguel. Yeah, it is very, very busy. It's gone from busy here in uh, Washington County to ridiculously busy. We actually have a drone up so you can see how long the line is now. It's actually gotten longer in the last few minutes. This is Trump country, uh, and this will give you an idea of what this uh, area is like. This is the last bit of politicking that voters see as they walk uh, into the polls here. And this gentleman, the line is so long, he has the right idea. He brought the chair. He, uh, he, no, no beer and chicken, but he's uh, enjoying it uh, while he can. The line I can show you goes all the way down here. This is about an hour-long line to the end of this sidewalk, 
and now it's snaking around back into the parking lot. This is almost as long as we've seen it all day. That's probably about an hour and a half to two hour line at this point. Uh, this is a county that has more Democrats and Republicans but tends to vote Republican. Hillary Clinton opened an office here, but Donald Trump needs voters in Washington County and other rural counties to come out in huge numbers to uh, keep up with her in the cities, both Philly and in Pittsburgh. Uh, very, very heavy turnout here. No early voting across Pennsylvania, as you know, so we will know what Pennsylvanians think at 8 p.m. tonight. Jake? All right, Miguel, thank you so much. The Trump forces are counting on doing at least all right in western Pennsylvania, while the Clinton campaign needs to pile up votes on the other end of the state, namely the areas around Philadelphia and the city of Philadelphia. We're going to be watching both ends of the state. There are plenty more crucial spots on the map. CNN Inside Politics anchor John King joins us now with a quick overview. John? Jake, let's start with some of the things we'll look at early. 20, 30, maybe 40 counties I'll be looking at through the night, depending on how close it is. But, you know, the polls close early. I'm going to go back to the 2012 map here as we wait to fill in the 2016 map. We start to get early poll closings in the 6 o'clock hour, then into the 7 o'clock hour out into Indiana. Indiana, we expect to be red, right? Mike Pence is from Indiana. It's traditionally red state. But Vigo County in western Indiana has a pretty good track record. It's only been wrong twice in the last 100 years. 15 elections in a row. It has picked the winner in presidential politics, just barely for President Obama last time. But Vigo County has a pretty good track record, so we'll watch that as the Indiana results start to come in early. Then you move to the east just a little bit, we'll also get some Kentucky results. Now, again, Kentucky's most likely going to be red for Donald Trump, but we can do a little CSI, some clues. How's Donald Trump doing in coal country down here? Because communities like this, you can find them in southern Ohio. You can also find them, Jake, over in Virginia, which we will get in the 7 o'clock hour. Clinton has been consistently ahead in Virginia, but we'll want to watch. Is Donald Trump running it up out here in the rural areas? And how's he doing in the Washington suburbs, like Prince William County, not that far from here? Used to be a Republican county. Look how much President Obama won it by four years ago, 57-41. Why? Democrats are doing better with those college-educated suburban white voters, but there's also been a Latino explosion in Prince William County. Now, even if Clinton is winning Virginia, the margin might tell us a lot about how Donald Trump's going to do in some other places, notably North Carolina to the south, and that suburban vote might tell us a lot about, you mentioned, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia area. No question. They call it the T. You have May and Nutter at the table. This is your home state. You know it very well. See all this red? Donald Trump's running it up out here. Miguel Marquez was just talking about it. So Hillary Clinton has to do well out here. The vote count tends to come in a little slower here, but as it starts to come in in Pennsylvania in the 8 o'clock hour, first we look at Center City, Philadelphia. She has to run it up, Jake, by 400,000 or more votes in this area. The mayor can talk about that, I think. And then you come here to Bucks County. That's Montgomery, and then over to Bucks County. This is the more blue collar of the collar counties right around the suburbs. You see President Obama winning it, but just barely, 50 to 49. The last time Republicans won your great home state of Pennsylvania was 1988. George H.W. Bush won these suburbs. That's what we're going to watch tonight. A, is Clinton winning the city big? Is she winning the suburbs? And if she is winning the suburbs, by how much? In a close race, the margins matter. And, John, obviously uh, Donald Trump wants to crack uh, Hillary Clinton's blue wall, which includes the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Are there any other areas... Well, you'll be looking to see if he is making those cracks in the blue wall. Absolutely. And in, let's start in Pennsylvania. Again, again, it's an 8 o'clock state. Donald Trump went to Scranton just yesterday. Lackawanna County happens to be the hometown, the birthplace of Vice President Joe Biden. So look at this. That's at 1988. Let me bring it back forward into the more recent elections, 63 to 36. This is an area where, again, Democrats need to run it up in Pennsylvania where you have those Democratic voters. So let's see. Is Donald Trump going to carry Lackawanna County? I don't think that's a safe bet. But are the margins closer? That's how we'll know if Pennsylvania is in play and if the blue wall might be cracked. Because if you start to see that in a place like the Scranton area, guess what? Then you might see it as well, A, across in Ohio, which is more Republican. But then when you get to Michigan a little bit later in the night, what about Macomb County, just north of Detroit, home of the legendary Reagan Democrats back in the day? So the Scranton area, north of Detroit and the suburbs, that's where we'll look for the early evidence of whether that blue wall is indeed cracking or if Clinton is holding. All right, John King, thanks. Let's bring in the panel. We have with us uh, CNN political commentator and conservative writer Mary Catherine Hamm, CNN senior political reporter Nia Malika Henderson, CNN political analysts David Gergen and Kirsten Powers, Trump supporters Kaylee McEnany and Andre Bauer. They're on the far left and far right of your screen. Uh, Andre is the former lieutenant governor of South Carolina. And in the middle of this table, uh, Clinton supporters Dan Pfeiffer and former Philadelphia Mayor uh, Michael Nutter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, let me just start with you because we were talking about Pennsylvania sure. and you heard John King say uh, that they, uh, the Clinton team needs to rack up about 400,000 votes in the city of Philadelphia. 
is turnout that heavy? Are you going to be able to do that? It's significantly heavy. Um, when we talk about my own polling place, uh, folks were lined up at 6.30 uh, this morning to get ready for polls opening uh, at 7. Is that abnormal? It's uh, unusual. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, other reports are being analyzed, and we'll get election official reports. But overall, turnout is significantly up in Philadelphia. We expect the same uh, in the suburbs, uh, as well as at least uh, in uh, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, and up through uh, the Lehigh Valley. Those are the key areas, and Erie. Those are the key areas for Secretary Clinton. Kaylee, are there any specific areas that you're going to be looking at tonight as the, as the results start to come in to give you an indication? I know you're a numbers person. You an indication about how well Donald Trump's going to do? Well, Pennsylvania is always kind of that elusive state that Republicans think they can get, and they never right. quite, it's never quite within reach. You know, Donald Trump, though, I think he's a different kind of candidate. He has more of a populist streak, might get it. For me, what I am looking at is New Hampshire, because I think if you look at the real clear politics averages, we can get 265, and that's with Nevada, Florida, Ohio, and Iowa. We can get 265. Donald Trump's winning the averages narrowly, but we need one more state. And that one more state, I think, can be New Hampshire plus Maine's second congressional district. So uh, New Hampshire is an early state that's polls, polls close early. We're doing well there. I'm very happy. Nia Malika, let me ask you, how is voting going? Have you heard much report, many reports of, of irregularities or things... Proceeding smoothly? Yeah, I mean, there are always uh, sort of uh, irregularities that pop up. I mean, we're going to have millions and millions of people uh, who are going to vote today. And I, I think it's hard to know based on, you know, kind of anecdotal reports about long lines or not long lines. You know, we have no idea what's going to happen. We've seen in the uh, early vote sort of patterns that might benefit Hillary Clinton in some states like Florida uh, and Nevada. And then we've seen a tightening of polls in places like New Hampshire, places uh, like Michigan as well. I mean, I mean, you always hear on a day like this, and you, we've heard it all throughout this campaign, uh, that this is the most consequential election ever. But at this point, it really does feel like this. Uh, with this election, with history on the line for either of these candidates, uh, the Supreme Court obviously on the line, and a real uh, guess as to where, what the future of the Republican Party uh, looks like as well. And at this point, all we can do is sit and wait to see what these hundreds of millions of, of voters are going to say. David, what are you going to be looking for tonight? Florida. Uh, for starters, it will come in early. We'll have a very good clue where this is going. I think there are two things about this avalanche of voting that we're seeing. One is the Latino vote. That may be the sleeper story of, of, of the campaign, of the election tonight. You know, if, if Florida come, is delivered by Latinos, that sort of puts it away. But Nevada and Colorado, the, all these other states, maybe even North Carolina. The other thing is I... I've been wondering during the day with this great outpouring, is with so many people voting, is there, will this possibly be a catharsis for the country? That people will feel they finally had a chance to give voice, and the people who are gonna win are gonna feel like we've sort of taken back our country. You know, because people, people on both sides are so angry about this. But I, I do think there's something fairly uh, encouraging about the fact so many people are turning out. And Dan, let me ask you, what are you looking for? You're, you're a numbers guy, you, look, you were on the on Obama team in 08 and 12, and, uh, you, you, uh, you know, the, the Obama team didn't, that was a, a pretty uh, famous team in terms of, like, analyzing the numbers. Sure. I think this, the ball game tonight is really Michigan and Pennsylvania because the CNN map has a 268. The Clinton team and the Obama folks who have looked at the early vote numbers in Nevada say Nevada is gone. Clinton has that in the back. So she is, a, she is above 270. They're going to have to steal Michigan and Pennsylvania. I think that's very, very hard, if not impossible. What do you think, Andre? I think it's, it, it, number one, for our country, it's great that we have this high participation for a change, that people really have paid attention this time, and hopefully people will get engaged in the process, starting at a polling place and then supporting candidates in the future. I mean, that's really the key to this country, is if you want change, getting engaged. And so that's what I take away more than anything. It's been a divisive race from both sides, and both candidates are flawed. No matter who you're supporting, tomorrow I hope we all wake up with a positive outlook that our country is going to move forward, and we're going to try to all be a bigger part of what makes this country great, and that is all having a voice. And so I, I'm refreshed. Uh, Florida's big to me to see what happens. We had talked earlier about Marco Rubio having, looking like he's doing very well, and I think that's uh, interesting to study as well. But I, many days after this election's over with, we're all going to study this thing, scratching our heads, and, and the Republicans have, are going to have to look at how to, how to tap into that Latino vote, no matter what happens today, uh, to write that much of the electoral vote off, I think, is wrong. And uh, those people, I think, really will come home to the Republican Party in the end. Mary Catherine, you voted in Virginia. I'm not going to ask you who you voted for, but uh, <laughs> were the lines long? 
Uh, was, there, was there an active, excited electorate? Well, there's some early vote in Virginia. Uh, when I was there at mid-morning, the lines were not long, but they've never been long in Northern Virginia during uh, pres presidential elections. I've never had that particular hmm. uh, issue. But the thing that strikes me about this race is that so much has to fall for Donald Trump. Like, it has a, you know, a couple lucky breaks, and to get a little Southern on you, it is like covering your grill in a hurricane. Like, there's only so much you can hold down at one time, and, like, some corners are going to fly up. And I think that's the challenge that he faces. And, uh, and you voted also. I'm not going to ask you who you voted for, but... Uh... But what, do you, what are you looking for tonight, Kirsten? Well, I think the same as David. I mean, Florida, it, it comes early, and I think that's going to tell us a lot. Obviously, he can't win without Florida, so uh, Democrats are actually feeling pretty good about Florida, so it could be over early if that happens. But in a sort of broader sense, I'm really interested. We're watching the Latino vote, but the women's vote, to see what happens. It's possible that Hillary Clinton could win married women for the first time in 20 years since her president, since her husband won. For the first won. time a Democrat won. Yeah, sorry, but since a Democrat won, last time won was her husband. So, uh, you know, we, we're going to watch the, the swing probably from Romney being up among college white women, you know, educated women, to maybe swinging in the favor of the Democrat. This is, this is momentous. Yeah. Lots more to talk about, some breaking news. We just learned that Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina has voted, and he did not vote for Donald Trump. Instead, he voted for conservative Evan McMullen. That and more to talk about ahead. We are expecting to get the first wave of exit polls in about 30 minutes. These are still early hours in a marathon night of election coverage. Our political team and correspondents are spread across the country to bring you all the developments as they happen. Stay with us. Election Day 2016, a day that frankly could not come soon enough for many Americans after one of the nastiest and most divisive presidential campaigns in American history. Millions of Americans are casting their votes today, making their voices heard at the ballot box. The outcome of this historic election now in their hands, in your hands. Donald Trump, meanwhile, still refusing to commit to accepting the results. He equivocated in an interview with the Tampa Bay radio station this morning. We'll be bringing you complete coverage of exit polling and CNN's projections throughout the evening. Right now, let's go to Jessica Schneider. She's in Warren, Michigan, a battleground state, kind of surprisingly. Yeah, it is surprising, Jake. The candidates have been focusing a lot of energy here, them along with their surrogates. You know, I'm in Macomb County right now. This is one of the counties Donald Trump is counting on. Macomb County, home of the Reagan Democrats. This is the blue-collar suburbs of Detroit. Donald Trump hoping that his message of jobs and trade resonate here. Now, I just got off the phone with the county executive here. He says that the turnout already has been incredible. You can see inside this polling area right now, we're not allowed inside, but there's been a steady stream of people. This is where three different precincts are voting throughout the day. And this is what it's been like all week, uh, all day long. Just about five miles down the road, I heard there's about a two hour wait. The county executive telling me they should be on track to hit the same sort of record turnout that they saw back in 1980, as well as 2008. We're talking about 69% of registered voters showing up today, a big day. Now, Macomb County, interestingly, though Donald Trump is counting on this county as one of the ones that might be able to push him over the brink here in Michigan. Macomb County itself, it voted for President Obama in 2008 and 2012. So Hillary Clinton, of course, hoping that that holds true for this election. But it is a county in flux. As I talked to the county executive, he says it is a county divided. So at this point, uncertain which way it could go, but it could mean big things for Donald Trump or it could mean big things for Hillary Clinton. So we'll see. But of course, all eyes on Michigan when just about two weeks ago, we weren't so sure that this was even a state we had to look twice at. Jake? All right, Jessica Schneider in Warren, Michigan. Thank you so much. As we mentioned, even before the polls opened in Nevada this morning, Donald Trump and his campaign were trying to dispute the results to a degree. His lawyers filing a lawsuit last night over early voting in that state. Just a short time ago, a judge ruled against the Trump campaign. Jim Schuto joins us now with the latest on that. Jim, when Trump was at the polls today in New York, he talked about his concern about voter fraud. Explain what this legal challenge in Nevada is all about. Well, that's right. This morning, Trump was talking about a particular kind of voter fraud for which we, we found no evidence, and that is people going to machines, voting Republican, those machines automatically switching those votes to, to Democrat. We haven't seen evidence of that being widespread in any way. But, but in Nevada, the case was about keeping uh, polling stations open uh, later uh, than their initial closing time, this during early voting in Nevada. Uh, but in truth, this complies with state law. What it is is people who show up and they're still in line when that voting station, that polling station is meant to close, 
they're allowed to go in and get that vote, even if it takes them another hour to get in the building, in effect. So that's what happened in four Nevada polling precincts, the Trump campaign taking issue with that, and to perhaps lay the groundwork for a legal challenge after the election, they went to a judge and they said, we want these records preserved. We want to know, in effect, who voted before that assigned closing time and who voted after. The judge was very quick to dismiss the case, having to listen, listen to how she handled it. Why would we issue any kind of a writ of mandate? They don't, there's no need to. He's obligated to do it already. I can't obligate him to do something he's already obligated to do. He's already obligated to do it. The judge's point being there that that's something they already do. They already keep uh, records like that. But it was also interesting. She also took issue with the Trump campaign. The lawyer was asking for the names of polling workers who worked at those sites to potentially make them public. And, and she said, there's no way I'm going to do that. H have you seen how uh, Twitter trolls, in effect, handle people like that, uh, keeping that information private so that they weren't, you know, uh, unleashed with... Uh, Twitter uh, traffic or other criticism from, from folks who thought they might not have been doing their job right. And even though, uh, Jim, polls are still open, we're, we are getting some information in. What are you learning? That's right. This on voter turnout. So, you know, at this point, it's largely anecdotal because you can't make a final calculation as to what the turnout is going to be across the country. But I'm just going to give you what we're hearing from a number of key states. In Alabama, we just got a report in just in the last few minutes uh, from the deputy uh, director uh, for the Secretary of State of Alabama saying they've never seen turnout this high. Uh, in his words, some people have compared it to game day. That's in Alabama. In Mississippi, very high turnout up through the morning, more than they've seen. In Connecticut, we're seeing similar reports of uh, long lines there, longer than usual, according to the state attorney general. In Virginia, turnout way up. So at least state by state, and as you know, some of these very key states here, uh, Virginia included, at least from the secretaries of state, early reports are they're seeing turnout higher than normal. Jake? All right, Jim Shido, thanks. Back with my panel now. Mary Catherine, um, we were talking just a minute ago about Latino voters and women voters and whether or not they have some sort of momentous impact on this election, the suggestion being that they might help Hillary Clinton. As I recall from the Republican National Committee's autopsy about what went right. wrong in 2012, one of the things that that uh, autopsy concluded was that Republicans need to do a better job going after Latino voters and women voters. Do you think there's a chance of going forward, maybe Republicans will consider that those two groups actually should be wooed? Sometimes one wonders if they read that report and just decided, let's do the opposite. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the Trump campaign makes an argument that we are reaching certain segments of these voters. Uh, look, I think it's going to be a really tough uphill battle, and it was an uphill battle before to get those folks to feel like you cared about them and then to listen to your policies, which is the steps you have to take. I think Trump has done a great job of that with white working class voters who felt this economic insecurity, but reaching out to new groups is going to be a lot tougher, I think, when there has been this surge for Democrats, which I think you will see some of tonight. And the thing is, too, with young voters, they lock in that preference. <coughs> That's one thing I'm, I'm genuinely worried about for the right center-right coalition yeah. in the future. It'll be interesting to see how Rubio does in Florida. That's going to be a real test case in, in terms of his future. I mean, he had always argued uh, that he was the one uh, who could broaden the party, attract Latinos. Uh, you've seen a 103 percent spike in the Latino uh, vote from 2008 to, to, to now. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see if you see ticket splitters there and he does well uh, with that Hispanic vote, which isn't as Cuban as it used to be. It used to be very Cuban and much more uh, Republican, more Puerto Ricans, more uh, Dominicans as well. Well, so that'll be, I think, a, a very interesting kind of frame to see not only Rubio's future, the voting patterns of Latinos and how Republicans might be able to attract them. Uh, Jake, I would think that if, if uh, Latinos deliver Florida and possibly a couple of other states, this can, it's going to put enormous pressure on the Republicans in the next session of Congress to get an immigration bill passed. They have to get beyond this issue. To not have an immigration bill and continue down the road, Trump has taken them, is suicidal for the party. So I do think that they're going to have to change on this, and they will. McKirsten, let me ask you something. Do you think that Democrats, conversely, have an obligation to try to figure out how they lost white working class voters, which used to vote for Democrats decades ago? Does, does, if Hillary Clinton wins, 
does she need to reach out to this group yeah, in some ways that didn't support her? Yeah, no, I mean, and I think that's something that the Democrats will definitely be looking at. But I think in, in terms of the Republican Party, the problem that they had before this was that they weren't attracting or appealing to women and Latinos. Now they're actually repelling them, right? Now, now they're going to have to actually... They're, yeah, they're actually going to have to... And the problem is, is that a lot of Latinos and a lot of women w stood by and watched these other Republican leaders sort of tarnish themselves by not standing up against Trump. And so... The, now they're in an even deeper hole, is my point, I guess. Is that they're, they're not, they, they have to dig themselves out from a much deeper hole of now convincing people that, that you, they just there's a basic threshold of trust, that they can trust them to look out for them. I do think them. we're writing the headline of Latinos deliver victory for Clinton a bit prematurely. Of course, we're just saying we, if, uh, if. If, of course. But, uh, but from the other side, I I'm, don't necessarily believe all of these Latinos that have turned out can just be given to Hillary Clinton. I think there are a number of Latinos who care deeply about the economy, Cubans in particular, who realize some of the threats to democracy we see coming from the other side. They are, have a, an aversion to kind of totalitarian rules, some of the executive power issues we've seen come out of President Obama. And I think there are going to be Latinos who do show up for Trump. I'm not suggesting he's going to win a majority, but I think there will be a, a at least 20, 30 percent that will vote for Donald Trump. Mayor Nutter? Kaylee, I mean, I'll give you credit for the high-level uh, academic argument. I think the problem here is they did read the memo. They misunderstood the word, go after. And so they went after them uh, and insulted women, insulted Latinos, insulted every possible group. And so, as we've seen, there's a coalition of the insulted who are now coming together. And so the problem here is, yes, Latinos, African-Americans, Muslims, who, whatever group you want to talk about, care about those issues, but it's tough to talk about something when someone has insulted you and punched you in the face. All right, so we're going we're gonna to come back on to this. We're going to take a very quick break. Much more with the panel ahead on this historic day. The first results were just hours away. The first exit poll data is coming within the next 20 minutes. We'll get a preview of that data next. Some late word from Donald Trump. He's tweeting, and I'm not sure how accurate the tweet is. Here's the tweet. Just out, according to CNN, Utah officials report voting machine problems across entire country. In point of fact, CNN is, is not reporting that. The problem is problems across the county, a county, not the country, as Mr. Trump tweeted. It's a difference of an R, but kind of an important one. Meanwhile, heavy turnout across the country and not just at the polls. In Rochester, New York, yeah. people have been lining up not only to vote, but also to honor a leader of women's suffrage, activist Susan B. Anthony. Some have left their voting stickers at her gravesite on her grave. Let's check in with Suzanne Malvona. She's in Columbus, Ohio. Suzanne. Well, hey, Jake, it has been very active, very busy at this polling station here. We are at Life Church at Easton. This is part of Franklin County, three precincts that are actually voting here. That is 2,400 people expected to vote. More than 500 have actually casted early ballots. I want to sh give you a sense of what's taking place here. Unlike uh, some of the other polling stations, about 70% in Ohio that depend on paper ballots, you have 16 voting machines here uh, that they're able to use. And voters actually have an option in terms of what, whether or not they want to use the voting machines or the paper ballots. These are the paper ballots. And I want to go to our friend Jeff here, who we've been talking to, uh, because this is the first time that you've had media here. It's the first yes, time you've had observers. This mm -hmm. is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been asking questions about security and the ballot security. How do you guys do this? Because there are three different copies in those machines. That's right. The machine itself has memory where the votes are stored. There is a removable memory cartridge that has a second set of the vote and there is a paper printout of every choice that every voter made so that Suzanne, as Suzanne, the voter I'm sorry, voting, I need to interrupt you for one second. printed out what their selection was. Okay, Suzanne, I'm, so, right, I'm, Jake, I'm, I'm we'll, sorry, we'll I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm being told that we need to bring you these live pictures of uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and her, her motorcade leaving uh, their compound in Chappaqu Chappaqua, New York, going uh, downtown to Midtown Manhattan where she will watch the returns in a hotel. Um, and so there are those live pictures of Secretary Clinton leaving and uh, proceeding to go downtown to New York City. Thank Suzanne, thank you so much uh, for that report. The first polls are going to close a little more than an hour from now in parts of Indiana and Kentucky with the rest of the country 
following throughout the evening. It will be a while before CNN or anyone will be able to call any states, but we will be getting the first exit poll information in just about 15 minutes. CNN political director David Chalian joins me now. David, what kind of information are we expecting to see in this information coming, these exit polls? Right. Remember, Jake, these are interviews that we do across the country as people are leaving the polls, telling us how they voted, why they voted. And the kind of information we're going to look for uh, right away is sort of the, the makeup of the electorate uh, along racial lines, age, um, uh, ed education, gender. These are the kinds of things that will sort of look and give us the tapestry of what the electorate looks like tonight. And, and does it look different in, than it did four years ago? And in what ways and how that might be advantageous for one candidate or the other? The other thing that we're going to look at is sort of what people were looking for when they went to the polls today, the qualities in the candidates, what motivated their vote, when did they make up their mind, sort of the, the voter behavior today. So those two things, sort of the makeup of the electorate and why the voters are making the choices that they're making today. All right, David Talion, thank you so much. Back now with our panel uh, and Dan Pfeiffer, let me start with you. What are you going to be looking for in this first wave of exit poll results? I think it's going to be the composition of the electorate. Are we seeing the Obama coalition turning out at a similar rate in 2016 as it did in 2012. If that is the case, then Hillary Clinton will win. If we are seeing some sort of depression in Latino voter, African American voter, millennials, and an increase in older white males, then that'll be good for Donald Trump. Andre, what are you going to be looking for in these first waves of exit poll results? I think he hit it uh, spot on. You know, did Trump turn out the working class voters in Pennsylvania, in Florida? In Michigan, I mean, the fact that Michigan is now on the table speaks a lot. You know, I don't think Donald Trump gets enough credit. We are talking about an individual that had no political experience that took on the media. He took on his own party. He took on the Democratic Party. He took on the unions. You name it, he took the U.N. He brought discussions <laughs> that a lot of people, you'd laugh if you want, but they're, they're discussions that we've needed for a long time as a country. And a lot of times it alienates voters, but that doesn't mean leaders shouldn't engage in the discussion. So I'm, I'm actually thankful that he engaged in some of these discussions, not all of them by any stretch of imagination, but it was a different person, a different approach that actually said, hey, we've got to do so. We need a wall. We need to have a border in this country. And there, nobody that's a U.S. citizen should have any problem with that. The fact that we argue that, I'm actually shocked over. But th this is different. And he actually, it's, it's amazing what he's done. Nobody gave him any credit early on. And the fact that we're even talking about Michigan shows that he's hit a real nerve in this country. Mr. Mayor? What I'm looking for is uh, soon-to-be Congressman uh, Dwight Evans and the West-Northwest Coalition out of Philadelphia driving that 400-plus number in the city. 400,000. 400,000. For a uh, net positive out, for Hillary For a net Clinton. positive out of Philadelphia. Similar significant activity in the Philly suburbs. And then Bill Peduto and Rich Fitzgerald over in the western side of the state. Put all that together, Hillary Clinton wins Pennsylvania probably five to seven points. Some shout-outs to your Pennsylvania friends there. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you going to be looking for in these uh, early results? And exit polls, certainly income level and voters without a college degree. Because if we see a Brexit, if the polls are off by anywhere from one to three points, that is to say voters didn't answer pollsters, they didn't admit they were going to vote Trump, it's going to be among those voters, and it's going to be in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin's a stretch, but maybe Wisconsin. So I'm going to be looking for heavy turnout from that demographic. If that if they, they turn out, Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. Kirsten, what are you going to be looking yeah, well, for? Well, I think all, all of the issues that people raise, but then also looking at um, the issues, right? So if you ask people, what's your top issue? Do you want change or do you, uh, you know, or uh, without, so if they want change, then I would expect them to be going with Donald Trump or, you know, are you looking for somebody with the temperament to be president, which Hillary Clinton always wins running away. So what are the issues that are really driving people? On terrorism, they're, they're tied on economy, he's slightly up. So sort of looking at how these, these rank um, in terms of people's uh, priorities. David, where do you come down on this debate that um, this, this idea of hidden white voters uh, hidden white working class voters or hidden uh, white voters with college educations who don't answer the polling questions, that they're, that they're not really there, that it's, that it's a, 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 an imagination. Well, we've seen over time in polling going back 50 years, not only in this country but in other countries, that there are tendencies for some voters not to, to, to give the answer they think the person who's calling on the other end of the line is, especially if it sort of can be offensive in society. So I think there is a possibility of a Brexit-type vote. I, I do think you've got to look out for that tonight. Is it a Brexit-type vote or is it what Dan Pfeiffer is saying, that the coalition sticks together? And if the coalition sticks together and the Democrats win the popular vote for the sixth time in the seven elections, that's historic. And it means that means the Republicans are on the wrong side of history and they really need to come back. But if, on the other hand, 
this Brexit vote turns out, that's a very different reading of where we are politically. Yeah, I've heard um, Pennsylvania Democrats, uh, in, and including uh, uh, former Governor Ed Rendell said it publicly, uh, that he, he thinks that there might be a Trump undervote. People not telling pollsters because they feel like they might be judged negatively for supporting Donald Trump, uh, but in the privacy of the polling place, that they will vote for him. Do you, do you buy it? No, I think it's sort of an it's absurd theory. Uh, and and <laughs> if, you know, if there is, it seems to be like there would also be a hidden Hillary Clinton vote. I mean, I don't think we've seen any evidence uh, that people, I mean, think about Donald Trump's rallies. I mean, 10, 20,000 people, uh, those folks don't seem shy at all. I mean, they don't, they're, they're people who love Donald Trump. So this idea uh, that someone would get on the phone and be ashamed of admitting that they liked Donald, it just seems absurd to me. They tend to live in the same areas, so they're around people who yeah. support Donald Trump. Yeah. So it doesn't really make sense that. But what they do you, th Mary like Catherine? What about what about the people in the suburbs <laughs> of Philadelphia or Northern yeah. Virginia who might be Trump supporters but don't want to be judged? Can, I think there can be marginal differences about that. I think anytime polling is in, within three points in a lot of these states, it can be off, and it doesn't have to be because of some giant hidden vote. The other question is, if there is a hidden white working class vote, there may also be a hidden Hispanic vote that's hard to poll. I think that's something that pollsters have not completely figured out yet so they may balance each other out but I think in any of these places where it's this close it can go a different way without some giant underlying story it's just because the polling was close and we don't know the composition which we will know more about in just a little bit in just a few minutes but until we do we have to talk about it <laughs> Here's a, do you think that there might be a hidden in the same way that there might be an undervote a hidden Trump undervote that there might be a hidden Clinton yeah. undervote and, and the other words maybe some of these blue-collar women uh, who don't want to advertise that they don't like mm -hmm. Donald Trump because they're around a lot of Trump supporters might feel yeah. compelled. Or maybe some of these blue-blooded Republican women who don't really want to yeah. feel comfortable I, I'm with not that. a big believer in the hidden vote, so I, I don't think that's going to be a major factor. But it is true there's a lot of division. Um, even if you look at the Catholic vote, the white Catholic vote, which Romney won overwhelmingly, and Trump will probably win with a smaller margin. Part of that reason is because Catholic, white Catholic women and white Catholic men are probably going to split uh, in how they vote. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break. Uh, when we come back, uh, more coverage of Election Day. Thank you so much. We're an hour away from the first poll closings and minutes away from the first exit polling data that we're going to share with you. Hillary Clinton is heading into Manhattan right now. She hopes that Manhattan will be where she celebrates victory. Donald Trump is doing the same. He hopes where he'll be celebrating victory. Just blocks away. Let's check in now with Sarah Seidner. She's in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. I believe that's in Montgomery County. Am I right, Sarah? Uh, it's Bucks County, and it's a very important county. If you look back uh, to 1988, that is the last time that this county went red, and that was George Herbert Walker Bush. They helped put him into the White House. Every single election since then has gone Democratic. However, uh, the Trump campaign hoping that this can be a county that helps to kind of push out one of those bricks in the Democratic firewall that has been Pennsylvania for so many years, uh, 1992, uh, 1996, you name it, uh, this has gone Democratic since 1988. But a very important county to watch, and that is why you are also seeing very long lines here as well where we're standing. We've been seeing this pretty much all day long. Early in the morning, lots of folks, and now after work, there's a whole long line here ready to vote. Jake. Pennsylvania, key commonwealth. Sarah Seidner, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us this hour. Our Election Day coverage continues now with one Mr. Wolf Blitzer and Anderson Cooper. Happening now, America votes, and whatever happens next, American history is being made. Uh, will the uh, night end with the first woman president-elect or a first-time candidate heading for the Oval Office? Exit interviews, our first exit polling data coming in now. What the numbers could say about how the night ends, that and early signs that turnout it is, is high. Ballot brouhaha, Trump forces fire the first shot in what could be a long legal battle over the election, and a judge fires back. I'm Anderson Cooper. And I'm Wolf Blitzer. It's a CNN election coverage special, and you're in the Situation Room.
A very big night ahead. Our political director is crunching the exit polling numbers right now. We'll check in with him momentarily. But first, let's go to CNN's Brianna Keeler. She's covering the Clinton campaign for us. She's joining us from New York uh, this morning. Hillary Clinton voted. We just saw her leave her home in Chappaqua, New York, outside of New York City. Brianna, what has she been doing and where will she be tonight? Well, she had quite the late night last night, Wolf. As you know, she, after a four-stop swing through battleground states, wasn't home uh, landing, certainly in Westchester County, until about 3.30 a.m. this morning. So she charged through the morning, voted at about uh, in the 6 a.m. hour, and then she took a bit of a breather after doing some radio interviews. She's done some more radio interviews, and as you know, she is now on her way from her home in Chappaqua to Manhattan. She is going to be hunkering down at the Peninsula Hotel. She'll be looking uh, and waiting for the results to come in. But of course, many hours until then. And until then, Wolf, she is going to be working on her speech, which is pretty characteristic for Secretary Clinton to do something really up until the last minute. And we do understand that she has two versions of that speech, one for if she wins and one for if she loses. But talking to Clinton campaign sources, they're feeling pretty confident about the night, Wolf. What else are you hearing from the Clinton campaign? I know they're feeling confident, uh, but are they, shall we say, very, very confident? Are they nervous? How do they, how do they really sense this night could go? I'm not picking up a lot of nerves. Uh, I will tell you that, Wolf. I think it's really for them as they see it more a matter of when, not if she wins. So that is going to be the question. And uh, we don't know the answer to that question. What I can tell you is that while many people on the campaign, their work is largely done, this is the day where they wait and see what happens and what the voters decide. There are still a number of people who work for the analytics team and who work for the field team who are hunkered down in the Brooklyn headquarters and they are waiting for information to come in. They're not just relying on necessarily the polls closing, but trying to see with the models they have generated what they think the results are going to be, Wolf. Brianna Keeler, we'll be checking in with you uh, throughout the night, of course. Let's check in with Chris Freights right now. He's in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, Chris, what are you hearing? What are you seeing? Hey, well, I got to tell you, we were probably on our way to a record-breaking night of turnout, at least here in this precinct. Almost 900 extra ballots have just come in here. And to give you some sense, there's about 3,100 people registered to vote in this precinct. Already they've seen 2,500 ballots cast. They expect another 1,000 people to register today. And that is because, of course, New Hampshire, a battleground state. It's a small state. There's only about four electoral votes up, but it's a mighty state. You just have to ask Al Gore if he had won New Hampshire. He would have won the presidency even after losing Florida. And that's a lesson that all the campaigns have learned from, and they're really getting out the vote here. In fact, the Clinton campaign has knocked on more than a million doors. They've called two million supporters to get out to vote today. The Donald Trump campaign, 1.8 million doors knocked, 1.7 million phone calls made. And that's because there's no early voting here in New Hampshire. Tonight is the night you have to get your supporters to the polls. And Independence Wolf are going to be huge here. As you know, the undeclared voters are uh, outnumber both Democrats and Republicans here. And to just give you some sense of how this went down four years ago, 43% of people who cast a ballot were independents. They broke for Barack Obama. Hillary Clinton hoping those independents break her way today. Donald Trump trying to reverse that trend and break that Hillary Clinton blue wall. We'll see what happens, but I can tell you, lots of excitement here, lots of turnout. New Hampshire is going to be a very exciting place to watch, Wolf. It certainly will be. Uh, Chris Freights, thanks very, very much. Momentarily, by the way, we're going to be getting the first exit poll results. Our political director, David Chalian, is crunching the numbers right now. We'll share them with you momentarily, but I want to go to Anderson right now. Wolf, thanks very much. I want to uh, bring in our panel. It's frankly too big to even introduce everybody, so I'm just going to get right to it and you all can figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Essie, what are you expecting tonight? What are you looking for in, in the next hour or two? Well, uh, in, in like small ball, uh, I'm, I'm looking at things like ground game. Um, are traditional things like ground game still important? We're going to be able to see whether Trunk's, Trump's sort of disinterest in a traditional ground game will matter and whether Hillary's almost historic uh, ground game will make a huge difference. Big picture? Right, because the Trump people all along now have been saying we're in a new age of politics. That's right. Those yeah. thinking ground, talking about big ground games, that's old school thinking. He might be right. Um, he flipped a lot of things on, on its head, and that's why tonight, among so many other re uh, uh, for so many other reasons, is historic. But also, this is a referendum 
election on a number of things. It's a referendum on Obama. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton sort of walked away from him in the beginning, but now she's right there, four more years. Is that what people want? But also on Washington. If Donald Trump, a candidate who is so unconventional, so controversial, lacking political experience, um, really alienating a lot of people, if he pulls this off, this will be momentous. Uh, I don't want to say more historical than the first woman president. It wouldn't be, but almost less believable. Well, either way, Nia, I mean, this is a historic night. Either right. you have probably, you know, the, the biggest outside candidate since, I, I don't know. Since ever, yeah, I mean, since ever. I, Andrew I mean, Jackson, uh, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, and unconventional, right, in terms of the way he ran and bucking political correctness uh, and running this Twitter campaign, essentially, and in, in rejecting ads and ground game. And then Hillary Clinton, uh, this, this, this person who would be historic, the first woman uh, president. You see people going uh, to the grave sites of, of, of suffragettes and, and leaving uh, their I voted stickers. So I, I think for a certain segment of, of, of voters, particularly older women who have waited for this moment for, for decades and decades. It'll be uh, really meaningful. But, but I, I do think, in terms of Donald Trump, there, there were two theories about why Romney lost. Was it because he didn't get enough white voters, or was it because uh, he didn't have a diverse uh, base of voters who liked him? And I think we, you know, I mean, so far, it looks like Trump is betting that it's about white voters, and it could be that he does better than Mitt Romney. David, you've worked with, with you know, candidates on, on both sides of the aisle, presidents on both sides of the aisle. At this point, do the campaigns themselves, I and mean, they all have internal data, do they know whether or not their candidate is going to win? Yes, they've got a very good idea. They Usually do. the candidate will know the night before, one or two nights before, we've got it, we don't have it. You know, you got to prepare yourself if you don't have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what they really do is they start thinking about governing. And they, they, okay, what comes next? And I do think tonight, one of the things you ought to look for, if, if it's Hillary, the question is how big a victory. If it's a small victory, it's not going to help her with governing. It's going to leave a lot of recriminations among Trump voters. If it's a big victory, she'll be much more, she'll have much more leverage uh, going forward. For example, if, if, if Latinos really step up and deliver a place like Florida, a pivotal state, the Republicans are going to be under enormous pressure. Let's go ahead and get an immigration bill done and get this issue behind us so we can we can appeal to these people. And, and if it's Donald Trump, I mean, how do you sort of bring together all these groups? If it's Donald have... Trump, I just think we're in unknown territory. I, I don't know where the hell you go there, because I don't know how you put together a government. A lot of people I know won't go into government. I will tell you that some, a couple people in the foreign policy area, I think, have stayed on the sidelines in case they're needed you know, the, for in a Trump government. But I think you're going to see the markets respond extremely negatively. You're going to be a lot of, a lot of other repercussions. It's not to say he can't put it together. It's going to be so he's in really uncharted territory. Yeah. Kirsten? Well, and he's also talked about, it, it, you know, if he wins, the type of people that he would put in office would be pretty divisive people, like a Rudy Giuliani as attorney general or a Newt Gingrich as secretary of state. All right. We just got the first exit poll. Let's go to Wolf for that, Wolf. Anderson, thanks. Uh, certainly uh, the uh, first exit poll numbers will give us an indication who's actually voting, why they're voting the way they are. I want to go to see this David Shelley and our political director. You've been crunching the numbers. What are we learning so far? The first poll closings, what, in a couple hours? That's right, Wolf. This is uh, interviews that we conducted across the nation with voters as they were leaving the polls. And these are preliminary numbers. These will shift throughout the night as more voters come in. But one of the things we're looking at is when did people decide? And take a look at this. Very few late deciders. 7% tell us in the last few days. Another 5% say within the last week. That's about, that's 12% there. But the other 88% decided in October or before that. So swirl of headlines at the end of the campaign. Just a small group of late deciders there. Another thing that we looked at, Wolf, is a quality, the qualities in the candidate that people are looking for here. This is an electorate hungry for change. Look at that. 38% of voters across the nation today say the number one quality they're looking for in the candidate is somebody who can bring about needed change. But take a look at this. If you're looking for a candidate with the right experience, 22%. Good judgment, 22%. Add those together. If you're looking for the right experience or good judgment, you're about 44% there, add those together, versus the 38% change candidate. This has been a Trump stronghold, change. This has been a Hillary Clinton stronghold, right experience and good judgment. They're splitting. What's really interesting is that not many people were looking for an empathetic candidate, caring about me and my problems. That only 15% of the electorate said was their number one candidate quality. Wolf? 
And explain to our viewers, David, how we're dealing with these exit poll results, because you're going to be giving us a lot more later this hour and certainly next hour as well. Right, so we're looking at sort of the racial makeup of the country, the education uh, levels that voters have today in the country, sort of the what the electorate looks like, and we'll be comparing it to what it looked like four years ago and what we can glean from that. Also, these exit polls are married up with real vote returns as they come in so that our decision desk can start making projections as the night goes on and, and vote tallies start coming in. I know you're crunching more numbers. We'll get back to you shortly. In the meantime, let's go back to Anderson. Uh, Wolf, David, thanks so much. Interesting to see those exit polls. I mean, the day of Bill Clinton, kind of, I feel your pain. Apparently, they don't really care whether or not they they are they you know understand you. It's more about judgment. Uh, it's about change uh, and uh, leadership. Yeah. Do you think it, it, who, 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 do you think it helps either? <laughs> it's it's hard to say. I mean, what thirty eight percent were for change? You imagine those are folks uh, who would vote for Donald Trump, right? Uh, and the other ones, in terms of temperament and experience, uh, you imagine those are voters. I mean, this is a split electorate. I mean, we can see that in all of the polls, and people seem to want different things. Well, and empathy just clearly isn't what voters are interested in this year because you have two candidates who poll pretty low when it comes to empathy. And so, I, I don't know, we might be sort of beyond the hope change um, kind of I idealism and more into a, a realism with what we need and the big hurdles that we have. Corey, I mean, one of the things Donald Trump kept, hit, kept uh, hitting Hillary Clinton for is uh, what he said was a lack of judgment. You know, that, that she has experience, but it's the wrong kind of experience, it's the wrong kind of judgment. When you see those exit polls, does that speak to your candidate? Well, I think it does, but I also think if you look at, there was another story earlier today about another exit poll and said, you know, what is the most important thing that you're looking for? And it was a strong leader. That's what, you know, Donald Trump has positioned himself in this race, whether you agree or disagree, that he's going to be tough on our ad adversaries, he's going to be tough on crime, he's going to be tough on ISIS. And the exit polling that we saw a little earlier today that was reported by Politico and others had said that was the number one issue that they saw in their exit polling data. If that is the case... That bodes well for Donald Trump on those exit interviews. Although, I, I, for Democrats, will probably <laughs> yes. quibble with the definition of what's being a strong leader. Actually. Exactly. I do think that people want a strong leader. They don't want the wrong leader. And I think for so many Americans, and especially what we're going to see is the Hillary Clinton coalition come out and elect her tonight, they definitely do not see Donald Trump as the right leader for this country. I, I also think that a, a big number that I believe will benefit Hillary is that 88% decided what their decision was going to be before October. Mm. And that was, you know, before the Comey letter. This was at the time after the conventions when Hillary Clinton was really running away with the polls, when people were thinking she is the one that has the temperament, the judgment to be commander in chief. By the way, that piece of, of what has come out in the polls has never changed for her. All right, we got to take a quick break. A lot more with our panelists ahead. We'll get reaction to the polling data from a senior Trump advisor. That and more as our CNN election coverage counts down to campaign history. We'll be right back. Election Night in America is brought to you by CA Technologies. Go to CNNPolitics.com for more about this momentous election and download the CNN Politics app from the App Store, built with CA Technologies. We're counting down to the first poll closings right now, and as we do, we're checking in with our correspondents across the country. CNN's Ana Cabrera is in Golden, Colorado, with an update on voting there. What are you seeing, Ana? Hey there, Wolf. We are inside the Jefferson County Election Center where all these workers behind me are getting ready to process ballots that have been returned. Now, Colorado is a mostly mail-in ballot state, and we know at least two-thirds of all registered voters in this state have already cast their ballot. We just got some new numbers from the Colorado Secretary of State's office that show 2.4 million voters in Colorado have now voted. And right now, registered Republicans are leading slightly by about 30 36,000 vote returns or ballot returns. Again, we don't know who is voting for who, but when you just look at party affiliation, Republicans have an early edge. Now, remember, that was the same about this time last year or last election, I should say, in 2012, where Republicans were leading early on, and ultimately President Obama ended up sweeping the state. Now, the workers here in this room are taking their ballots out of the envelopes. The envelopes are where people have signed their ballots, and so they'll take the ballots out. 
they'll straighten them out and put them in piles to get them ready to go through the vote counting machine. Now, the vote counting machine will process those ballots. There's anonymity to it, so they will no longer know who cast which ballot, uh, which vote on their ballot in particular. But again, this is a process that's been going on now, well, for about two weeks since those ballots were sent out and are now being mailed back. We'll keep an eye on what's going on here um, as we're now hearing that there have been a few hiccups in the voting processing machines across the state. That is confirmed from Jefferson County election officials. I'm working to get some more information on that for you, and we'll check back shortly. In Colorado, a key battleground state. Anna, thanks very much. Jim Acosta is over at Trump campaign headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. Let's go to him right now. Uh, so what's right. the latest? What are you hearing? Uh, we'll talk to a number of sources this afternoon. Uh, in the words of one uh, top uh, party official, momentum. They're feeling momentum uh, in several battleground states. Uh, obviously, the Trump campaign, we've been talking about this, uh, is very excited about Michigan. They feel like, uh, looking at the public polls and the internal polls, that that race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in the state of Michigan has tightened. I have talked to a uh, very key Republican source in just the last few minutes uh, that uh, did say that there are concerns in North Carolina Carolina and Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania obviously is a key state that Donald Trump has targeted since the beginning of this campaign, uh, chock full of working class voters that are uh, going to be instrumental uh, if he's uh, going to be successful later on tonight. But there are concerns, I'm told, from a key Republican Party source about how he is performing right now uh, and what they're seeing in Pennsylvania. Also, there are some concerns about North Carolina, according to this source. Uh, obviously, Wolf, we've talked about this time and again. It's sort of that uh, Trump trifecta. He needs to win Florida, North North Carolina, Ohio, uh, and then peel away uh, some more blue states if he if he has any hope of winning the White House. Uh, but I'm I'm talking to one Republican source, key Republican source, who says there are there are some jitters inside the Trump campaign when it comes to the state of North Carolina. Now, obviously, the polls are still open; people are going and voting as we speak, and so we shouldn't draw any conclusions. And this could be a very long night. Uh, but uh, just going into today, I can tell you from talking to several Republican sources, Wolf, uh, and these are not just uh, these are not never Trump people; these are people who are supporting the Republican nominee. Uh, that uh, there are concerns that Donald Trump can pull this off tonight, but of course. We have to watch and wait just like everybody else, Wolf. Yes, we certainly do. Jim Acosta in New York, thank you. Joining us now, Trump campaign senior communications advisor, Jason Miller. Jason, thanks for joining us. Wolf, thank you for having me. All right, so, you know, going into Election Day, uh, Donald Trump, he was down in the national polls a bit. His path to 270, as I think you acknowledge, is narrow. What does Trump need uh, to see happen tonight in order to win? In other words, which states are the most important battleground states right now? Well, Wolf, let me back up one second to North Carolina with the intro that I had from Jim Acosta here, who uh, at this point in the game, I mean, this is election day. I'm not sure who these anonymous sources are or if they even exist. Here's the reality in North Carolina, and here's why if you're a Trump supporter, you should be, feel, be feeling really good right now. Typically, Republicans trail and combine absentees and early voting going into election day, and we have big performances on election day uh, to ultimately bring home the win. So in the state of North Carolina, right now, the combined votes for Republicans were 140 thousand votes better than the ticket was four years ago in North Carolina. So that's a huge momentum swing. So we're feeling very good about North Carolina. I also want to back up and talk about Florida for just one moment. There are four key counties where Republican turnout is overperforming our percentage of the electorate. When you look at Duval in the northeastern corner of the state, you look at Hillsborough, which is where Tampa is. Republican performance is 6% better. Democratic performance is 4% worse, given a 10-point delta. Then we talk about powerful Broward County, where a big stronghold of Democratic votes that are coming out. Republicans are overperforming their percentage of the electorate by 6 points. Democrats are underperforming by 6 points. That's a 12-point swing. And then over in Collier in southwest Florida, it's a three three and a half points better for Republicans, 3.5 less for Democrats. So in four key indicators around the state of Florida, we're fe feeling very good. And again, just like I pointed out with North Carolina, the early voting uh, spread between Republicans and Democrats in the state of Florida is 81,000 votes closer than it was four years ago. So we look at key indicators like North Carolina, Florida, and even today in Cuyahoga County in Ohio, where Democratic turnout is down between about 2 and 5 percent. Uh, those numbers are still a little bit uh, moving around, but Democratic turnout definitely is down in Cuyahoga. We're looking at these swing states, and we feel very good with where we are. Cuyahoga County, yeah, that's where Cleveland is, usually a Democratic stronghold right there. You agree you need Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida, all three of them. If you lose one of them, it's over. I think you agree, right? 
Uh, those are three core battleground states. We feel very good about where we are in early voting, feel very good about where actual voting is happening today. All the indicators are coming back positive. Uh, we obviously want to win these states. There are other scenarios that for some reason uh, we don't win one of these. We don't win one of these. We look at Michigan, we feel very good about for today. Colorado, feel very good. And even Pennsylvania, we're closing strong. We have a really good shot here today, Wolf. This morning, uh, Donald Trump said in a phone interview about the re election results, and I'm quoting him now, he said, who knows what happens ultimately? Does Trump have some doubts about his chances for a win tonight? No. Mr. Trump is very confident that he's going to win tonight. We feel good about the race. Uh, we're the ones who are closing strong. And a lot of it is the message, Wolf. It's this positivity, the fact that he's giving people something to vote for. We're talking about the trade message. We're talking about repealing and replacing Obamacare. We're talking about going into African-American communities and saying we're going to present an urban renewal plan that will improve schools and help make sure we get money to black-owned businesses so they can start and expand their operations. These are very tangible, very specific things that we're saying that we can go and do uh, with the, the Trump right. and Pence ticket. And these are not things that Hillary Clinton is able to offer at this point. I know you got to run. Let me ask you one qu final question. Uh, your campaign, as you know, filed a lawsuit in Nevada last night over early voting, alleging a voting station was kept open two hours longer than it should have been uh, kept open. Uh, your, your request today was denied. Uh, what they said was that the people had gotten in line on time. The lines were so long, they let them vote if they were in line on time. What's wrong with that? Why did you file this legal challenge? Well, if, what the lawsuit was about was making sure that the election officials were preserving and securing the ballots that were uh, that were cast that day. That's what it's about. And the reason why the judge made that ruling was because they said they were already preserving and securing them. There wasn't a disagreement about what we were trying to accomplish. So to us, that was a win. We feel good about it. It. We're going to continue to monitor elections around the country uh, the rest of the day. Jason Miller of the Trump campaign, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, thank you, Wolf. We'll have much more ahead this hour and throughout this historic election night. Uh, at this hour, voters across the country, they're still heading to the polls in huge numbers after work, after classes, taking their place in long lines to cast their ballots. We're going to have much more. More exit polling results coming up as well. All right, take a look at this. Uh, we're getting some live drone video from just outside Pittsburgh in what appears to be uh, Trump country. Very long voting lines. There are people set to be waiting. Get this. Two hours to cast ballots. Heavy turnout there. Indeed, heavy turnout across the country. Let's check in with CNN's Kyung La. She's in Las Vegas. Big turnout there. Kyung. Uh, well, the turnout really happened in early voting. This is a state where about two-thirds of the voters do vote early, and that ended on Friday. I'm standing, Wolf, in the busiest polling place, in what should be the busiest polling place in the biggest county in uh, in Nevada. And take a look. It's, it's a little bit quiet. And don't read too much into this, the uh, head of this particular polling place says. But it has been like this quite a bit of the day. Even as you look at the voting machines, there are so many of them waiting for people to show up. This is the story of Nevada, that early voting has been so successful. And I, and I want to give you a look here, too, Wolf. If you could swing all the way around, I'm going to walk over this way. The friendly faces you see over here, these are ob election observers. They are keeping an eye for anything representing both sides, both campaigns, Wolf. Good thing about early polling, uh, uh, early voting, I should say, Kyung, is that they release, usually release those numbers very quickly on this night. Kyung La in Las Vegas. Uh, uh, we've got some more fresh exit polling coming in right now for that. I want to go back to our political director, David Chalian. So what are you seeing in those exit poll results, David? Well, remember, I just want to caution, these are preliminary exit poll results from across the nation. These numbers likely will change. We're taking a look now at the racial makeup of the electorate. Look at this. 70% of the voters voting today, white, 12% African-American, 11% Latino, 4% Asian. So how does this compare to four years ago? Well, the white vote has ticked down a little bit. Four years ago, it was says 72% white electorate. It was a 10% Latino electorate. That's ticked up a notch. But it is roughly in line with what we saw four years ago. There's not a dramatic shift in the overall racial makeup of the electorate nationwide. Again, these are preliminary exit poll results, and these numbers can certainly and likely will change as more exit poll results come in. We also wanted to get sort of the motivation behind why people are voting for their candidate. Take a look at this. 42% of voters today tell us they are voting for the candidate that they're voting for because they strongly favor them. 
With all the negativity in this campaign, this is a bit of a surprise to me. I thought maybe this would be higher. Only 25% of voters today say they're making their choice because they dislike the opponent. With these negatives really high on both Trump and Clinton, two very unliked uh, candidates, I thought maybe more people would be voting for their opponents. But no, people out there today, a plurality of them, 42% say they're voting today strongly in favor of the person they're voting for. Wolf? And what you say, uh, David, is these numbers will change as more exit polling results come in. Is that right? That's right. More interviews are being conducted. Certainly, uh, these numbers are more about East Coast interviews. It, it has interviews from across the nation, but throughout the night, uh, you can go across the time zones of the country, and more and more uh, from across the country will be feeding in throughout the night. And we'll be checking back with you uh, often. David, thank you. Anderson, over to you. Uh, well, thanks very much. Back with the panel. But, Corey Sellers, it's interesting uh, that only 20-some-odd percent is, is voting because of who their, their person's opponent is, given the high dislikes that, frankly, both these candidates have. Well, I think a lot of the narratives that we've been talking about in this race from the very beginning are just being shattered. Mm -hmm. I mean, people talk about the fact that this was going to be a low turnout race because both candidates were so disliked. What we're going to see is that we're going to have turnout that breaks all records. I think that you can attribute that to the ground game and the direct outreach to minorities of Hillary Clinton. And I think that you can di direct that to uh, Donald Trump's pop, uh, populism on steroids, is what I like to call it, Ca talking about feeling the pain of these working class voters in places like Ohio and Pennsylvania. That's going to be the test tonight. But if you look at some of these numbers, one of the other numbers that stuck out were, were the participation of minority voters um, in this election. You know, I, I think that you actually have to take away from the national sample and begin to look at these numbers in the states like North Carolina, in the states like Florida, because as we start to see the numbers come out about 7.30, 8 o'clock from Florida, you will start to see the impact of voters of color on this race, and that may not bode well for Donald Trump. Uh, Andre, what stands out to you at this point? Uh, one of the big things that stands out to me is, is if you look at the money that was spent on this. Donald Trump, unconventional candidate, has been able to come in and run against almost every establishment and, and if you look at what Hillary Clinton's camp has spent in money to turn out vote versus Donald Trump, it shows there is a new way to campaign in this country. And it will be interesting to see. I'd like to just see per vote when it's all said and done what the Democrats had to spend per vote to get their candidates out or their voters out versus what the Republicans. If, had to if in the final analysis, though, Maria, Hillary Clinton wins. Isn't that really all that matters in a presidential race? I, I was just going to interject and say, except for if Hillary Clinton wins, none of that will well, matter. I would disagree. That doesn't mean you don't study that to move forward. Right. Well, but, well, yeah, but, no, but, then what I, but then what I would say is, then what will be underscored is how smart an investment the Hillary Clinton campaign was from day one. The kind of ground game that she has put together, the kind of infrastructure that we are now seeing that is pulling out every single one of the demographics that support her. And, and if Hillary Clinton loses and Donald Trump wins, I mean, there's going to be a whole new Right. Analysis to Andre's exactly. point of Absolutely. how campaigns get run in the future because it's been run for you know much less than what the Democrats. It'll mean the people control Washington again instead of special interest. Well, let's not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to Bakari's point, I think what you're going to see tonight is you're going to see massive turnout across the country. I think that's a good thing for that the country. Very candidate. Good. Yep. You know, I'm looking at the early numbers coming back in the state of New Hampshire. State I know very well. If you look at what the vote totals were in 2012. Many towns have already reached or exceeded the vote totals from 2012. And this is a state that doesn't have early voting. That means people before 5 o'clock tonight have gone and voted at a higher level of participation than they did in the entire 2012 presidential election. I think that's a great thing. Well, also, when you look back, I mean, and, and Donald Trump has a lot to do with this, you know, the numbers of people watching the primary debates, unprecedented from the beginning, from the get-go, people well, have been engaged in this election. Well, that's also why you're going to be able to tell a lot about this race early on along the East Coast, because you do have New Hampshire, you have Virginia, you have North Carolina, you have Florida. And, and if you look at Pl Florida, and if you look at the dynamics of this race, if Donald Trump does not win Florida, that's game, set, match. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. There, there aren't many paths uh, that he can get to the White House that don't include him having an inside straight. I mean, Polls sorry, close and Florida, what, 730? Seven, and then, yeah. and then you have, and then you have some at eight. And, then, and some, at, some, are, some are at eight when you get right. across the, through the panhandle. So you will have, this, you will have these votes come out uh, periodically throughout the night, and we'll be able to see what's going on pretty early. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, I mean, in, in past elections, it's been, what, like 1130 or so that we've often called, called races? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 11, 11 uh, the yeah. AP yeah. usually yeah. calls yeah. about yeah. between 11 and 11. 2000 was a little longer. 2000 was a yeah. little bit longer, a couple months. We're less than 30 minutes away from the first polls closing on this historic election day. No matter how you look at it, stay with us throughout the night. Our coverage continues in just a moment.
Election Night in America is brought to you by VoteForEnergy.org, a program of the American Petroleum Institute. Log on to learn more and by the well-equipped 2017 Mitsubishi Outlander. We're watching late crowds of voters in Pennsylvania. Our CNN drone is flying over a polling place near Pittsburgh. We're live in many of the crucial battleground states right now that are so critical in determining who will win the White House. We're back with a special edition, uh, election night edition, I should say, of the Situation Room. We're counting down to the first results in the presidential race. Votes will start coming in to the CNN Election Center just minutes from now from Indiana and Kentucky, where some polling places close early. Right now, we're getting more insights from our exit poll results. Let's go back to David Chelly. And David, what else are you learning? Hey, Wolf, we are looking at the Barack Obama factor in tonight's election. You saw him campaigning hard out there for Hillary Clinton. Take a look at his approval rating across the country tonight in the exit polls. 54% approve, 45% disapprove. This is about what we had seen in the pre-election polling. That seems to be bearing out among the electorate tonight. Also, we asked, do you want to continue Barack Obama's policies or not? Or do you want the more liberal or conservative? Take a look at this, Wolf. Those that want to continue Barack Obama's policies or want more liberal policies, they add up to about 47% of the electorate. 46% of the electorate today say they want more conservative policies than Barack Obama's policies. Clearly a divided country in terms of the president's policies. And finally, we asked about the feelings of the federal government. I don't think this will surprise anyone paying attention uh, to this election, Wolf. But take a look at this. Dissatisfied, 46% of voters today with the federal government. Add 23% of angry voters. Take a look at that. That is 69% of voters voting today are either dissatisfied or angry with the federal government. That is what both of these candidates have been trying to respond to throughout this election, Wolf. We're going to get more numbers from you uh, shortly, David. Thanks very much. Jake and Dan are with us. Jake, these numbers, what do they say to you? Well, they suggest uh, if they hold up, and these are still er early-ish uh, exit poll numbers, that this could be a long night in a competitive race, a very divided country, and, and if a lot of people uh, feel resentful of Washington, uh, that's significant. 54% supporting President Obama, approving of the job he's done. That's also significant. And it, it shows what we've been saying all along, that this, uh, this could be a very competitive race. The fact that Barack Obama's approval rating is well above 50% is very telling. And it is so different from what we've seen in recent history with uh, an, a, a, a president on their way out, Republican or Democrat. And it is a reminder of why Hillary Clinton has done something unusual, which is embrace a two-term president and effectively run on a third term. But there are a lot of angry voters based on these numbers out there that, as you say, Jake, that seems to vote relatively well uh, for Donald Trump. It would. I mean, that is the message that he's been driving home since the very moment he came down the escalator in the summer of 2015. The government is broken. broken. It's not working for you when it comes to trade deals. It's not work, working for you when it comes to immigration or terrorism. Uh, and as he's been saying the last few weeks, it's time to drain the swamp of Washington, D.C. That has been a very powerful message. And obviously, it's, uh, it's taken, uh, taken root in the minds of a lot of voters. You're only 15 minutes away, Dana, or so from the first actual votes mm -hmm. coming in. Exit poll numbers are important. Mm -hmm. uh, they give us an, a clue, an indication. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not so right. But votes obviously count. That's the whole ball game, no question about it. And it is going to be so fascinating to see as those vote boards come in, as you start to read them, whether or not what we've been looking at, whether it is the divide in terms of the way that voters want this country to, to go or the divide with regard to these two candidates bear out in how we see these states come out. Let's go over to Anderson for some analysis. Anderson. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Uh, Kirsten, I mean, as we look at, at Again, more of this exit polls, and again, it's very early uh, in, in the evening. It, it, just a reminder just how divided this nation is. I mean, essentially split evenly on whether they want policies uh, akin to President right. Obama's or more liberal or the complete right. opposite. And angry. And, you know, and I, 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 there was a poll right before the election that had two-thirds of all voters saying that they were ashamed to be an American. So you have a very unhappy electorate right now. But I think if you look at the breakdown, and I think we have to always remember there are a lot of early voters, and so, right. th so the composition might be a little different when you add that in, but it doesn't look that different from the composition in 2012. So these are early numbers. We have to wait and see. But right now we have 
white voters about two points down, black voters about one point down, Hispanic up one, and Asian up one. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see as the night goes on if that changes and how the overall composition, once we factor everything together. Uh, but as, as together. Kirsten pointed out, in, in early voting, certainly in a state like Florida, we've seen a lo much larger turnout of, uh, of Latino voters. Yeah. And, and a different sort of Latino voter, uh, not just sort of traditional Cuban uh, uh, voters. We have much more Latino population in Florida now from, from South America, Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic. You see uh, some change in terms of the Asian vote in a place like uh, North Carolina. I mean, they're voting. You see a vote, voting surge there as well uh, with, with Latinos and all across the South. I mean, that those two voting blocks are the fastest growing voting blocks. And historically, uh, they haven't had the turnout numbers that African Americans Americans have had or uh, or uh, whites have had. I, I mean, this is going to be the most diverse electorate uh, that America has ever seen. Uh, and we have in Donald Trump, a candidate uh, that hasn't always known how uh, to reach out to those groups and in many ways uh, has repelled them. I think the fact that they're showing up in such numbers uh, certainly speaks to Donald Trump. It also, I think, speaks to a lot of these grassroots organizations across the country like Voto Latino uh, that have been registering uh, these, these, these groups in droves. It, it's also speaks to where the future of the country is going. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the future is here already. That's been that will be the biggest question answered tonight or early tomorrow or hopefully not in weeks. Um, but, you know, the the rationale behind a lot of the Republican consternation over Trump, people who are not voting for Trump, was two things. One, it's kind of a bad look for conservatives, as, as the kid would say. <laughs> Two, that he wasn't going to be electable in a general because of the changing demography of, of the country. That will bear out. Uh, we, we will find out if that's actually true uh, tonight. But it's funny, when you go back, and I went back through some of the polling in the Republican primary about whether voters prioritized electability. They really didn't. Mm. If they had, we would have Marco Rubio or John Kasich as the nominee. So this issue, this you know, angst over a, a Republicans, you know, putting up a, an electable candidate, might have really just been from strategists and, and analysts, because clearly it wasn't uh, that that important to the electorate. David, um, when Bill Clinton ran for presidency in 1992, 88 percent of the electorate was Caucasian white. Hillary Clinton runs at 70 percent. You know, we're, the, the, the numbers are coming down, down, and down. And that's why for both parties, you know, appealing to the minority vote matters. And I think one of the questions, if Donald Trump loses, now he may win. I, I think these numbers suggest he could still win this thing. But if he loses, there's going to be a big question about the Republican Party relationship, especially to Latinos. I would point out that California used to be a purple state. Mm. California Republicans could win California to the presidential level. And in the 1990s, the Republicans put a ballot out there, a proposition, Proposition 187, that stuck a, stuck a stick right in the eyes of Latinos. And Latinos went over to the Democratic side, and California has been a blue state ever since. Mm. It, it went off the board. If that happens nationwide... The Republicans are going to fracture as a party. I mean, there's been so much talk of the autopsy that was done by the Republican yes, Party absolutely. in 2012. If Donald Trump does not win tonight, I mean, there's going to be autopsies of autopsies. But, I mean, do they, yeah, I mean, do they just re-release that same autopsy? <laughs> and say, hey, I, I just don't think yeah. an autopsy is needed. Yeah, I mean, the reason sort of, will be very clear, yeah. and it will be because the results of that autopsy were completely sort of overlooked but, but, or you know, but, but, but within the Republican the Party, day. there's always a difference of opinion or that it was there wasn't a true conservative candidate. Right. There, there'll be that yeah, argument yeah. made. Or... And, and that's the thing. I mean, Donald, as I keep saying, Donald Trump might do better than Mitt Romney. Right. I mean, he's he's going to win Ohio, possibly. He's going to win Iowa, uh, possibly. He could, he could, A, just win the whole thing uh, on this strategy uh, that was really about uh, white voters, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. and so... But to lose to a candidate in Hillary Clinton who has 54% disapproval rate going into the election. And if you still lose, then you've got to do some you've got to do some soul searching about where you are. But the Republicans have got to do some soul searching anyway because there were a lot of Republicans that wanted somebody talking about things that Republicans for too long have talked about but hadn't done. And that's reforming Washington. That's getting out, you know, the Republicans allowed the budget to be spent over a trillion dollars last year. So they haven't demonstrated be it what a conservative is. And there, there are a lot of people out there going show, saying the Republicans haven't shown anything different than the Democrats. And that's why Donald Trump was successful this year. There's problems within the party itself with an identity. I think one of the things that you're going to see tonight, and Nia brought this up, and I think that Hillary Clinton's going to have a more difficult time winning a state like Ohio mm -hmm. and Iowa where she's going to fare much better than people think in a state like Florida. And then you see North Carolina, which is in, in the deep south, 
actually turning purplish blue. And I think that for a long period of time, you're going to be able to put Iowa and Ohio in the red category. And we're getting to the point where you can put Florida and North Carolina in the blue category. And what that shows is the shifting of, dy uh, of demographics in this country. I I've sat here many times with you, Anderson. I said that Donald Trump's number one problem, the thing that will beat Donald Trump in November, and we're here now, is demographics. Mm -hmm. It was true when he was nominated, yeah. and it's very true now. And unless the Republican Party adapts, there was a picture taken, and I know Maria wants to get in, but there was a picture taken in South Carolina during the South Carolina primary. It was a picture of Trey Gowdy, Marco Rubio, Tim Scott, and Nikki Haley. It was what the Republican Party wanted their future to look like. The next day, Corey Lewandowski went out and beat them by 20 points in the South Carolina primary. And so the, the Republican Party has a real problem of how it wants to look in the future. Corey, where are you tonight? Uh, I mean, obviously, we've talked about this before. Florida's a must-win state for Donald Trump. You still agree with that, yeah? Absolutely. W what other states are you looking for for that path to 270? I and mean, where do you see the, b the best... So I think the path that most people agree is best for Donald Trump is you have to win Florida. You're going to carry the Romney states. That would include carrying North Carolina, as you know. Mitt Romney went into North Carolina down 450,000 votes on Election Day and came out ahead of Barack Obama by 77,000. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump's numbers are much better than that. I think you include the state of New Hampshire there. And then I think if you look at the battleground states which are in play, Donald Trump is going to win the state of Ohio. No Republican has carried that state in two presidential election cycles. He is going to win Iowa. It's a foregone conclusion. Barack Obama wanted to go there, and he was told not to go there because they are so concerned about the state of Michigan that Barack Obama was in Michigan on the eve of the election, making sure that state stays blue. We will see if that is going to happen. What we do know is that the African-American turnout in Detroit is 50% of what it was four years ago. What we do know is that the blue-collar voters have that, yeah. historically... Yeah, we do know that from the early polling. Of course we know that. Oh. What we also know is that the blue-collar voters are exactly in line with Donald Trump because they've been hammered by bad trade deals, which Hillary Clinton has called the gold standard. And now they're trying to change that. The Democrats are campaigning in Michigan. That is where a state that's a great opportunity for Donald Trump. And then you look at Colorado, where he's got a 16,000 vote lead going in to Election Day. That's unheard of for a Republican in a state like that. So, Marie, when you hear Corey's uh, idea of where the path is, mm -hmm. do you it, buy that? It's still, it, I mean, sure, anything is possible. It's still very narrow. It's very steep. And it's riddled with thickets <laughs> and thorns <laughs> and holes that Donald Trump himself dug. The first one being, if he loses tonight, he will have started that loss the minute that he came down that escalator after he called Mexican immigrants rapists, criminals, and drug lords. There is an exit poll that, actually an election eve poll that Latino Decisions does, and they're the premier polling firm for Hispanics in this country. They did it last night. They did it last night. 5,000 5, 5, Hispanics. So they do it bilingually, which is how are you supposed to poll Latino voters? They said the number one issue for Latinos that they are going to come out and vote on is immigration. That is almost unheard of because normally it's jobs in the economy. This is how much the discussion okay. on immigration in has impacted. In 2008 and 2012, both President McCain and President Romney <laughs> decided they were going to bet on states like Michigan mm -hmm. and Pennsylvania in some hope that African American voters simply were not going to come out and they were going to be able to swell white vote in certain parts. And that is the same gamble that Donald Trump is taking tonight. It's this hope that somehow everybody in Detroit is just going to sit at home. It's this hope that everybody in Cuyahoga County and in, in, in Ohio is just going to stay at home or everybody in Philadelphia is just going to stay home. And it, it just does not work that way. Every single cycle, the Republican Party goes after Pennsylvania uh, and Michigan and Wisconsin as if they're their unicorn. And it hasn't worked for President McCain or President Romney. Let's take a look uh, with uh, Wolf and John at the Magic Wall, guys. Right, Anderson, thanks very much. John, uh, we're here at the Magic Wall. Tell us what uh, Hillary Clinton is looking for tonight, hoping for, what Donald Trump is hoping yeah. for. Work it out for us. First and foremost, it's finally here. A little more than an hour, we're going to start to fill this in. The first poll is actually closed in, what, five minutes or so? We start to fill it. I just want to tell our viewers, you see New Hampshire's already red. That's voting last night in a couple of small towns at midnight. So you'll see some states fill in during the night. Early on, they fill in by who's leading. That doesn't mean who wins. Follow us for the win. So if you're Hillary Clinton-Wolf, let's go back in time and look at a 2012 map. You just heard the panel. They're excited tonight, aren't they? Because they're expecting a close competitive race. So if you're Hillary Clinton, what are you looking for? Number one. Protect the blues. Everyone knows that. Protect Michigan and Pennsylvania. Number two, early on. Let's go through what happens here. Let me take this off. One of the things I'm going to look early on for Hillary Clinton, we probably not get this while it takes. See this little tiny county here in western Indiana? Indiana's likely to vote Republican tonight. It's a Republican state. It's the home of Donald Trump's running mate. Vigo County, Indiana. 
It says 49-49. He actually won by a few votes. It's only been wrong twice in the last 100 years. It has a 15 consecutive election streak. So it's one of the little quirky counties I like to look at on election night. So I'll watch that to see who the next president is going to be, period, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And then if you're Hillary Clinton, as the votes start to come in, one of the early states that will come in is Virginia. Now, Clinton is favored here. It's the home state of her running mate, the senator, the former governor, Tim Kaine. Even if she's ahead in Virginia, Wolf, this is going to tell us a lot about what's happening in competitive states like neighboring North Carolina. So the results start to come in here. Number one, how's Donald Trump doing out here? You asked me a question about Hillary Clinton, but her team is going to be looking at how much is Donald Trump running it up in these small rural counties. Because you have them here in Virginia, guess what? You have them in Ohio, you have them in Pennsylvania, you have them in North Carolina. Number two, Virginia ra close races are settled right up here in the Washington, D.C. area suburbs. This is Prince William County. Used to be reliably Republican. Look how much President Obama won it by four years ago when Virginia was relatively competitive. Republican voters have become Democratic voters. Those college-educated white voters for Hillary Clinton, they are key in Virginia. They're key in the Pennsylvania, especially in the Philly suburbs. They're key in the Cleveland suburbs, in the Columbus suburbs. They're key in the research triangle in North Carolina. This will be our first laboratory of those voters. Plus, the biggest, one of the biggest population growths here in Prince William County, Latinos. Latinos, we expect Latinos to have a big imprint on tonight's election. Our first indication will be right here. And then you're going to look down the coast. Obviously, Hillary Clinton's strategy in the last few days has been a blocking strategy. North Carolina will become key to us all night long. President Obama won it in 2008. Mitt Romney took it back in 2012. It is one of the most contested states in America. One thing we're going to look for here, what percentage of the white vote is Hillary Clinton getting? Back in 2008, President Obama got 35 percent of the white vote. He carried the state, right? just barely. Look at that, just barely. His percentage of the white vote fell to 31% four years ago, and he lost the state. Another place, a battleground within the battleground, we're going to look at Wake County. This is where Raleigh is. Yes, there's a significant African-American population here that Hillary Clinton must turn out. A lot of that was done in early voting. But look at the margin here. 55-44, President Obama wins this county by 11 points, Wolf, but he lost the state just narrowly. If you go back to 2008 when he won it, he won it by 15 points. Again, here, you're looking at African-American turnout, but also those college-educated white if women. If you're Donald Trump, what are you worried about right now? If you're Donald Trump, well, what you're looking at right now... And I, what do you want to do if you're Donald Trump? If you're Donald Trump, let's start right here. If you're Donald Trump, you want to win this. Bakari was just talking about this as the unicorn. I covered George W. Bush... Both times he wanted this very badly. Mitt Romney wanted this very badly. Republicans always look at Pennsylvania. Look at all that red. You look at all that red and you think, why can't I win this state? This is probably key to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has to win Florida. He probably has to win North Carolina. 29 electoral votes in Florida, 15 in North Carolina. But then he still needs more. He has to turn. Let's go back to the winning map. This is the winning map for the Democrats. This is eight years ago. Here's the winning map for the Democrats four years ago. If Donald Trump is going to win, yes, he has to keep all these reds from Romney, but he has to turn something big blue. This would be 29. This would be 20. This would be 16. Donald Trump is looking, number one, that's a must. And if he gets that, then he needs a big blue to leapfrog. He's also going to look in Corey's home state up there of New Hampshire. Donald Trump's path is more complicated. He has to win many more states. So what is he going to look for within these states? When we 8 o'clock hour is Pennsylvania. We'll get some clues in the 7 o'clock hour. 8 o'clock hour in Pennsylvania, number one, what are the margins in these small rural counties? Is Donald Trump running it up? Tiny, less than 1% of the population, but he needs to run it up like that, maybe even more. That's your white working class voters coming out to vote. Number two, what is he doing in these blue areas? He went to Scranton on purpose. Can, he get the, can this be a smaller margin for Donald Trump here? If it is, he's in play in Pennsylvania. Wolf and Anderson. Thanks very much, uh, John. We're about to get uh, the first results of the uh, 2016 presidential race. This election night will be historic no matter who wins. Right now, from coast to coast, across presidential battlegrounds, it's all coming down to this night and this choice in a history-making, rule-breaking, jaw-dropping campaign. Can we trust her with our security? She is disqualified. He just spends all of his time denigrating, criticizing America. Tonight, voters get the last word in the election of a lifetime. Hillary Clinton seeking to break the ultimate glass ceiling. When any barrier falls in America, it clears the way for everyone. Donald Trump hoping to shatter expectations again. They said Trump doesn't have a chance. We love defeating those people, don't we? After months of twists and turns, the first results now 
just minutes away. And we're going to win because of you. I will totally accept the results if I win. This is CNN's coverage of election night in America. The fight for the presidency, the battle for Congress, and the issues dividing the nation. Either we win this election or we lose the country. Our future is at stake. The people are choosing, the world is watching, and anything is possible until the last vote. We're watching the final dash to vote across the United States right now. Right now, we're in North Carolina and all the battlegrounds that will decide this presidential race. Millions of Americans, they are casting ballots in what could be the most important election of their lives. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Wolf Blitzer in the CNN Election Center. We're closing in on our first chance to make projections in the presidential race. Americans now choosing whether to elect the first woman to lead the nation or one of only a handful of political outsiders to ever serve as commander in chief. We're counting down to the top of the next hour, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's when polls close in the battleground states of Georgia and Virginia. They are two of the key races we'll be watching very closely tonight. Also, at the top of the hour, voting ends in Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. Some polling places in the eastern time zone in Indiana and Kentucky. In fact, they are closing right now. We expect early results from those two states at any moment. A total of 60 electoral votes are on the line in the next hour. And remember, 270 are needed to win the White House. Jake Topper, we've been building toward this moment now for nearly two years. That's right, Wolf, and there's never been a campaign like this. This could be, and there could be, new surprises in these final hours of this very long election. We're monitoring voting in key locations in the battleground states where the race could turn one way or another. We're also inside Clinton and Trump election night headquarters. They are both in New York City tonight, only about a mile and a half apart on the island of Manhattan. Jeff Zeleny is covering the Clinton campaign. Sarah Murray is covering the Trump campaign. First to you, Jeff. Well, Jake, the Clinton campaign is increasingly confident of reaching 270 electoral votes, even at this hour, as they don't know exactly how they will still get there. But I am here in the Javits Center. You can see behind me here, this is the stage where Secretary Clinton will give a speech, she believes, one way or the other tonight. She's just arrived in Manhattan from her house outside of the city here, and she'll be watching those results. At this hour, this is what the Clinton campaign believes the state of play is. They believe there is urgent concern in the state of North Carolina. I just talked to the campaign manager. And he told me that he believes this will be the tightest of all battleground states. It is exactly why Secretary Clinton, as she came here into Manhattan, was on the phone on the radio just a short time ago trying to get out the vote among her supporters in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is a city by city effort here, Jake. So, North Carolina, Ohio are their two trouble spots. But they are confident at this hour in Michigan. They believe that the visits there yesterday from the president and Secretary Clinton herself have turned around Michigan. And they are confident in Florida as well, Jake, because of that early vote. So it's at, at this hour, they believe the math reaches 270, even if they're not exactly sure which states will fall. Jake. All right, Jeff Zeleny, the Clinton campaign, very concerned about North Carolina. That is a state that President Obama won in 2008 and then lost to Mitt Romney in 2012. Let's go now to Sarah Murray. She's at Trump campaign headquarters, just a, a few blocks away from the Clinton campaign headquarters. Sarah. Well, Jake, it's a much tougher map for Donald Trump, and sources are telling me that one key internal metric is showing Donald Trump falling short of the 270 electoral votes he's going to need. Now, in spite of this, plenty of people in Trump Tower are still feeling very optimistic going into tonight. They're looking at a number of states, both internally and publicly, where the polls are very close, and they believe those could break late in their favor, and ultimately Donald Trump could come to victory. But this key internal metric at this point does not spell a win. Now, as for Donald Trump himself, he has boldly been predicting victory on the campaign trail, essentially since he got into this race, insisting that they're winning all over the country. But 
privately, he's a little bit more of a worrier. He has been pressing his aides all day long for updates on what they can point to, what data sets they have to indicate where the race is headed. And a lot of this has been sort of an, an educational moment for Donald Trump's aides and Donald Trump. This is obviously the first time he's ever run for president. So they're pointing to different states and saying, okay, we need to look at the independent voters in this state. We need to look at the early vote in this state where it's key. Uh, so it's an interesting dynamic going on behind the scenes in Trump Tower today, Jake. All right, Sarah Murray with the Trump campaign. Let's go now to David Challey and our political director. He has new information from the exit polls about what voters who went to the polls, at least according to these early-ish exit polls, think about these two major party candidates. David? Early-ish. Yes, Jake. These numbers are preliminary. They will change throughout the night. But you know one of the major storylines we've been following throughout this entire election season is just how unpopular both of these candidates are. That bears out with the voters as w today as well. Take a look at Hillary Clinton's favorability among people voting today across the country. 44% say they have a favorable opinion of her, 54% unfavorable. Donald Trump fares even worse on this score. 37% have a favorable opinion of him. 61% of voters in the country today tell us they have an unfavorable opinion of Donald Trump. And as you know, Jake, they, their Achilles heels were front and center in this campaign. Take a look about whether or not Hillary Clinton's email problem bothers voters. 62% of voters say yes. The whole email situation with Hillary Clinton does bother them. 37% say no. This has been a hurdle she hasn't really gotten over throughout the entire campaign. Same for Donald Trump about his treatment of women. 71% of voters say it bothers them. 28% say it doesn't. These problems that presented themselves throughout this campaign, their unfavorability, their specific issues uh, on email or women, they never resolved before voters went to the polls today, Jake. Fascinating. David Chalian, thank you so much. And Wolf, I mean, these exit polls also indicate that 54% of the American people approve of the current president. They just don't seem too excited about the one that they're going to have next. This is truly a historic night for the American people. Uh, I think it's historic indeed for the world right now, irrespective of whether Hillary Clinton wins or Donald Trump wins. This is, this is history. Well, either we're going to have the first female president in the history of this country, and we should remember that a only 100 years ago in this country, women didn't even have the right to vote nationwide. Uh, or we will have the first person elected president, Donald Trump, who has never served in government or the military, the first one ever. So, I mean, that is about as much of an outsider as you can get, even if he has been part of the, the financial world. Uh, and also, um, uh, in terms of his experience, uh, really quite new to the, to the whole scene. Because those of us who love American history, uh, we're really obsessed tonight by what's, what's going on, Dana. That's right. Not only is it the outsider versus uh, first women, woman, the potential of that, it's also, we were talking before about the fact that President Obama's approval ratings are so high and how Hillary Clinton has embraced him. And this dynamic hasn't happened. Even uh, the possibility of what is effectively a third term, somebody who it takes over the same party after a two-term president since 1988, when George Herbert Walker Bush won after Reagan's two terms. And then before that, it was back in 1940. 48. So this is a rarity if, uh, if Hillary Clinton does see success in her, as I said, embrace of a two-term president. We have our first key race alert of the night. All right, these are the first results. Actual votes coming in very, very early in the state of Kentucky. You can see 1% of the vote is in. Donald Trump uh, has almost 80% of the vote. Hillary Clinton has 18% uh, of the vote. Uh, he's ahead now by more than 2,600 votes. Once again, very, very early in Kentucky right now. Our first key race alert of the night. Uh, Let's go over to John King at the Magic Wall. John, a bunch of states are closing at the top of the hour, including some key battlegrounds that we've been paying a lot of attention right now. But let's take a look at Kentucky first. You look at Kentucky, and again, we have 1% of the vote in, so let's, we're going to have a... We're going to spend some time counting tonight, and that's good. We have a competitive race. We're going to count the votes. Uh, if you're Donald Trump, you love that as you watch the early results. Uh, let's just be clear. Uh, they don't tell us much, except... I think we can all agree Donald Trump is most likely to win the state of Kentucky and to win it quite handily. So what will we learn? We will learn a lot. Well, if you get cold country, 
down in here. And Donald Trump has made an appeal saying Hillary Clinton has abandoned coal miners, has abandoned old steel towns, has abandoned white working class voters who live in small town America. So Kentucky will teach us something tonight. The margins in places like this, if Donald Trump is running up, again, these are the first votes. So just don't go to Vegas or make any bets on this. But if Donald Trump is running up margins like this in these small towns, not a lot of people live here. You see the early votes, just 313 to 68. But if he's running up big margins like that, as we get the early results in a state like Kentucky, uh, that does tell us something. Because because there are communities like that here in southern Ohio. There are communities like that here in southwestern Pennsylvania. I mean, Virginia. There are communities like that in Pennsylvania, which we expect will be one of the defining tests tonight right here in Pennsylvania. Now, that's an 8 o'clock. So when we get results, the 6.30 polls have closed. The 7 o'clock results will start to come in. What you look for, as you're doing a little CSI, if you will, is you look at the towns in, in a state like this. And so what's going to happen here? <clears throat> Indiana, we expect, will stay red, but we want to look at it there. So the early results come from states that we think, you know, Indiana and Kentucky, we think are going to be reliably red, but we can still learn from them looking at those results. Just want to also tell our viewers, these New Hampshire votes, when you see, as we go through the night, if you're staying with us throughout the night, states will turn a color, that's who's leading. Until we call them, it's just who's leading in the vote. And so sometimes the map can look a little deceptive. These are, again, if you go into New Hampshire, uh, Dixville Notch, some other small towns voted last night. That's all we have in New Hampshire right now. The polls are still open. 50, 55 people right. or so yeah. have voted so far. So that's obviously... Uh, no let's stress, take a look no at the stress on them today. They got it over with The electoral night. map right now, okay. 270. That's the number you need to be elected right. president. Uh, going into this night, where do we stand? This is where we stood coming into the night. 268 to 204, so clearly an advantage for Secretary Clinton. If you look, the dark blue states, those are states we at CNN view as solid Democratic. It's almost certain to vote Democratic. The lighter blue states, those are leaning Democratic. We have to keep an eye on those when we start to get results, when we look deeper into the exit polls. The dark red states, reliably Republican. The shaded red states, leaning Republican. Again, in places like especially Ohio and Iowa, we're going to watch them all night long. The Clinton campaign thinks there could be a chance they're in play. But here's where we start tonight. So if we're going to have an early night, if you will, meaning Clinton starts with an advantage, what would an early night look like? An early night would look like she starts to run it up and we call that one. Now, I expect Florida to be competitive. That was the closest state in 2012 between Obama and Romney. That close. Florida is always a battleground. We can go back to 20, you know, 2000 or whatever. But if, if Clinton were somehow to lock up Florida early on, you know, we're projecting to the West. But if you're winning this state big, well, guess what? That would tell us something. But what would Trump have to do to offset Florida? Right. So let's if, if well, if she lost Florida, I mean, if she lost Florida, that's 29. If she wins Florida, what would Trump have to do well, if she, to, if, to still win the presidency? It's incredibly hard. Can he do it? Can he do it? Here's what Donald Trump would have to do to win. He would have to win North Carolina, which if you're losing Florida, you're North Carolina. But he would have to win North Carolina. He would have to win Pennsylvania. He would have to win Michigan. That gets him in the 255 trade. This is why Donald Trump needs Florida. Then you're looking at 255. Let's how say he, he gets Arizona and Nevada. How does he get there from there? So then you come out here and he gets Arizona. If he gets Arizona and Nevada, uh, that would put him over the top. But if you talk to even most Republicans in Nevada, believe with early voting, that one's going to be blue. We have it as a toss-up right now. So if he didn't get Nevada, but he got Arizona, can he, he could get, click on New Hampshire. Can he get there still? Then New he Hampshire. Can, then he can get there with New Hampshire. Uh, 270. So, yeah, so he can get there. The, the, the question is, if you're losing this, it's hard to believe you're going to win up here unless he has an overwhelming surge among those white working class voters. Is it impossible? No. If you look at the data heading into the election, unlikely. But that's why we're going to count them, Wolf. We're going to count all those votes. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to our first chance to make projections in this presidential race. Coming up, the first wave, wave of poll closings, including the battlegrounds of Georgia and Virginia. Much more ahead on this election night in America. Election Night in America is brought to you by CA Technologies. Go to CNNPolitics.com for more about this momentous election and download the CNN Politics app from the App Store, built with CA Technologies. Pennsylvania is one of the uh, battleground states we're watching right now in the final hours and minutes of voting on this historic election night. We're standing by for our first chance to make projections in the presidential race. Right now, let's get a key race alert. More results coming in from Kentucky right now. Uh, you see Donald Trump has a significant lead very early, very early, but he has a significant lead of more than 5,000 votes, 73.9% for Trump, 23.5% for Hillary Clinton, once again, early in Kentucky. Let's go over to Jake. Uh, Jake, we're watching 
all these early states uh, come in. We're getting a lot of key race alerts. More numbers are going to be coming in very quickly. But we're waiting for some key results in battlegrounds. That's right. 40 out of 50 states have voted the same exact way in the last four presidential elections. It's those other 10 states that are constantly shifting back and forth that will determine this election, and those are the ones that we're really going to keep an eye on. Let's go now to David Chalian, our political director, who has some more information from the exit polls. And David, you're looking right now at what people in these preliminary exit polls are saying about how they would feel if Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton became the next president. That's right, Jake. And we're just going to see yet again, I know we've talked about this a couple times now, the challenge here with these unpopular candidates, for either one of them, whoever wins tonight, they're going to have a challenge bringing the country back together, getting a majority of Americans on their side. Take a look here. If Donald Trump wins tonight, no matter who they voted for, take a look at these numbers here. 21% say they'll be concerned. 37% say they'll be scared. Concerned or scared, 58% of the electorate if Donald Trump wins. Hillary Clinton, about the same, not a ton better. 24% concerned, 29% scared if Hillary Clinton wins the presidency tonight, 53%. They are both facing majorities who are more concerned and scared than excited and optimistic, no matter who wins this, this election tonight, Jake. It's kind of bizarre because that would suggest, and I know these are preliminary numbers, but that would suggest that people are voting for Donald Trump, who would be con concerned or scared, and people are voting for Hillary Clinton, who would be concerned or scared. Yet another reflection that many voters are not happy with the choices they have. A lot of people concerned and scared <laughs> right now. Uh, we have a key race alert right now. All right, take a look. More numbers coming in from Indiana. First numbers coming in, in fact, from the state of Indiana. 11 electoral votes. Uh, Donald Trump has a significant lead. 1% of the vote is in. Once again, caution everybody very, very early in Indiana. He's got a lead of 1,688 votes over Hillary Clinton. You can see 69.3% for Donald Trump, 27.5% very early in Indiana. But Trump has a lead. Also a lead in uh, Kentucky. Once again, very early, but he's got a 5,500 vote lead over Hillary Clinton in Kentucky right now. Eight electoral votes at stake in Kentucky. We're about to get a lot more results. Stand by. I want to go over to John King over at the Magic Wall. North Carolina. Let's take a look at North Carolina because a critical closes uh, in, in a, less than an hour, a little bit more than an hour or so from now. But uh, North Carolina, there's already a case, a court case involved. The Democrats are ch are challenging one of the uh, the polling areas. Democrats are trying to keep the polls open for next to 90 minutes here in Durham County. They say there were some machine issues early on, and so they have some lines, and they're trying to keep the polls open in this county. 2.8 percent, so about 3 percent of the state's population. Why is this important? Why are Democrats say keeping it open? Uh, let's go back in history. Here in 2020. 12, Durham County, 76% for the Democrat, President Obama, 23% for Mitt Romney. If you go back to 2008, when President Obama carried the state, pretty much the same, 76%. So you pull out to the map here, that's 2008. Let's come back to 2012. Obviously, this area of the state, the Raleigh-Durham area, is absolutely critical in this competitive battleground state. But Durham in particular, Democrats need those votes. So they're in court right now trying to keep them open. And this is what we're going to watch all night. This, is, this has become... Florida was the closest election in 2012. Demographically, North Carolina is probably the most closely contested battleground state. We expect Florida and North Carolina to be two of our most competitive states tonight. And that area of the state, Wolf, is absolutely critical. You come into Wake County here, next door to the Raleigh-Durham area, President Obama won by 11 points. Hillary Clinton it's needs almost 10 percent of the population yeah, yeah, of the state. Right. right, it's a very big chunk of the state population. And here, this is this is two battlegrounds within the battleground in the sense that you need African American turnout and those college-educated white voters, especially suburban women, will be critical here. But Durham is a much more Democratic base area. This is a swing area. Wake County next door is a swing area. It goes Democrat now. The question is the margins for the Democrat to be competitive statewide. Here, the Democrats. This is a basket of Democratic votes, and if those polls close early. Just do the math. People don't vote. You don't get those numbers. And so that's why you have the court case going on right now, because this is absolutely pivotal to Hillary Clinton and the overall vote count in North Carolina. The polls close in North Carolina, 730 right. p.m. Eastern. Same in Ohio, which is right. so important, especially for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump does not win Ohio, he will not win the presidency. You see here 5147 against this is the Obama Romney race. Uh, this is absolutely critical to Donald Trump. And we lean Ohio in Donald Trump's favor in our electoral map because he has consistently led by a small amount, but a consistent, steady lead in Ohio. So what are we going to look for? Number one, on the Democratic side, can Hillary Clinton pull this state back, if you will, pull it away from Donald Trump? It's all right here. Cuyahoga County, other places as well, but we'll know our first indication is African-American and Democratic-based turnout in Cuyahoga County. Can she do that? 
uh, not just with the percentages, but with the math, the numbers, the turnout numbers. The next question we'll have in Ohio, and this will be the same case in North Carolina, in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, in, in every big swing state, who wins the battle for the suburbs? Close presidential elections increasingly decided in the suburbs. Look how close Lake County, Ohio was back in 2012. President Obama close enough to keep winning the state. So we're going to look here as well in Ohio. And then if you look at the middle of the state, it's going to be a bit of a broken record tonight. But we go through now, we can study this in Kentucky. We're going to get it soon in Virginia. And then we're going to see it in Ohio. How does Donald Trump do in these areas here? Especially here, just over the Pennsylvania border, Youngstown area, that's a Democratic area. What are the margins? What is he getting for those white, blue-collar voters who usually vote Democratic, who might be listening to Donald Trump? Maybe they think he's better able to handle the economy. Maybe they like the trade message. Maybe they like the immigration message. So we're going to look in here. And then in these smaller counties in Ohio and in many of the key battleground states, you're just looking, you know, how does he do compared to Mitt Romney? Is he getting more of these blue-collar white voters? Donald Trump has to run it up in the rural areas and... The big question here will be African-American turnout in Cleveland and in the Columbus area. Let's not forget John Casey. The governor voted this time right. for John McCain, not for the Republican nominee. Uh, we're nearing a pivotal moment in the presidential race. Coming up at the top of the hour, the first results from two of tonight's battlegrounds. We're talking about Georgia and Virginia. We're going to get important clues about how this night may turn out. Stay with us. All right, take a look at this. Uh, what a sight. Uh, this is Manhattan. You see the Empire State Building right there. This is the CNN helicopter that's flying over Manhattan right now. History is being made in New York City uh, for the first time in our history, in U.S. history. Both candidates are on this election night in the same city. In fact, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are only about a mile and a half, their campaign headquarters, uh, they're only about a mile and a half apart in Manhattan right now. You see our CNN helicopter flying over. You see the Empire State Building, red, white, and blue right there. Uh, we have a lot more shots of that, but right now let's get a key race alert. All right, in Indiana right now, more votes are coming in. Donald Trump maintains a significant lead. Uh, he's got a lead of uh, almost 13,000 over Hillary Clinton, 70% to 26%. Uh, once again, though, only 1% of the vote is in. 11 electoral votes in Indiana. His vice presidential running mate is the governor there. Kentucky, Donald Trump maintains a significant lead there as well. 8,500 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, still early. 1% of the vote is in, 68% to 28%. Eight electoral, eight electoral votes uh, eight electoral votes uh, at stake in Kentucky. Let's go back to Jake and Dana. What are you looking for? Because polls are about to close in several major, in 30 minutes in some important states. What an exciting night. Uh, I guess there are a few things. Obviously, first, the 10 states, the battleground states that we're all looking at. I could go through them right now, but we'll spend the night doing that. But <laughs> especially uh, North Carolina, Florida, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, et cetera. But in addition, I'm really interested in, first of all, there's been a lot of anecdotal reporting uh, about uh, early vote and Latino votes surging in places like Nevada, in places like Florida and Virginia, states that really really are, are crucial for either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Is that real? Are those Latino votes surging? And also, are African-American votes going down, uh, as a lot of Democrats feared, uh, after 2012 and 2008 with the first African-American president? Second of all, the gender gap. Is there going to be a gender gap? We've seen it in the polls. Women voters, uh, even white college-educated women voters who, who normally break Republican, uh, going for Hillary Clinton in the polls, are they going to turn out? Is there going to be a sizable gender gap with men favoring Donald Trump, women favoring Hillary Clinton? At the top of the hour, Dana, Georgia and Virginia. Two, who would have thought Georgia all of a sudden is a, is a battleground state? But apparently the polls show it's pretty close. Right. Republicans have been saying privately that they thought that that was going to be a tight one for some time. The Clinton campaign didn't go in and take take advantage of it. So uh, it didn't really become that much of a race. But I just want to uh, talk about one thing that you touched on, which is the Latino vote. My question is looking ahead to the end of the night, whether or not this will be kind of a bookend uh, with regard to Latinos in that Ever since Donald Trump came down that escalator and made the remarks that he did about Latinos, uh, that has been an issue for that demographic. And now, the, like you said, the question is whether or not they, there is a Latino surge. And if that happens, if it turns out that perhaps Donald Trump sort of awoke a sleeping giant, that would be uh, come, come full circle tonight, the end of the night, the end of the campaign. 
versus the beginning. Democrats have been trying for years to get Latinos to vote exactly. in, in the higher, as high numbers as, as they can get, and it hasn't worked. One of the reasons why Arizona has been a, a, content, a contentious state uh, is because, in the words of, of Democrats in Arizona, Donald Trump has been a one-man get-out-the-vote mm -hmm. operation to rally Latinos to the polls. I don't know that Arizona, at the end of the day, is going to end up being that competitive, but the, the Latino vote, as you say, awaking is, awaking a sleeping giant, if they turn out in numbers in Florida, in Virginia, in Colorado, and Nevada, boy, that could really... And that, even North Carolina. And North Carolina. That, that, that could really uh, be something. We remember, and the, and the panel's been discussing this, in 2012, after Mitt Romney lost, the Republican National Committee doing this uh, autopsy, looking at the fact that they need to win over Latino voters. Um, they didn't take the lesson, and, and we'll see what happens tonight. Let's get to the panel and Anderson right now. Yeah, Wolf, thanks very much. Bakari, you've been watching North Carolina very closely tonight. Well, I think North Carolina is probably going to be one of the closer races we have. And I'm very interested in this court case. I think you have two dynamics. You have a re relatively uh, uh, frivolous lawsuit that was filed in, in Nevada uh, by, the, by, the, by the Trump campaign because individuals were staying in line uh, and voting as they should be allowed to in Clark County. But here you have a, a, a GOP party in North Carolina. You have a governor in Pat McCrory who the court said they, they discriminated with such precision in the way that they cut back on the number of early voting locations, especially here in Durham. And, and what happened today, you have, you have two Republicans and one Democrat on the Durham County Board of Elections who agree that these polls should be open a little bit longer. It, it's an historically black college and uh, a university there in North Carolina Central where the lines are apparently just out of the roof. And so you see these things happening in pockets, but North Carolina has become synonymous with voter suppression. There's a court hearing taking place right now it's as we speak. It's going on right now, and, I, and it's very oh, to, to allow some of the polls to it's remain the, well, open. Well, to allow this county to stay open for another hour and a half, which is, which is important, because I, I, Corey and I, we, we sit on this panel and we talk a lot, and we don't agree on everything politically, but we do agree on the fact that everybody should come out and vote and everybody should have an opportunity to play in the process. And so if you're in line, stay in line. But what the North Carolina Republican Party did under the cowardice leadership of Pat McCrory is a disgrace. Well, and it's a big, uh, that's the home county to Deborah Ross, who's running for U.S. Senate. That's a, a, a very big uh, Democrat stronghold. So if I were them, I'd be fighting for it, too. I, I want to see the Republicans do well. Right, we'll find out the results of the one, hearing, yeah. whether or not they're yeah. going to uh, be able to keep that, uh, that uh, open. Yeah, it's David. my home state. I, I grew up there, and I can just tell you it's been an agony uh, seeing what's been happening in our politics over the last few years. It's gotten very rough, very nasty. And this is a big showdown night in North Carolina because the force of McCrory's up in a very tight election for governor, being right. reelected to governor. And there's also a Senate race that could actually change the, 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 the leadership of the Senate to, uh, to Democratic if Burr loses a Republican governor. So there is a Republican senator. So this is a, what, what you're talking about is really pretty central. Uh, to, to uh, the way this whole election, the sense of democracy worked. We also well. saw President Obama making yeah. numerous trips to North Carolina to try to, uh, to, yeah. to raise as, as did Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Well, he was trying. He's trying to get out the African American vote because there was a sense that it wasn't turning out, as Bakari knows, in the numbers that they needed it uh, to turn out. And I think you know what we're going to be watching tonight is whether there is a real demographic shift in this country. The last election, 72 percent of the people who voted across the country were white. We're going to have to see if that number decreases uh, this time. And so, you're, you know, demographics is destiny, as we always say. So the question is, in North Carolina and in other places, will minority vote? make a difference for the Democrats. We're also going to be looking at uh, the shifting in the country versus in college versus non-college educated voters. I mean, this is something that really interests me because for the last 60 years, uh, Republicans have won the college educated vote in this country. Is that going to change the white college education? And we've seen Is some. Is that going to change? We've seen some of the demographic. The party of working. We've seen right. some of the demographic information, the racial information, mm -hmm. in some of the er the early uh, exit yep. polls. But those are very early, so we're going to be getting more yep. of those yep. throughout the night. We're just minutes away from getting the first results from two major battlegrounds. Polls are about to close in Georgia and Virginia. This election night just getting started. We'll be back after a quick break. Welcome back. Uh, right now, uh, we have another key race alert. In Indiana right now, 2% of the vote is in. You see Donald Trump still maintains his significant lead, 22,500 plus over Hillary Clinton. 11 electoral votes at stake in Indiana early, but Trump 
uh, has a significant lead in Indiana. Similarly, in Kentucky, 2% of the vote is in. He's at 68%. She's only at 28%. More than 16, 16,000 vote lead for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. We're watching the presidential race very, very closely. We're also watching the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Dana is taking a closer look at that. That's right. Well, let's take a look at the battle for control of the Senate. First, Democrats have 46 seats. Republicans have 54. That's the old balance of power. Tonight, 34 seats are at stake, and we're watching nine key races. Republicans are defending eight of those races. Democrats are defending one. Now, if Democrats can pick up five Republican seats and hold the rest, they will have a 51-seat majority. Republicans, they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars, dispatched marquee players to all over these, uh, these races to deprive Democrats of five pickups and that 51-seat majority. Well, here's another scenario a 50-50 Senate. If Hillary Clinton is elected, Democrats would have the majority because Vice President Tim Kaine would cast the tie-breaking vote. If Donald Trump is elected, Republicans would have the majority because Vice President Mike Pence would cast the tie-breaking vote. Now let's get to the first votes coming up with this key race alert. The first votes are coming in from one of the state's Senate races that could determine who gets the balance of power, and that is Indiana. Look at that. Todd Young, the Republican who's hoping to keep this seat in Republican hands, is up with a significant uh, margin there, up a little bit more than 13,000 votes, but only 2% of the vote is in. So we're going to keep watching that very, very closely because it's such a big one. Let's look at some votes coming in from Kentucky. Rand Paul, who started out this campaign running for president, dropped out. Now he's trying to keep his Senate seat. He's uh, in his race for re-election. He's a little more than 10,000 votes ahead of his Democratic challenger, Jim Gray. Uh, we're going to keep watching that as well, because again, that's only 2%. Now let's look, Jake, at the current balance of power, where we start this evening. If you see up on the big board, Democrats right now have 36, mm -hmm. Republicans have 30, and we are looking at 34 seats that we're going to be monitoring and projecting as we get the results in throughout the night. But really, it's, it's, it's nine seats it's that we're nine. really focusing on because the others are, don't really have competitive races. Exactly. One of the things that's so interesting is about three or four weeks ago, Democrats wished the election had taken place <laughs> yes, they in did. early October uh, when Hillary Clinton was really surging fo following the release of that Access Hollywood uh, tape. And, and Democrats were talking about recapturing the Senate by big numbers. Uh, then, of course, FBI Director Comey released that letter and the race started tightening. And uh, now they're hoping for some pickups, but we'll see how many they get. Yeah, we'll see. Indeed, the Democrats had an advantage. More Republican seats were up for grabs. We'll see what happens very soon. All right, Anderson, back to you. Well, thanks very much. You know, Anna Navarro, Wolf earlier was talking about the historic nature of this race. And it's very easy, I think, in the all the vitriol that's been expressed uh, in certainly the waning days of this campaign, all the divisions to lose sight of just how historic this is. I mean, no matter who wins for, for, for different reasons. You know, I, I saw something today which frankly just touched me. And I've said before, I never thought that the female factor was going to be something that was so significant to me. And it's definitely not the reason why I voted. But I saw today the line of people lining up in the cemetery where Susan B. Anthony's tombstone is and the women putting the I voted sticker on her tombstone. Whether you are Republican or Democrat, if you believe in a woman's right to vote, if you believe that we are all equal in this country, that should be something that touches us all, that makes a significant statement for us all. And, and obviously, Gloria, I mean, if Donald Trump wins, it is a historic night in, in a whole other way. It, it, it's an historic night because you would have an outsider new to politics, a celebrity. Someone who well hasn't been known. involved even in government or Not the military. Not even in government. I mean, Ike I, Eisenhower was the last one, but he was a general. <laughs> so uh, you'd have somebody who created a movement out of, out of nothing, who was not aligned with any ideological wing of his particular party, who spoke to voters uh, about their concerns of being disenfranchised from their own party as well as from the opposition party, who felt removed from Washington and said, you know, I've had enough and I don't want to take it anymore and I am looking for something different, somebody to shake up the establishment and the status quo. So either of these results uh, would, are, would be historic for this country. I mean, I want to add to what, to what Anna was saying, you know, it's the persistence of these women 96 years ago who got the right to vote for women in this country uh, that those women were, were thanking uh, today because 
when you think it hasn't, you know, 96 years. You know, in, you know, in our, our generations, we, we, we sometimes take it for granted. Of course right? we do. We course take course for we granted do. that less than 100 years ago, women could not vote. Mm -hmm. Women were not equals and, in this country in that aspect. And so, look, whether she wins or not tonight, the fact that Hillary Clinton is out there competing for the big title is, I think, very significant to a lot of people in America. Kirsten. Well, yeah, it's also significant that we, we talk a lot about the Latino vote, but also that the women's vote may be very historic in a mm -hmm. lot of different ways. We, we don't have enough numbers right now to know for sure, but that she may be winning white college-educated women, that she may even possibly win married women, which would be the first Democrat since her husband barely won them 20 years ago. So the fact that um, she could be you know, moving these women, now we don't know if this is a realignment, if these are women that are moving away from the Republican Party, or if this is an anti-Trump. But also just the changing demographics of the United States. I mean, not only how we're seeing it reflected this time around compared to even four years ago to eight years ago, uh, but what it pretends for the future as well. Well, and we've got two things happening on the on the Latino front. First of all, the number, the percentage of Latinos voting has been ticking up. It's gone from 8% to 10%. It's been ticking up. But also, the percentage of Latinos voting for the Republican Party has been ticking down. Mm -hmm. We went from 44% with George uh, W. Bush to 31% with John McCain, which we thought was tragic, and we had to address, and we had to fix, and we had to deal with immigration. And then we went to 27% with Mitt Romney. At that point, our you know hair was set on fire on the Republican side. We needed to address this. We had a postmortem. Well, now we're worse than postmortem. We're dead even before the beginning. I, I can assure you that Do uh, Donald Trump is going to get historic low numbers amongst Latinos. He's going to be probably in the teens. Mm -hmm. If he breaks 20, it's a good night for him with Latinos. And it would be sweet, sweet justice <laughs> if after everything he has said, after, after every attack he has made against Latinos, after he has thrown out Latino anchors from press events, after he hasn't done any outreach, after he has questioned a judge's citizenship, after he has called Mexicans rapists, it would be sweet, sweet justice if tonight it was the Latino vote that defeated Donald Trump. Así que, mi gente, levántense y voten. <laughs> Um, Anna Navarro, you are not a Trump supporter. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know what I am? Tell you what I am. I am a college-educated Latina, and sure as hell not a Trump supporter. Uh, David Gergen, um, I'm not sure I can follow that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we should go to break. What language? Well, what we language don't do you speak? College-educated Latina. <laughs> college-educated. <laughs> but you're a Trump supporter. But it is. But it is. I mean, but it, we're we're already seeing this obviously in the early voting in in Florida, which is the the percentage of, of Latino voters. Um, and the Latino voters who are embracing the Democratic Party, which in Florida has not been the history in, in you, you know, uh, decades uh, back. Absolutely. And, and look, I, I think that Donald Trump can still win this tonight, and he will change our history, too. I mean, in the court, it's going to make a huge difference right. to have Donald Trump in there, uh, and we're going to go different directions. But what, if Hillary wins tonight, what you're going to see is the makings of a coalition, a national coalition that's going to dominate our politics for the foreseeable future. It is as strong a coalition as what Franklin Roosevelt put together back in the 1930s. When you're talking about a coalition, what do you mean? I'm talking about a coalition of, a party coalition of people, you know, the forces within. If you can get the Latino vote and your Latino vote on your side, if you can get the, the, the black vote on your side, if you get the minorities, if you get women, if you get the young, that puts together a coalition of people that you will, will, has won a majority now. If, it, if they win tonight, they will have won a majority of the vote in six out of seven presidential yeah. elections. We haven't seen that in our history very often. We saw it in the 30s. We saw it once in the 1990s. We're, we're standing by for the first big wave of results in the presidential race. Let's go back to Wolf. Thanks, Anderson. Now, more early votes already are coming in. We have a key race alert. Here are the latest results coming in from Indiana. 3% of the vote is now in. Donald Trump has a nearly 40% lead over Hillary Clinton, almost 70% to 26%. Uh, Donald Trump has a significant early lead in Indiana, where there are 11 electoral votes at stake in Kentucky right now. Trump also has a significant lead, just went up a little bit, 23,100 plus over Hillary Clinton. Once again, only 3% of the vote is in. He's got 66%. She has 29%. Eight electoral votes in Kentucky. 
Kentucky, early voting in both of those states. We're about to get our first chance to make projections in this historic presidential race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. We're counting down to the top of the hour, 7 p.m. here on the East Coast. That's when polls close in the battleground states of Georgia and Virginia, two of the key races we're watching. The last polls are also closing in Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Vermont. A total of 60 electoral votes are up for grabs in those states. And remember, it takes 270 electoral votes to win this presidential election. Uh, Jake, Georgia and Virginia, they will be the first tests, the big tests of the night. That's right, Wolf, and we'll see uh, whether uh, Donald Trump can hold on to the traditionally Republican red state of Georgia and if Hillary Clinton can keep her Virginia firewall intact. We're keeping tabs on voting all across the country in these key battleground states. We'll be following throughout the night right now. Let's check in with our correspondents who are at the presidential candidate's headquarters in New York City. Jeff Zeleny covering Hillary Clinton, Sarah Murray covering Donald Trump. First to you, Jeff, what are you hearing from the Clinton campaign? Well, Jake, in the Clinton war room right now, they're keeping an eye on Virginia. They believe those 13 electoral votes could be the first battleground state they win in terms of the times of polls closing. They're looking to the suburbs right outside Washington, D.C. They believe that the turnout there was strong throughout the day, particularly in Fairfax County, in Arlington County, a county where President Obama won by some 20 points um, in 2012. They believe that uh, a turnout was exceedingly good. Now, of course, Virginia, home to Tim Kaine, the Democratic vice presidential candidate here. Jake, he's been on the uh, ballot for a couple decades, has never lost a race he's been on. He was back in Virginia yesterday to campaign across the state in northern Virginia and Richmond. So the Clinton campaign, confident of that. They are less confident, of course, of Georgia. It is one of those states that if she had been expanding the map at the end of this campaign, instead of explaining her FBI um, uh, controversy and development, something they were thinking about going into. They believe those 16 electoral votes are out of reach. They barely advertised there. They did not travel there at all. One senior Democratic advisor said maybe next time Georgia will come into play, but not this time. Georgia, a state that I, th I believe uh, Barack Obama lost by only five points. It's been a state that Republicans have thought to be trending Democratic. We're keeping an eye on it. Sarah Murray is with Trump campaign headquarters just a few blocks away from Jeff. And Sarah, what are, what are the Trump campaign officials telling you? Well, Jake, the Trump campaign knows that Northern Virginia, the D.C. suburbs, are not turning out today to make America great again. Look, Virginia is not a central part of their electoral college strategy. They've been encouraged to see a tightening in the polls there. And they know that really their only hope is going to be to try to run up the score in areas outside of those D.C. suburbs if they want to have a shot at uh, flipping Virginia to Donald Trump's column. Now, one Trump aide tells me, look, this could turn out to be a Cinderella story for us tonight. But others who are close to the campaign are not so optimistic about a win in Virginia this evening, Jake. All right, Sarah Murray, thanks so much. Let's go now to our political director, David Chalian, who has the latest from the exit polls. And David, with uh, the polls in Georgia and Virginia about to close, uh, you're taking a look in the exit polls as to who exactly showed up to vote in those key states. That's right, Jake. And we're going to be talking about these two demographics all night long, the racial makeup of the electorate, as well as how the electorate is made up in terms of education level. So first to Virginia, looking at race, 68% white. That's a touchdown, a little less white, a little more Latino from four years ago. It was a 5% four years ago, ticked up a point here. This is becoming a slightly more diverse state. Look at education level too. We see a slight tick up there. 57% of voters in Virginia today are college graduates. Four years ago, that was 54%. That's an increase by three points there. That is a significant development. Take a look at Georgia. We see something similar here. 61% of the electorate in Georgia is white. Eight years ago, our last time we had exit polls in Georgia, that was 65%. Again, Georgia becoming a little less white, a little more diverse, an uptick in the Latino vote again. Again, from eight years ago, that was about 4%. It's now 5%. The African-American vote holding the same there. College education in Georgia. This is the big number that we're seeing in Georgia tonight, Jake. Eight years ago, uh, it was only about 43% college graduate. Here, it's 50%. 
That is an uptick of 7%. That's a huge increase of college graduates in Georgia. These electorates are, are, are changing, and as they do so, this is probably uh, welcome news to Democrats looking to the future. Jake? All right, David, thank you so much. Voters in Georgia and Virginia a little less white as they went to the polls, at least according to these exit polls, uh, and a little bit more educated. Democrats would be thrilled, Dana, if uh, they, they won Georgia, although they're not necessarily expecting that. They are expecting Virginia. They are expecting Virginia. They uh, say that they were heading that way even before Hillary Clinton put the sitting senator, former governor, Tim Kaine uh, of Virginia, on the ticket. Uh, but Georgia is really fascinating because, uh, you know, sort of looking ahead, the question is, given the changing demographics there, whether or not maybe it was a little bit out of reach for Democrats this time around. But if it continues to trend that way demographically, more educated, perhaps even more diverse, it might be in, within the Democrats' reach the next time around. And, and, and there, well, I was just going to say, and there might be states that are actually trending in the other direction. Uh, the states that uh, Hillary Clinton has been struggling with, uh, Barack Obama won mm -hmm. twice before. Iowa and Ohio will be taking a look at them. Mm -hmm. If there is a realignment uh, this evening, we'll see if it's a, a long-lasting. That's one. why it's such a fascinating night. Let's go over to John King at the Magic Wall. Uh, so Georgia, taking a very, very close look at Georgia right now and Virginia. Georgia and Virginia. Wolf, I want to show you something. You see the darker counties I have filled in here? It's a new trick we're trying tonight in the wall. And it says we're all election long we've been talking about Will Hillary Clinton win a traditional Republican constituency? White, college-educated voters. These highlighted counties... These are counties that in 2012, the highest percentage demographic group to vote in these counties were college educated. So this is one of the things we're going to watch when the results come in. Let's go back in time and just look at them. You see then President Obama won them up here in the D.C. suburbs area. Mitt Romney won them when you got more out into the rural areas. So we're going to look at these counties tonight. This was a key constituency nationally. Mitt Romney won this constituency by about six points. We know it's going to be a key battleground within the battleground, absolutely critical to Hillary Clinton's chances in places like Virginia, North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania, out in the Philadelphia suburbs. So it's one of the things we're going to watch. Let's turn this off now and come back and just look at the map as we go. 2016, we'll come up here, turn the key off. Now we're going to wait. In Virginia, what's go what are we going to look for? Let me turn this. It doesn't want to go off. Well, let's go back and look at, whoops, 2012 and come back in here and bring it in. These, again, this is the county we look at here. I want to turn this key off. There we go. So what are we going to look for here? Number one, the key for Donald Trump tonight, and this will be a good clue. We expect, if you believe the late polls, the Democrats are favored in Virginia. If it's a very close race, that tells us a lot. Number one, is Trump actually in play to win Virginia? That would be a big deal. Number two, even if he's not, how competitive is it? What we learn from Virginia in the 7 o'clock hour is going to help us really understand the night ahead, especially when it comes to North Carolina and we move down. And again, talked about this a little bit earlier. Out here, Donald Trump needs to run it up. Smaller rural communities, not a lot of population, but he needs to run up the vote count out here in places like this, even if he loses Virginia, to offset close, what in, about suburbs, Georgia? close in suburbs like this. Georgia is one of those states, you know, each party has its state. For Republicans, it's been Pennsylvania. Every cycle they say, we're going to finally get Pennsylvania, and they come up short. Georgia is one the Democrats think we're going to get it because their strength has been in the Sun Belt states. We're waiting for this to fill in next hour. Increasingly, in diverse states in the Sun Belt, Democrats are doing better. They keep maybe Arizona. They're going to make a run this time. Most Democrats think they'll come up short. So what are you going to look for in Georgia? Number one, you're going to look here. African-American turnout in the Atlanta area, some other areas. Let's go back in history and look at it. You see, you have the blue areas here. To have any chance, it has to be off-the-charts turnout in the Atlanta metropolitan area, African-Americans, and then in the close-in suburbs. Again, uh, close presidential elections and close swing states are generally won in the suburbs. That is where Secretary Clinton has had an advantage because of suburban women, college-educated women. We'll watch as this one plays out. Again, I think Georgia is something that Democrats, they've seen some polls showing them very close, so they've engaged the operation down there. But it's very hard for them to win that state. Well, watch it. Again, sometimes Virginia and Georgia in the 7 o'clock hour, it's not even so much who's winning. If Georgia's very competitive, Wolf, it tells us something about Secretary Clinton's in play. We're about to get some of our first big clues. We're about to get our first big clues indeed. Uh, Georgia and Virginia, Georgia State, as we've been pointing out, the Democrats have sought for a long time. They think they have a shot. Not all that optimistic. Virginia, they really, really need Virginia right now. The Democratic vice presidential uh, candidate, he is from Virginia. They think they have a very good shot. Let's get ready. And we have our first projections of the night. Take a look at this. Donald Trump, uh, we project, will win in Kentucky with its eight electoral votes. Uh, Donald Trump wins in Kentucky. Donald Trump also wins in Indiana with its 11 electoral votes. His running mate's home state. Uh, both wins. Both wins. Uh, Kentucky and Indiana for Donald Trump. Uh, we have more projections right now. 
We project that Hillary Clinton is the winner in Vermont. Three electoral votes, Vermont. Hillary Clinton is the winner in Vermont, Bernie Sanders, home state. We have a key race alert right now. Too early to call. Too early to call in Georgia with its 16 electoral votes. We cannot make a projection yet. Too early to call in Virginia with its 13 electoral votes. We cannot make a projection yet. And too early to call in South Carolina right now. Nine electoral votes at stake. Too early to call in that state as well. Uh, let's take a look at the electoral college count right now. The vote where it stands right now. You see Donald Trump takes a very early lead with 19 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has three. You need 270. You need 270 to win the presidency. You see the colors there on the map. Uh, the red states, those are states that go to Donald Trump. That blue state, Vermont, up in the northeast, that goes to Hillary Clinton. The yellow states, those are states we cannot yet make a projection. Too early to call right there. Let's go over to Jake. Uh, Jake, the action in Virginia and Georgia is going to be intense. Although I have to say, Virginia, really, of all the states on the map, Virginia is really the one that we're all keeping an eye on because uh, Hillary Clinton and her team uh, have not really factored Georgia in, and nor they have they really gone in and made a play for it. Virginia, if they don't win Virginia, that's going to be a real problem for them. That is one of the states they are absolutely relying upon. So we're going to be watching the, the results out of Virginia all night very closely. I totally agree. And just to add to that, on the flip side, Republicans have privately thought that Virginia had been gone for some time. They're expecting to lose Virginia going into this. But they also say that in the past couple of election cycles, it has broken late. There's been a late surge for Republicans. Not enough, though. All right. Let's go to uh, David Chalian right now, who is our political editor. He's looking at exit polls. And, and uh, what, David, what are you seeing uh, out of Virginia and Georgia? We're taking a look uh, first in Virginia at the quality in the candidates that voters were looking for. Now that polls have closed, we can look at how they're splitting, Jake. Take a look here. By far and away, the top quality people were looking for were change. The candidate that can bring about change. 40% of Virginia voters wanted a change candidate. And look how they split here. Big Trump category. Trump gets 79% of those voters. Hillary Clinton gets 15% of those Virginia voters. We also looked at right experience. Now, fewer voters in Virginia were looking for the candidate for right experience, but obviously it is an overwhelming Clinton category. 89% to Trump's 8%. Only about 24% of the electorate, though, was looking for a candidate with right experience. In Georgia, we were looking about that anger at the federal government or satisfaction with the federal government. Take a look here. About a quarter of the electorate in Georgia was angry at the federal government, 27%. Obviously, a strong Trump category. He wins the angry vote 77% to Clinton's 17% in Georgia. And about a quarter of the electorate is actually satisfied with the federal government. How did the satisfied voters in Georgia vote? Overwhelmingly for Hillary Clinton. 81% for Clinton, 14% for Trump among the quarter of the electorate that is satisfied in Georgia tonight, Jake. All right, David, thanks so much. And, and Wolf, obviously, if a, if a large enough percentage of voters in any state or commonwealth goes to the polls uh, wanting change and thinking Donald Trump is the instrument of that change, uh, that, that does not bode well for Hillary Clinton. Even, Dana, if the Democrats don't win Georgia this time, four years from now, eight years from now, given the demographic trends, they think they have a shot. It's certainly possible, especially given the numbers that David Chalian was showing us tonight about how it looks a little bit like, as we were talking about before, Virginia looked one, two, three cycles ago. This is a moment, though, that uh, once we start getting these first projections, uh, Jake, that uh, everybody is going to be watching so closely to get trends for these other battleground states. That's right. I mean, and the question is uh, how many Latinos turn out, how many college-educated voters turn out, how big is the gender gap, what, what is the, the results in Virginia might be relevant to results we see in North Carolina uh, or even in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, uh, your home state, uh, all of a sudden, by all accounts, it's in play. Generally speaking, Republicans always seem to hear the siren song of, of, uh, of Pennsylvania and they go there and they try to compete and ultimately uh, they're not able to. But it does seem as though Donald Trump has been able to really make it competitive mm -hmm. outside Philadelphia with the white working class voters uh, that make up so much of his natural base. He has really made that state or Commonwealth rather a competitive one. It's, it's a moment that we're watching very closely uh, uh, we, I want to just check in right now with a walk over to John King over at the Magic Wall. John, we're taking a very close look. Uh, you've been looking at this one county, uh, Vigo County, uh, in Indiana. Yeah, again, not necessarily instructive, but Vigo County is one of these, it's a quirk county in the sense that they have a great record of picking the winner, voting with the winner. Even when Indiana went red in 2012, if we go back in time, Vigo County 
voted for President Obama just barely, but he won the election. So I'm just looking, I've been waiting for the results to come in. We have about 44% of the vote in, and Donald Trump is ahead by a sizable margin. So if that holds up, either Donald Trump's going to be elected the next president or Vigo County's streak is going to end. We won't know that for hours. So uh, strap in and we'll see. But they've been right in 15 straight uh, presidential elections. They've been wrong only twice in the last 100 years in terms of picking the winner at 44%. That tells you something. And that's just one of the streaks we're looking at. And this is a very unorthodox election, so I expect a lot of streaks uh, might be broken tonight, uh, no matter who wins. But one of the other things you do is you're, I'm trying to look in these early states for clues as to performance. Is Donald Trump overperforming Mitt Romney in rural areas where you have white working class voters? So it's one of the things you look at. And so you just look at a county and you look and Donald Trump's getting 67 percent. Again, it's only 5 percent of the vote in, so it might not necessarily hold up. But then you go back and look. Mitt Romney got 60 percent in this county. So there's a county where Donald Trump is running a little stronger. Doesn't necessarily matter in Indiana, but if you're running stronger with those types of voters, uh, what do you learn in other places? That's why, again, we're looking at Kentucky a lot. Let's come back to 2016. Let's take a look at result, Florida because Florida is getting tonight. They're going to be closing uh, at uh, the top of the hour. Florida, look at that. We have some votes in Florida. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see where those are coming from. One, it's always fun when you see the first votes come into the wall and you try to figure out where they're from. Little Citrus County, it's only less than 1% of the population, but there you go. 0% reporting there. But obviously some votes have come in. Some counties, the early votes, they load them up. They've had a lot of early voting, aggressive early voting in Florida. So what are we going to be looking for overall in Florida? That's the early lead right now. And what are you going to look for? Number one, this is your big Democratic strongholds down here. Hillary Clinton, to win Florida, has to run it up. Let's go back in time and look at this state. This Florida was the closest state in the 2012 race. President Obama eked out a very narrow victory. The early voting there, when they dumped those numbers in, that is critical. You heard the panel talking earlier about Democrats think they amped up the Latino vote to help them there. We'll see. What happens down here? A little battleground within the battleground. How does Donald Trump do in Palm Beach County? That's his second home. He thinks he's going to do very well in Florida. Uh, is Donald Trump going to win Palm Beach County? I bet not. Uh, it is traditionally a big Democratic county, but the margins within these counties matter. In a very close election, if these are friends of Donald Trump and he can make it instead of 60-40, make it a little bit closer, those things matter. That's what we're going to watch as we start to watch the results coming in Florida. The key Democratic strongholds across here. I'll tell you, Wolf, and this is anecdotal. You call people in these states, you email with people on election days. The Democrats were very happy about their early voting. Hillsborough County, where Tampa is, absolutely critical. Pinellas County, you go to the west out here in St. Petersburg, it's a, more of a swing county, critical for the Democrats. The Democrats were thrilled with their early voting there. Talking to a friend who knows the organizers down here today, said the Democrats got some jitters today when they saw the long lines of Trump supporters. Right. So we're going to play this out. Stand by. I want to go to Mark Preston right now. Mark, uh, the post closed in North Carolina at the bottom of the hour, but there are some important developments you're watching. Yeah, Wolf, we actually have breaking news right now out of North Carolina. The North Carolina State Board of Elections has agreed to keep the polls open in eight precincts anywhere from about 20 minutes to 60 minutes. Now, this has to do, Wolf, with the fact that there was computer glitches. Uh, there were computer glitches, Wolf, in uh, some of the precincts earlier today, and those computer glitches uh, caused... Uh, uh, long lines and people were being turned uh, away from the polls. Now, the polls right now are scheduled to close at 7.30, so some of them now will close at 8.30. Some of them will close a little bit sooner than that. The Durham County Board of Election had requested, actually, the polls to be open for 90 minutes, Wolf, but uh, they did not get the 90 minutes they asked. As I said, it was a computer glitch problem. And as we look into this right now, this is former Governor Jim Hunt. Before we had actually heard the ruling from the State Board of Elections, he said that this is not an appropriate way to treat human beings. It is heartbreaking, and it follows a deeply troubling pattern of disenfranchisement in the state of North Carolina. Now, Wolf, I should note, in the state of North Carolina, very important to Hillary Clinton, Durham is 38 percent African-American. Barack Obama won Durham by 76 percent in 2008 and in 2012. Well, interesting stuff. Very interesting indeed. All right, we're going to get back to you, Mark. You know, John Durham, let's talk a little, little bit about Durham. They're going to get a little extra. The post supposed to close there at the bottom of the hour in a few minutes from now, but they're going to stay open maybe as long as another hour. As Mark just explained, not as long as the Democrats had hoped for, had requested, but they do get the polls open longer. And as Mark noted, we're going to wait to watch this fill in, but let's go back for historical perspective. This is an overwhelmingly Democratic county, the African-American vote, uh, other Democratic constituencies, and you see a state like this, again, North Carolina, like Florida, one of the most tightly contested states in the United States. So each party knows where its voters are, especially in the age of big data politics. The Clinton campaign has a list. They know who they need to vote here in Durham County. And the question is, you check them off as they go and you try to turn people out. So they're desperate to keep these polls open because in a state as close as North Carolina, 
Mitt Romney took it back from the Democrats. It's been traditionally Republican there. President Obama won it just barely, 50-50, in 2008. So in a state this closely contested, it's pretty obvious, every vote matters, and so you have these arguments, and it's in a key area of the state. Not just Durham, but the Raleigh-Durham area. You have the African-American base out of Durham. You have the Research Triangle of Raleigh-Durham. This is a key battleground within this battleground state. Absolutely critical to Hillary Clinton to run it up in these areas, and absolutely critical for Donald Trump. His competition amongst, in the suburbs is very important here, too, so we'll be a little later counting those votes, obviously, in a state we expect to take us deep into the night. So they'll stay open uh, for as long as an extra hour. Dana, we're getting our first projections in the balance of, of power in the U.S. Senate. That's right, Wolf, we sure are. And let's start with the state of Vermont. Patrick Leahy, Leahy already one of the longest serving senators in history, CNN can project will go on to win an eighth term, defeating his Republican challenger, Scott Milne. Now let's go to the state of Kentucky. Rand Paul, people remember, he started out this campaign running for president, dropped out, then decided to run for re-election. CNN can project that he has won that seat, defeating his Democratic challenger, Jim Gray. Now let's go to South Carolina. Republican incumbent Tim Scott, CNN can project that he uh, will defeat his Democratic challenger, Thomas Dixon. Tim Scott being uh, the first African-American ever to, re uh, to represent the South. Now let's look at key races where we're watching very, very closely. Indiana, again, this is an open seat, a Republican seat. Todd Young, the Republican uh, at this hour, just about 10 percent of the vote in, is pretty far ahead. Evan Bayh, who is trying to get his old sen Senate seat back, turn that blue. We're going to be watching that very, very closely. And now we have some uh, that where the polls have not yet closed, but we do see some numbers coming in. Marco Rubio, who is running for re-election, uh, is up pretty significantly, but you see only 2% of the vote there. He's up by more than uh, 60,000 votes. We're going to watch that very, very closely. And then another marquee race. This could determine whether or not Republicans keep the Senate. Incumbent Kelly Ayotte is trying to hold on to that, defeat her Democratic challenger, the governor, Maggie Hassan. Only 1% in there. This is the one we're going to be watching incredibly closely all night long. So let's look at the balance of power at this hour. Jake, you see there on the big board, 37 right now for Democrats, 32 for Republicans, and 31 uh, of the races that we're watching still not yet called. Uh, so, you know, some of the ones that we just called were not big surprises. No. It's still important for the uh, one Democrat and two Republicans to get in their column. Indiana, to me, is absolutely fascinating uh, because the Democrats thought they could make that competitive by running somebody who whose name is is incredibly popular and well known Evan Bayh in the whole Midwest especially Indiana but it's unclear if he's going to be able to make it in a year where outsiders uh, seem to be popular uh, especially mm -hmm. among Republican voters and in Republican leaning states like Indiana Evan Bayh former governor former senator and then has done has stayed in Washington DC done a lot of lobbying uh, they recruited him to run promising him that he would be able to win We'll see what happens. It looks like it's much tougher than uh, than he banked on. A, a lot tougher, and they thought he could win because his name has been sort of the political gold standard there, but maybe not in 2016. Not just his name, of course, his father, Birch by a popular senator as well. He's very well known in that state. We have a key race alert right now. All right, here are the results coming in from Florida. 2% of the vote is uh, in uh, so far. 58.5% for Donald Trump, 30.2% for Hillary Clinton. Trump has an early lead of some 63,000 votes over Hillary Clinton. Only 2% of the vote is in in Florida. 29 electoral votes are at stake there. And we're getting the first numbers coming in very, very early from the state of Virginia. Uh, Hillary Clinton has a very slight lead. Look at how close it is, 49.5%, 45.5%. Hillary Clinton's lead, only 294 votes. Very, very early in Virginia, early in Florida. Florida. We're watching both of those key states right now. Let's go over to John King. The early votes in Florida. Uh, John, where are they coming in from? Mostly up here in the northern part of the state, a rural part of the state, a Republican part of the state. Remember, let's just, let's just do this so you can get a sense. All of our votes are right up around these lines. We'll go back in time and look. 2012 race, 
It's a largely Republican area. You've got one county there in the middle that's Democratic. So it's a very small percentage of the vote. The major population centers are around here. Uh, this is where the big fight is if it gets close. If it's close in Florida, uh, especially Orange County, a growing Latino population here in the Orlando area. This is a big area. The Democrats, 60-40. Watch. This is a place where Democrats say their early voting uh, was significant among Latinos. But if we come back to look where we are right now, uh, this doesn't tell us much, except these are conservative areas up here. You're up here, so you're looking here to see if Donald Trump can run up the numbers. Now, again, 0%. So these are just the first votes, 692 to 387. It's very early and preliminary. But one of the things you're going to watch in a state like this, again, the closest state in 2012, is how, how does it shape up when you go back and look. And right now, remember Romney at 63 Trump at 62.2. He's running about, again, very early returns where Mitt Romney was. Obviously, he'd like to run a little stronger than that because President Obama just carried the state. But we'll watch that as we go through these small, relatively 0.1% of the population. So you're looking for early clues in rural turnout. That is key to Donald Trump, especially in a state like Florida, this northern part of the state, which is the more southern part of the state, if you will, bordering the southern states. Uh, this is the much more conservative uh, part of the state. Uh, where Trump has campaigned on immigration, on Obamacare, uh, on taxes and spending issues. This is much more important here. So we'll watch it. Early results. This doesn't tell us much, except for these early counties are filling in the way Donald Trump would want them to. Yeah, more Democratic uh, counties uh, down in the southern part of Florida. We're just minutes away from the next round of poll closings, including the battlegrounds of Ohio and North Carolina. North Carolina becoming even more crucial in these the closing days of the presidential race. New results coming up right after a quick break. Election Night in America is brought to you by VoteForEnergy.org, a program of the American Petroleum Institute. Log on to learn more and by Norfolk Southern. One line, infinite possibilities. You're looking at live pictures of the White House, a beautiful night here in the nation's capital. This is what both candidates want. They want to be living there starting January 20th of next year. Uh, we're back here at the CNN Election Center. Once again, we want to welcome our viewers. We're standing by for the next wave of poll closings. Right now, we have a key race alert. Your latest numbers coming in the key battleground state of Florida. More numbers there. Twelve percent of the vote has now been counted. Donald Trump has a lead of 38,726. He's at 50 percent, 50.4 percent to Hillary Clinton, 47.1 percent. This could be at uh, Florida. 29 electoral votes. All of the polls, by the way, in Florida will close at the top of the hour. These are the numbers coming in right now. It's just changed. Trump's lead has uh, gone up to 61,604 over Hillary Clinton in Virginia. Another key battleground state very early only one percent of the vote is in trump has a 3500 vote lead over hillary clinton 13 electoral uh, uh, electoral votes at stake in virginia in georgia also very very early right now only one percent of the vote is in trump's lead 1800 plus over hillary clinton 73 percent to 25 percent uh, th three key battleground states all of america and indeed the world now waiting to learn who will be the next president of the United States. We're counting down to 7.30 p.m. Eastern, just minutes from now. That's when the polls close in the key battleground states of Ohio and North Carolina, two of the key races we're watching tonight. Polls are also closing in West Virginia. Together, those states account for 38 of the 270 electoral votes needed to win the White House. Jake, both campaigns have invested a lot of time and money in Ohio and North Carolina. Indeed, although Ohio and North Carolina are generally considered must-wins for Donald Trump. North Carolina is one of the top races to watch. It could be the decider in this election, and from what we're hearing, it could go down to the wire. We're keeping an eye on all the major battlegrounds this evening, including many key races where voters are still casting ballots. Right now, let's check in with our correspondents who are at the major candidates' headquarters in New York City. Jim Acosta is joining us now. He's covering the Trump campaign. Uh, and Jim, what are you learning? Uh, Jake, a senior advisor from Donald Trump's inner circle is sizing up uh, the GOP candidates uh, to me this way. Uh, his chances this way, quote, it will take a miracle for us to win. That is the quote from a senior advisor inside Donald Trump's uh, inner circle. Uh, this advisor went on to say that Trump was in such a deep hole after the release of that Access Hollywood tape. It was viewed inside the campaign that he was going to lose this race by a wide margin. But the fact that Donald Trump has been able to close that gap in the final weeks of this campaign, that is seen as a major accomplishment inside the campaign, one that might 
actually save the Senate for the Republican Party. Uh, this advisor went on to say, and we did observe this out on the campaign trail, uh, that uh, top advisors were urging to Donald Trump uh, just about every day, every chance that they could get, that he had to, he had to stay disciplined, he had to stay on message, uh, and that is also seen according to this advisor, as a pretty stunning achievement uh, here at the end of this campaign, given uh, this candidate's volatility at times. Jake. All right, Jim Acosta, who is in Manhattan with the Trump campaign. Let's go a few blocks away to Manhattan and the Clinton campaign, where we find uh, Jeff Zeleny. And, and Jeff, Clinton campaign feeling confident, but they are not counting their chickens. They certainly aren't shaking. Inside the Clinton war room right now, this is what they're looking at. Ohio, Franklin County, Ohio, where The Ohio State University is, the city of Columbus is. I am told by advisors on the ground there that uh, they are seeing greater than expected turnout throughout there. And they attribute it to a rally that Secretary Clinton held after that second debate, right before voter registration and early voting started. It was one of the biggest rallies of her campaign. So that's where the organizing comes in. At the same time, they're also concerned about a, a lower than expected turn out in Cleveland, despite all the star power she had from LeBron James to Jay-Z to Beyonce. So they are watching the areas of Cleveland as well. And in North Carolina tonight, Jake, where the polls close at 730, they are looking at these college towns, and university towns as well. If they are to win in North Carolina, it will be because of a spike in turnout there. We saw Michelle Obama with Hillary Clinton on campus there. We saw President Obama going from campus to campus. That's what they are hoping for tonight if they are to pull out a win in North Carolina. Jake. All right, Jeff Zeleny in the Clinton campaign headquarters in Manhattan. Uh, let's go to Wolf Blitzer right now. We have a key race alert right now. All right, take a look. Hillary Clinton now takes the lead in the state of Florida. 30% of the vote is in, and she's got a significant 50,340 lead over Donald Trump. She's at 49.5%. Donald Trump at 47.7%. Remember, Florida, Florida, Florida. 29 electoral votes are at stake. All of a sudden, Hillary Clinton has a lead there. 30% of the vote is now in. Let's go over to John King at the Magic Wall. John, I want to talk about Florida. All of a sudden, a big chunk of votes came in, and she's doing well. And a big chunk of votes from traditionally and very important Democratic areas. Miami-Dade, look at the results so far, 61% to 36%. That's a small basket of votes from Miami-Dade. We're still at 0% right there. So that's the first dump of early votes coming in from Miami-Dade. Just to compare this, this is one of the things we're going to do all night, especially in a state like Florida that was so close right down to the wire four years ago. So 61 to 36. If you look at it there, let's just go back and look. 62 to 38. That's running about the same. Very early votes running about the same. Significantly, Wolf, also, you were here a few minutes ago talking about Florida, and just after you left, uh, Palm Beach County came in. Donald Trump has said he'll do well here, right? This is where Mar-a-Lago is, Donald Trump's second home. Well, at the moment, not so much. Again, we're very early. We have a long way to go in the count in Florida, and so when you see these early results, it's early votes being dumped in for the most part. Let's see where we go through the night, but that is exactly what Hillary Clinton needs to do. 61 to 37, when you look at that, you go back in time, 58 to 41. And so she's right now, in these very very, very, very early results. Uh, Hillary Clinton running up the percentages that she needs in Florida to withstand what will happen up here. When this starts to fill in up across the northern part of the state, it's conservative. Another key area we're going to watch tonight is the Orlando area. This is an area of population growth, especially Latino population growth, 62% or 63% if you round it up to 34% right now. And again, very early. But let's just compare it to go back four years ago at 62 or 63 59, President Obama, so she's overperforming a little bit in the early results. We'll watch it as we get through the night. So if you start to look at a big state like this fill in, one of the things we'll ask, we're at 31 percent. When you get above halfway, then you start worrying about what are we missing? Because are you missing a big basket of either Democratic or Republican votes? What we are missing so far that will be very significant is the whole Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, Tampa, St. Pete. That's very important, and it's a fierce competition. That's a swing area where you have a good fight. So we don't know anything about that yet. Uh, the rest of the map, though, filling in as you would expect it to in terms of these are Democratic strongholds, these are Republican areas, and now we're going to wait for the swing you know, area up here. Uh, we haven't got Broward County yet, right. which is a hugely Democratic right. area. But take a look at Georgia. I want to quickly go to sure. Georgia. Look at the look what's going on in Georgia right now, uh, because it is all of a sudden still very early. Uh, but you can see Donald Trump has a very significant lead uh, in, in Georgia right S now. Significant lead, but 1% of the vote. And again, we're talking about very tiny rural counties. They're important to Donald Trump. Don't get me wrong. Every vote counts. Uh, but we're looking at these very small counties where it's 100% in from this Oglethorpe County, 278 votes to 80 votes. So but don't 
it's, it's not a big population center. You're not getting a ton of votes, but that's very important to Donald Trump to run it up. If, if the Democratic hopes hinge on giant turnout in places like Atlanta, in places like Columbus, the African-American base, other Democrats, we'll see what happens there. You know what? I want to go back to Florida for a moment, uh, John. Florida, you can see the, the uh, uh, Miami-Dade is doing well, obviously, for Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, Palm, Palm Beach, Beach County. Yeah. Broward, uh, what, what happened four years ago in Broward County? No. How well does she have to do there? Well, here you got nothing. We have nothing in so far, so let's go back in time yeah. and look at Broward County, yeah. 67. So she needs to run up. This is These are your big Democratic turnout areas, and it's population centers as well. And again, you know it very well because of family history here. The further south you go, the farther north you get, is the way they say it in Florida. And so you watch this right here, and you come back to 2016. Look at this, 36% yeah. of the vote is 36. now in more than a Third. 30 per 6 percent now counted. You start to look up here again. This is where the growth has been up in the central part of the state. 63 percent right here. Go back in time and look. 62 percent. So she is equal or slightly above President Obama's performance right now when you look through it. And that's the key when you match this back in history. Democrats think and Republicans, too, think turnout is up in Florida. So you're going to watch the key county, see if the percentages match up. I want to look at one other place up here, Tallahassee, Democratic area where the state capital is. 62 or 63 percent if you round it up for Secretary Clinton. 61% for the president four years ago. So as you look at the early results in Florida, Wolf, we're up to almost 40% of the vote. Hillary Clinton at the moment performing in a way consistent with what for President Obama was a very narrow victory, but a lot to fill in. Donald Trump still in the hunt. We're counting down to the bottom of the hour. Two key battleground states, they are getting ready to close. We're talking about North Carolina, a state that Barack Obama lost four years ago, carried eight years ago, and Ohio. Republicans need to win Ohio in order to win the White House. Let's start with the CNN projection. CNN projects Donald Trump is the winner in West Virginia. Donald Trump will carry that state with five electoral votes. Trump gets another state, West Virginia. We have a key race alert right now. Too early to call. Too early to call in North Carolina. As you can see right there, 15 electoral votes at stake, a critically important battleground state, and Ohio. Too early to call in Ohio right now, uh, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. We are not able to make projections. Polls are closed in both of those states, cannot make projections yet. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map count, where it stands right now. You can see Donald Trump has a lead. He has 24 electoral votes right now compared to three, three for Hillary Clinton. You need 270 in order to win the White House. The blue state, that's Vermont. That's the state that Hillary Clinton, we've projected, will carry. The red states, those are states that Donald Trump has carried. Those yellow states, too early to call. No projections in those states, at least not yet. Uh, let's go over to Jake. Uh, Jake, uh, West Virginia, not a surprise, but we're waiting for Ohio and North Carolina. And let's look and take a look at Florida for one second. And the only reason I bring this up is because uh, Alex Conan, who is a, a senior strategist uh, for Marco Rubio, who's running for re-election there, uh, pointed out uh, just a few minutes ago that Marco Rubio was outperforming Donald Trump in uh, absentee ballots in Miami-Dade. The reason I bring it up uh, is because one of the things looking forward for the Republican Party is how do they win Democratic Jake, areas? Take a look at this. 43% of the votes in Florida are now in, and all of a sudden Donald Trump takes the lead. Almost 30,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. He's at 48.9%. Hillary Clinton is at 48.2%. Uh, Donald Trump now takes a slight lead over Hillary Clinton. I suspect this is going to go back and forth, back and forth all night. If uh, Donald Trump wins, if Hillary Clinton wins, it's going to be by a very small margin. That's how it happened in 2012 and 2008. And Dana, remind us why Florida is so important right now. <laughs> Where do we start? First of all, uh, just in the raw numbers, because of the electoral votes, that it's a very, very uh, big prize electorally tonight, uh, but also because of the demographics and because of the fact that it has gone back and forth, less so in the past couple of cycles. It's gone more Democratic, but historically it has gone back and forth between Republican and Democrat. It is a purple state. And it is a place where this year... Both of these campaigns played so, so hard, spent so much money, the most money of any state, uh, for lots of reasons, primarily because uh, it is so big and it is so diverse uh, geographically, and it's expensive when, you, when it comes to media markets. So it is by far the one that we are watching. And even Donald Trump has said very publicly that he doesn't think that there is a path to him, for him to the White House without winning Florida. We've talked about the fact that Donald Trump really needs to run the table when it comes to a whole bunch of these big, important battleground states. Hillary Clinton certainly needs mm -hmm. a, a large chunk of them, but Donald Trump needs to run the table. It's hard to imagine a path to the White House for Donald Trump 
without the state of Florida. It's, uh, let's go over to John King over at the Magic Wall. Take a closer look at Florida right now. Uh, once again, John, 43% of the vote what? is in, and Trump has a slight lead over Hillary Clinton, 49.1%, 48.1%. And since you were here just a few minutes ago, this is what happened. You had some votes fill in here in the north central part of the state here. You also had votes filling in down here, Sarasota County. Donald Trump had a rally here just the other day in Sarasota County. He's winning 50.5% to 47%. But again, first I want to go back and just look at the presidential history. Mitt Romney won this county a little bit bigger. So we'll see. The early, it's only the early results for Donald Trump. But to the point Jake just made, it's a very important debate because win or lose, the Republican Party is going to have a big debate after this election. And so let's look at what Jake was just talking about. Let's pull up Miami-Dade County, right? You see Donald Trump. Remember the 36.5. So round, round Donald Trump up to 37% so far in Miami-Dade. Look at the Marco Rubio performance, 47%. So he's running 10 points ahead of Donald Trump in, in Miami-Dade. Let's come back up here and look at Orange County, where, the Orla where Orlando is. Again, a swing area of the state. This part here is Democratic. You go across the I-4 corridor, it swings back and forth. But there's Rubio just shy of 40%. Let's look at Donald Trump, 34%. So this is the debate that's going to happen within Florida and across the country tonight. People are going to look at how the Senate candidates run, how the governor candidates run, compare Donald Trump to Mitt Romney, compare Donald Trump to Republicans on the ballot, because we'll settle the presidential election tonight, we think, um, but the Republican Party is going to have this debate about who should lead it and what it should be about for a long time to come. Now, as we watch this, we're up to 45%. So pretty quick count so far. But that's mostly the early votes being reported. And so now we're going to wait for today's votes to be counted as well. And we went through this four years ago. We went to Jake's point. We went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And Florida ended up here, 50 to 49, four years ago. And it sure looks like it's on track to be in that same ballpark tonight as we get to 46 percent of the vote so far. Because in the northern part of the, uh, uh, the state, pretty much Republican. Southern part of the state, very often Democratic. Yeah. In the east. The, the west, southwestern part of the state is a Republican area. This eastern part of the state, Broward, Miami-Dade. And Palm Beach County, this is your this is your Democratic stronghold. Every every election, it comes down to do Democrats run up the vote total in these bottom three southeast counties to offset. You're going to see a lot of red on this side of the state and up here across the top of the state. We, we have no no results from Broward County yet. That's where Fort Lauderdale is. Right, nothing yet at all there. And again, if you go back four years ago, this is a very important county for the Democrats, 67 to 32. You want to run it up in these counties in the southeast part of the state. Again, Palm Beach. Broward, Miami-Dade, you want to run it up there to offset some of this as we go forward as you come forward here. You see we're missing these ones here just to offset all this. If you go back in 2012 and look, it's a whole lot of red if you come up this way. The Democrats opt to said mostly here, but also right across in here. And we just, we did get, as we come back, last time you were here, Hillsborough County is Tampa, Pinellas County is St. Pete. This is a swing. This is a swing area where the campaigns have had a fierce fight. This tells you a lot. Yeah. This one county tells you, you know, a lot about how tough you the You know what I want to do, John? Let's take a look at the United States, the national vote, as it's uh, coming in right now. Uh, let's take a look uh, and see where Donald Trump is as opposed to Hillary Clinton. And take a look at this. Among the national vote, these are the votes that have already been counted. Trump is winning nationally, 52.7%, 44% for Hillary Clinton. He has 3,100,000. She has 2,600,000. Uh, take a look at that. Well, we're going to go through this as we count. Look, we're only in this part of the country, and we all have very preliminary results. But one of the conversations tonight, and one of the conversations some political strategists have had, will we have something like 2,000 again, where one candidate wins the popular vote and somebody else wins the electoral vote? If you're looking at the map now, Donald Trump is not winning all these states. He's just leading. In these. We have called some of them. We've called Indiana, I believe, and Kentucky. Uh, but if you're looking at the map early in the night, just because it's shaded doesn't tell you who won. It tells you who's leading. These are live results. And they, as I'm talking, sometimes these results will change as we talk because live results are coming in. Let's look up at this state, another traditional battleground state that has been leaning more and more Democratic. But in Virginia at the moment, Donald Trump is leading, 54% to 41%. Uh, most of the vote is coming in from Republican areas, so we, no surprise there. But here's one of the things we'll look at. We come out here, Fauquier County. This is the exurban area. Now it's a suburb, used to be the exurbs. But outside of D.C., is Donald Trump running well out here? And then the key issue will be when we get in closer. Loudoun County, used to be Republican, has now become a Democratic-leading suburb. 28% of the is, vote is in there. Is 55% about right for Secretary Clinton? 52% for President Obama when he won the state four years ago. One of the things we'll look at as we go through the night. And again, I come back out here. This is one of the counties I always watch. Prince William County, once Republican, now Democratic, uh, in part because of college-educated women and in part because of the growing Latino population. 57% right now. We just got the first votes in Fairfax County. I'll skip over there in a second. 57% there. You go back in time, 57%. So it's running about what it takes for a Democratic victory, even though Donald Trump is ahead at the moment. Fairfax County, 60%. She's running just shy of that at 58 percent of the results coming in so far. I suspect when I pull back out, it's a little bit closer now. But Donald Trump's still leading in part because 
as we expect, in these more rural areas, Republican anyway, uh, Donald Trump is running up pretty healthy margins when you go into these smaller counties in the southwestern part of the state. You see 71, 73. That's where his early lead is coming from. The challenge for Secretary Clinton, offset it up here when the vote comes in, when more of the vote comes in in the D.C. suburbs. Let's take a look at North Carolina right now. They put, the polls closed there just right. a few moments ago. And we have very little so far, just 2 percent. And you're going to see this. It's, some of this is going to sound familiar throughout the night. You're in these rural areas out here. Donald Trump has to run it up so far, 63% to 35%. Remember, the polls are closed except for here in Durham County. Some polling places have been left open for up to an hour, I believe. That was Mark Preston's reporting a bit ago. And this is a critical area for the Democrats. When you look, you pull out, you see where we have the cities marked. One of the clues throughout the night about how close are we getting is where you see these dots, where you see the cities. That's your population centers. Do we have any votes from the population centers? If the answer is no, then... Not that that's insignificant, but it's nothing to place a bet on because we have to wait for more of the votes to come in. Very, very early. Two percent of the vote right. is in. Donald Trump uh, has, what, about a 20,000 vote right. lead, but it's very, very early in North Carolina. Ohio. Let's take a quick look at Ohio right now. Well, it's shaded blue at the moment, and Hillary Clinton would love that. That would be game over for Donald Trump, but that's because this is, this is all we have right here. 2.1 percent out in this part of the state. All right. And, and you know what? I want to take a look at the electoral map right now nationally. Show us what's going on right now. Well, I can show you where we are. This is our map coming into the night, 268 to 204. The question is, can anything change here? Uh, Donald Trump has to change something to win the election. And so you just show those you know, early Ohio results. Well, we lean Ohio Republican. Uh, so that one, you know, we expect we just have very early results there. For Donald Trump, the key challenge here, Hillary Clinton is leading at 268 in our projection. And most Republicans even concede she'll win the state of Nevada out there. So the challenge for Donald Trump, number one, is to run the board among the toss-ups and then to find something up here, Blue Wolf, to turn. That's the big challenge for Donald Trump. Can it be Pennsylvania? Can it be Michigan? Or he's leading early in Virginia. Can he pull off a huge surprise in the state of Virginia? Let's take a look, uh, John. I want to take a look at the Electoral College map right now. The big picture, 270 needed to win. Trump is ahead uh, early, 24. He's got 24 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has three electoral votes, uh, those three in Vermont so far. Mo more polls uh, are about to be closed uh, at the top of the hour. But you can see the red states are the states that Donald Trump, we've projected, has won. Uh, the uh, blue state, that's Hillary Clinton's state. Uh, the yellow states, those are states where the polls have closed but it's too early to call right now. Uh, let's go to Dana Bash. She's got a, a projection in the balance of power in the Senate. That's right, Wolf. You said it's too early to call for the presidential, but in Ohio, CNN can project that Rob Portman, the incumbent Republican, will go on to win another term, serve another term in the U.S. Senate, defeating his Democratic opponent, the former governor, Ted Strickland. This was supposed to be a nail-biter, but Rob Portman uh, locked it up pretty early with the help of tens of millions of dollars from Republicans there. A big win for Rob Portman. Let's look at another state where polls are closed, but it's just too early to call North Carolina. This is another one that we will be watching all night long to see whether or not Democrats can take control of the U.S. Senate. Republican incumbent Richard Burr is fighting to keep his seat. He, at this hour, is just a little more than 42,000 votes ahead of his Democratic challenger, Deborah Ross. But as you see, they're very, very early. Now I want to look back at Florida. Polls are not yet closed, but you see we're getting some, some numbers in. Marco Rubio, the incumbent Republican, is up pretty significantly uh, against his Democratic challenger, Patrick Murphy. Uh, about half the vote in, and he is doing uh, quite well there. Democrats pretty much gave up on that seat once Marco Rubio changed his mind and said he was going to run for re-election. Let's look at what all this means for the balance of power at this hour. Jake, look at the big board. Democrats right now have 37. Republicans have 33. Uh, there are 30 left that we are watching. Big picture, Democrats are trying to take five, to pick up five seats in order to have a clean 51-seat majority, and Republicans are obviously trying very hard to prevent that from happening. Not a strong showing of it, though, I have to say, from, from Democrats as of now. Rob Portman, as you know, was supposed to be a seat, as you, as you just said, mm -hmm. uh, that they were going to be able to pick off. They had the former governor, Ted Strickland, run against. But Democrats weeks ago pulled out mm -hmm. uh, there, Rob Portman winning a handy re-election. Interestingly enough, Rob Portman saying after that Access Hollywood tape came out that he would not uh, support Donald Trump. He was going to write in mm -hmm. Mike Pence. Uh, which really kind of doesn't make much sense. But nonetheless, uh, the voters there rewarded him uh, with another term. And it is uh, one of the themes that we've heard from Mitch McConnell, the now Senate Majority Leader, as he's trying to keep the seats in Republican hands. 
candidates matter. He learned that lesson the hard way when Republicans didn't take control for two cycles where they should have because of Republican candidates who made some pretty big mistakes. Rob Portman has been a very, very good candidate and ran as somebody who understands the state and it served him well. Marco Rubio, also a decent candidate. We'll see what happens with that race. Wolf Blitz. Yeah, a lot of Republicans who don't like Trump, they're writing in all sorts of names are right uh, on, in the course of this day. Let's get a key race alert right now. All right, we got a lot of results coming in right now. Let's update you. First of all, more than half of the vote in Florida is now in 55%. Look at this. Donald Trump has a significant lead of 118,422 votes over Hillary Clinton, 49.7% to 47.4%. Florida, 29 electoral votes uh, at stake. All the polls in Florida will close at the top of the hour. North Carolina, 10% of the vote is now in. Trump has a lead of more than 52,000 votes over Hillary Clinton, 54.5% to 43.3%. 15 electoral uh, votes at stake in North Carolina. Uh, in New Hampshire, New Hampshire, all of a sudden we're getting some votes in very, very early. 1%, uh, only 1% of the vote is in. 337 vote lead for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump in the state of New Hampshire with four electoral votes. We're counting down to another round of poll closings. Just moments from now, the mother of all, Battlegrounds, Florida. That's coming up along with the results from key races in Pennsylvania and New Hampshire. Stay with us. Election Night in America is brought to you by CA Technologies. Go to CNNPolitics.com for more about this momentous election and download the CNN Politics app from the App Store, built with CA Technologies. All right, look at this. We got a, a, a key race alert. Look at Florida right now. 65% of the vote is in. And all of a sudden, Hillary Clinton has taken the lead in the state of Florida. She's got a lead of 76,430 over Donald Trump. She's at 49.2%. Donald Trump is at 47.9%. Uh, you Hillary Clinton is now ahead of Donald Trump in Florida with its 29 electoral votes. Uh, in North Carolina, 13% of the vote is now in. Trump is ahead with 74,969 votes over Hillary Clinton, 15 electoral votes in North Carolina. We're getting 3% of the vote in Ohio right now. Trump has a lead in Ohio, 96,000 plus to Hillary Clinton's 82,000 plus, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. We're getting more results coming in in our key race alert. In Virginia now, 14% of the vote is in and Trump has a 73,000 plus vote lead over Hillary Clinton 54 percent to 41.2 percent 13 electoral votes at stake in Virginia and in Georgia only two percent of the vote is in but Trump has a lead of 31,977 Georgia Trump has the lead with its 16 electoral votes at stake let's go over to John King uh, John Florida has been going back and forth back and forth all of a sudden Hillary Clinton is ahead uh, by what a point and a half or so and we're up to 65 percent of the vote. So two-thirds of the vote in. The big question is how quickly does the rest of it come in? We've spent a lot of long nights in the state of Florida as it gets tight like this and then sometimes the vote count slows down. What are we looking at? Last time we checked, remember you were here, we had nothing from Broward County. Uh, that still says 0%, so it's the early votes dumped in. We'll get more later, but 70% to 28%. Again, you go back in time just to compare it up. Uh, that's at 67% for President Obama, almost 70% for Secretary Clinton, so she's running a little ahead percentage-wise so far in Broward County. If you pull it out, I hate to say it, but this map is filling in a lot like 2012. Look at the map. Let's just show Democratic votes here, Democratic votes in the population centers here, a lot of Republican votes across the top here. That's this year. Let's go back in time. Democratic votes here, Democratic votes across here, mostly Republican up here. It was 50 to 49 four years ago. Uh, get ready. We're at 48.9 to 48.2 as we go through this year. So it's fascinating to watch. And you just start to go through, so, through some of the population centers. Orange County is Orlando, 62% for Secretary Clinton. Then you move out to the west here, the Tampa, the Hillsborough County. This one's a bit closer, 53 to 43. Ten points there. Look at this. Ten, seven points there. So she's running a little bit ahead in Hillsborough County of where President Obama was. But then you move out here to Pinellas County, and you got 49.8% to 46% here as you go out and you look at it here. So it's just remarkably tight as we go through. Both of them over 3 million votes, now up to 71%. So the vote count's coming in very quickly in Florida tonight. Wolf, uh, Hillary Clinton now with a bit of a, that's the biggest lead we've seen in the state so far. But Wolf, I'll put the emphasis on so far. We'll keep counting.
It's a real battle in Florida right now. Uh, we're only moments away from the biggest wave of poll closings in the presidential race. We're counting down to the top of the hour. That would be 8 p.m. Eastern. That's when the last polling places close in the battleground states of Florida, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire. The polls also will be closing in Alabama, Connecticut, Delaware, the District of Columbia, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Missouri, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, and Tennessee together. Those contests have 172 electoral votes. That's a huge chunk of the 270 needed to win, uh, Jake. Another presidential race where all eyes right now are on Florida. It's one of the most critical states uh, in this race. Uh, Donald Trump ha himself has said that he doesn't see a path to the presidency for himself uh, without uh, the state of, of, of Florida. It has 29 electoral votes. We're following the last minute mad dash uh, for all these candidates in the battleground states. We're also getting new information from inside the campaigns. First to Sarah Murray, who is with uh, the Trump campaign. And Sarah, uh, the votes are coming in. It is neck and neck in North Carolina, neck and neck in Florida. What are you hearing from the campaign? Well, Jake, as you know, Florida is, of course, always a source of heartburn. But for the Trump campaign, their particular angst is not knowing how these independent voters are going to are going to shake out tonight. If they're going to lean in favor of Donald Trump, if they're going to lean in favor of Hillary Clinton. Now, I've talked to multiple sources who say they really don't have any information about these independent voters. It's been a struggle to get the kind of resources they need in Florida to get the kind of money that they would need to be able to model this independent electorate. And so even though Donald Trump himself has been personally interested in which way these independent voters are leaning. They're saying they just don't have any way to tell him. They're just waiting to see the results just like we are. So flying a little bit blind tonight on one of their most important states, Jake. Interesting. Let's go now to Jeff Zeleny just a few blocks away at campaign headquarters. And Jeff, uh, the Clinton campaign knows that they need Florida. They have been saying for quite some time that they feel better about Florida than they do about states such as North Carolina, states such as Ohio or in Iowa. Uh, what are you hearing from the Clinton team? Jake, the number is 29. That is one of the favorite numbers, the most important numbers inside that Clinton war room here at the Javits Center. And the Clinton campaign is increasingly confident about Florida, uh, the numbers that are coming in and also what they've been seeing on the ground throughout the day. They point to some specific uh, counties across the state, uh, Orange County, Osceola County, Hillsborough County. They believe that they're outperforming Obama numbers. Of course, he won the state narrowly. Also, Duval County. They say Donald Trump is not uh, doing as well as Mitt Romney. This is the view of the Clinton campaign here. But Jake, the reason that she visited, Hillary Clinton visited Broward County, a key Democratic area, three times in one week, was to drive up that Democratic vote. They believe they've done it. But one senior Clinton advisor I just talked to said the Hispanic numbers are rising through the roof. That's why we'll win Florida. Jake? All right, we'll see what actually happens. Let's go to Wolf Blitzer right now, who has a key race alert. We do have a key race alert. Hillary Clinton has now taken the lead in Florida and North Carolina. Let's take a look at Florida for 72 percent of the vote in. That's a big chunk of the vote. Hillary Clinton is now ahead by an impressive almost 172,000 votes over Donald Trump. 49.9 percent, 47.3 percent, 29 electoral votes. All the votes, all the polling in Florida closes at the top of the hour. But 72 percent is in. She's got 171,000 lead right now over Donald Trump. And look at this. In North Carolina, 28 percent of the vote is in. She is ahead by 21, almost 22,000 votes over Donald Trump right now, 49.7% to 48%. Uh, uh, Don, uh, Donald Trump slightly behind Hillary Clinton in North Carolina. He's also behind in Florida. Let's go over to John King at the Magic Wall. You're looking at North Carolina and Florida right now. I think we're going to spend a lot of time on that tonight. North Carolina, Florida, Florida, North Carolina. Other states matter, too, but especially when you're looking at does Donald Trump have a path, a comeback path to 270 electoral votes? Florida and North Carolina factor huge. It's hard to, it's almost impossible to get in there without Florida. You can have a variation without North Carolina, but it's a little bit pie in the sky. So let's look at Florida. 49.8 uh, to 47.4. Significantly, the vote's coming in pretty quick, 72%. We'll see how quickly it comes in from here. But when you look at this map, Wolf, not to sound like repetitive, but this looks a lot like the 2012 map so far. And Hillary Clinton has to be very happy with the margin she's running up down here in the big Democratic strongholds. Palm Beach County, move down. Broward County, she's at just shy of 70% there. Miami-Dade County, 64% there. She has to be very happy with these. The question is, what are the, you know, as the vote totals come in, uh, do they match up to what she needs to offset 
Donald Trump is doing what the Republican needs to do, especially areas like this. You pull up Collier County. This is where Naples is. He's running at 61 percent. Let's go back in time just for a check. 65 percent, so a little bit under Romney there. With, we still don't have a lot of the votes here, though. We'll keep an eye on these things as we go through. If you come up here, uh, Jeff Zeleny was just talking about the Clinton campaign. These are the swing counties across here that they're looking at. What are, what's their margin in the Tampa area? That's Hillsborough County. You see it 10 points right there. You go back in time. Seven points there. So she's overperforming the president there. This one has been closer. Let's see if it stayed that way. This one has been closer, where you have essentially two points there. When you look at it through maybe three, if you look at it in that one, a little bit. A look little at that. Let's look at North there. Carolina, John, right yep. now. Because all of a sudden in North Carolina, you go to North, she's ahead. Look at this. She's ahead in North Carolina by a little bit more than 100,000 votes with 36% of the vote in. 36% of the vote. But one of the things you have to watch, especially when the lead swing is where did those votes come from, right? So what came in? Mecklenburg County. This is Charlotte. And she's winning huge here. This is why she jumped. When you got a big dump of votes from the Charlotte area, which is a Democratic stronghold, that's why her total jumped. Where you watch where the votes come in. Not saying that's insignificant. This is what she needs to do. So just shy of 67 percent there. Go back in time. The president was at 61 percent here, and he lost. Remember, he, bar he narrowly lost North Carolina four years ago. So if you're the Clinton campaign, you love that number, and you hope that number stays up. This is going to go up. This is a small percentage of the vote still in the one of the largest counties of the state. Now we have our first votes in Wake County. This was empty just a few minutes ago. And again, 25 percent of the vote in. This is of enormous consequence to Secretary Clinton tonight in the sense that if she wins this county by that margin, she will win the state of North Carolina. Uh, now we just, but we're only at 25% of the vote. The reason I say that, if you look at that margin there, 20 plus points, you go back to 2012, the president won it by 11 and he lost the state. You go back to 2008, won it by 15. This is almost 10% of the state population. It's an incredibly important area for the Democrats. As we noted earlier, they left the polls open a little bit longer in Durham County. We still have nothing from Durham County, and this is a big basket of Democrats. You know, let's votes. go to Ohio quickly, John, because what? all of a sudden we're getting some significant numbers coming in <clears throat> from Ohio, and Hillary Clinton is in the lead right now. You see she's got 53% to his 43%. 12% of the vote in Ohio is now in. Only 12%. If this holds up, it's game over. Republicans don't win the White House without winning the state of Ohio. But again, you always ask the question, where did the votes come from? And they're coming. Jeff Selling just mentioned this a moment ago. They're coming from Franklin County, Columbus. This is a Democratic county. That's a big, healthy margin for Secretary Clinton. That's, that's what you want to do here. Let's again go back in time. 61% for the president four years ago when he won Ohio. A lot of the conversation here this year has been even the Clinton campaign conceding in the final weeks that Ohio was one of the toughest for them to hold. They don't count on it in their math. They would love it, but they don't count on it. So now as we're watching what's happening here, one of the things you're going to watch is in the Youngstown area here, this is where Donald Trump has tried to sell hey, the factory's closed. Hey, I'll rip up NAFTA. My trade message. A Youngstown area like this, she's getting at the moment. It's not a big percentage of the vote in yet, but she's getting 59%. Let's go back and check. So she's running a little bit below the president there. So, Wolf, we got a ways to go in Ohio as we watch it fill in. At the moment, the Clinton campaign's happy with what it sees, but we also have nothing yet, absolutely nothing, out of Cleveland. So we'll be counting for a while in Ohio and elsewhere. He certainly will, and we're getting ready for 16 states. 16 states and the District of Columbia. They're going to be closing all polling stations right at the top of the hour, including Florida. All the polling stations of Florida will be closed. That is emerging as a critically important state. Pennsylvania closing right now. And look at all these wins we're projecting for Hillary Clinton right now. She wins her state of Illinois. That's where she was born. Hillary Clinton wins in Illinois with its 20 electoral votes. A, a win for Hillary Clinton in New Jersey. Governor Chris Christie is the governor there, but guess what? Hillary Clinton is the winner in New Jersey with 14 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton wins in New Jersey. In Massachusetts, another 11 electoral votes we project will go to Hillary Clinton in Massachusetts. Another win for Hillary Clinton in Massachusetts. Let's move on to Maryland. 10 electoral votes. We project Hillary Clinton wins in Maryland. She will carry that state. An important win for Hillary Clinton in the state of Maryland. More wins for Hillary Clinton coming in right now in Rhode Island. Rhode Island, four electoral votes. Hillary Clinton carries the state of Rhode Island with its four electoral votes. Delaware, three electoral votes. They will all go to Hillary Clinton. Uh, another win there. And the District of Columbia, which could vote in presidential contest. Three electoral, three electoral votes go to Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump also has some pro projected wins, three specifically. We project he will carry the state of Oklahoma with seven electoral votes. Donald Trump will carry Tennessee with 11 electoral votes. Donald Trump will also carry Mississippi with, uh, with six ele electoral votes. We have a key race alert right now. 
too close to call, too early to call, I should say. In Florida right now, we cannot yet make a projection. 29 electoral votes at stake. Too early to call in Florida. Too early to call in Pennsylvania with 20 electoral votes. Cannot make a projection in Pennsylvania. Also in New Hampshire, no projection there. Too early to call uh, in, uh, in New Hampshire right there. Uh, too early to call uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, we can uh, too early to call in those states. Let's get the complete list of all the states where we are, are, are not yet able to make a projection. Take a look. All these states, too early to call. The 8 p.m. closings in Alabama, Connecticut, Florida, Maine, Missouri, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania. No uh, projections there. Too early to call. Take a look at the electoral map, where it stands right now. Hillary Clinton has taken the lead. She has 68 electoral votes compared to Donald Trump's 48 electoral votes. You see 270 are needed to win the White House. The blue states we projected go to Hillary Hillary Clinton, the red states go to Donald Trump. All those yellow states, too early, too, too early to call. No projection in those states right now. Uh, that, that, that's where it stands, the electoral map right now. But Jake, uh, these uh, states like Florida and North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Ohio, they will decide presumably what's going on. Your take. Well, Pennsylvania, uh, we still haven't heard anything out of Pennsylvania. North Carolina, uh, as, as uh, Democrats were talking about, uh, they, uh, they were telling um, uh, uh, Jeff Zeleny the, the other minute that when it comes to North Carolina, let me circle it here on the board, North Carolina, that they think it's going to go down to the wire uh, and, and uh, that it could be, they might not even have it called. Uh, all night. And then, of course, we're looking at Florida. Uh, and that could be a, a race that's decided by one or two uh, percentage points. And as we've been saying all night, the Trump campaign says, and the Republican National Committee says, there's really no path to the presidency for Donald Trump without the state of Florida. And that's why Clinton and uh, Trump have been spending so many days and so many millions of dollars in that state. One of the things that's most important, and John has been talking about this quite a bit, is not just uh, southern Florida, which tends to be uh, Democratic, especially on the southeast, or northern Florida, the panhandle, which tends to be Republican, but that I-4 quarter in the center of the state, where there are so many college-educated voters, how are they going to vote? Trend, uh, the trend has been for college-educated white women to go and support Hillary Clinton, at least in early polling. Dana, you've spent a lot of time in Florida over these past many months. Yeah, and, and I just want to echo uh, one thing that Jake was, was talking about with regard to how close uh, Florida is always historically and what Republicans think uh, is a path. I was just talking to a Republican source who says that at this point, the way that they're seeing the modeling, it looks like Donald Trump is more likely than not to lose by a couple of points in Florida. That's what they're seeing. They could always be surprised. They don't have all the votes in, but that is the expectation from a Republican source that I'm talking to. And to your point earlier, Marco Rubio, who is running for re-election in Florida, is outperforming Donald Trump big time in key pockets of the state, but particularly in his home area of Miami-Dade. But it's very important what Dana just said. There's modeling. There's polling, right. and then there's the voters. Yeah, uh, exactly. There's all the most important. There's the science, and there is the methodology, and then there's what people actually and, do. So even and though, the do is what's happening as we speak. And even <laughs> though, even though there are Democrats saying we think we're going to win Florida, and Republicans saying we think they might win Florida, at the end of the day, nobody knows what's going to happen exactly. until the voters actually do it. We have an update on the uh, voting, the all important voting in those states right now. All right, let's take a look at Florida first. You see Hillary Clinton. She has an almost 80,000 vote lead over Donald Trump with 77% of the vote in, 29 electoral votes at stake. Still close, 49.1% for Hillary Clinton, 48% for Donald Trump, uh, but she has a lead. She also has a lead uh, with almost half of the vote in, in North Carolina, 185,000 plus a vote lead over Donald Trump, 52.8% for Hillary Clinton, 44.8% for Donald Trump, 172,000 vote lead. Now it just changed. 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. In Ohio, a quarter, uh, 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 a quarter of the vote is now in. Hillary Clinton is ahead in Ohio as well. Uh, 137,000 vote lead over, uh, over Donald Trump, 53.3% to 43.2%. 26% of the vote is now in, just changed. Her lead has gone up to 153,000. 18 electoral votes at stake in Ohio. Let's go over to John King at the Magic Wall. These three states will, will, will make a major decision Who's going to be the next president of the United States? Let's start with Florida. Almost 80% of the vote in, in Florida, Wolf, and it's very, very close, 48.9 to 48.2. It's only 50,000 votes but now. It's, it's just shrunk a bit. It's, it's just shrunk a bit as you're starting to fill the map in. And again, when you fill the map in up here, 
you can expect Donald Trump to make up ground. The challenge for Donald Trump is a lot of these smaller counties, when you look at them, you know, you're not, a huge, not much in in that county there. I'm trying to come over and see we have a percentage, 92% of the vote in here, and you see it's not that many votes. So a 6,000 gap there. That's one of the things we're going to watch as we get closer to 100% of the vote in is what's missing. And if it's the smaller counties, there's only so much math you can make up. But let's look at the state as we go through it right now. Uh, this is... This is going down to the wire in a nail-biter. Osceola County, it's only 1.4% of the state population, but it's in that important I-4 corridor. Uh, Jake was just talking about, Jeff Zeleny mentioned earlier, the Clinton people, in the age of big data, you know what you need. You know how many registered voters are. You have an expectation of turnout, and you run, you run these computer models, and you run your list, and you turn out your voters. And if you get to a number where you're happy, you see 63% there, let's go back in time, 62%. If you're the Clinton campaign, if you're outperforming President Obama, you think that's enough. Now, Donald Trump is a very unorthodox candidate. Is he going to drive up turnout in these Republican areas is the counterbalance to that. But if you're the Clinton campaign, you want to get your Democrats out. And in most of the places, they are doing that. 53% for the president there four years ago. 53.3% for Secretary Clinton. Now, this is a bit of a down for Secretary Clinton, and this is a swing area. This is Pinellas County where St. Pete is, 49.8, so just shy of 50 for Secretary Clinton. The president did a little bit better here. So you find some areas where she's overperforming, some areas where she's underperforming, and then you start to watch. You pull out here right now. Let's come back to this year's race, and you're looking not only for what's missing. We have no votes at all up here. This is very conservative territory. Donald Trump's going to run up some numbers here. But then you want to come down here and say we still don't have percentages here, so this tells us what we have is the early vote. Uh, most of what we have, if not all of what we have here, is the early vote. We haven't, from the precincts, we're not getting percentage reporting yet. And that's a, that's a big factor in the sense that what this tells us, we don't know how many, because early voting has become so important, but it tells us there are more votes down here, which is good news for Secretary Clinton. North Carolina, Hillary Clinton has a lead there in North Carolina as well. Half the vote in North Carolina is now in, John. And, right. and uh, as, as I pull it out, I just want to tell our viewers, as we go through the night like this, when you see me go to the national map, because it's shaded doesn't mean it's over there. That's leading. On this map, it's live data feed. So you'll see states switch back and forth. Just a moment ago, Hillary Clinton was leading in Alabama. And Alabama 51 percent of the vote in North Carolina. Now in, right. she has a lead, 51.9 percent to 45.7 percent so, in North Carolina. And so now you start looking. When you get above the halfway mark, then you start looking at your major population centers, how much of the vote is in. Is it tracking throughout the night? repeatedly. Uh, we hadn't had any votes in Durham earlier. Again, now we have some Durham votes, but the percentage, this is an early drop of votes in from Durham County, 85 percent. Remember, 76 percent for the president four years ago. If that percentage holds up, that's what Secretary Clinton needs in a state that is one of the ultimate tug-of-war states in American politics. I want to come back over to Wake County, nine-plus percent of the state population, two-thirds of the vote in there, She's getting close to 60% of the vote to 37%. Again, you match it up to try to do the math compared to four years ago where this was such a close state uh, carried by Governor Romney uh, four years ago. Secretary Clinton's doing what she needs to do here. So you're looking for Donald Trump, and you're saying, where can he pull up the vote? Let's go back and look at the Romney win, and you see all this red down here, right? You, so Donald, Donald Trump needs to run it up along the coast all the way down. Let's come back in it here. Mitt Romney carried here. New Hanover County, 2% of the state population. This is where Donald Trump, Melania Trump, introduced Donald Trump the other day. He had an airport rally here. Smart campaigns know where you got to win, but at the moment, it's the tiniest of margins. Mm. Uh, but if this county stays blue, that's a sign the Clinton campaign is not only holding the Democratic areas, but encroaching and taking a few votes. And again, this is what the big vote swing came here in Mecklenburg County. She's at 66%, but we still have that. That's a low vote total for what's almost 10% of the state population. So we still have more votes to come here. So if you're the Clinton campaign at 53%, you're looking at this, you know it's going to go late. But with what's still out there, you're encouraged at the moment. But we have a lot of these smaller areas. And, you know, it's 2,000 here, 500 here, maybe 2,000 there. It adds, there's still some potential out there for Donald Trump as the rural areas fill in. Yeah, I mean, she's ahead by about 150,000 votes with 53% of the vote in. That's significant. It is significant because it gets harder. Donald Trump, again, in the big population centers, Hillary Clinton is winning, and she's winning by some pretty lopsided margins so far. So for Donald Trump, number one, shrink the margins in these major population centers. As the later vote comes in, you're hoping they're coming in maybe from, pre, you know, this is for the city. You're hoping they come in from the suburban areas, the farther out areas, and you run up the vote a little bit. Number two, in the smaller rural areas that are still out, Donald Trump has to hope for very healthy margins. And you go through some of these, you see what I'm talking about. You know, only 5% of the vote in in Stokes County, he's getting 73%. So, you know, it's a couple thousand votes here. We have no votes over here yet. So it's out there, but, but if she keeps running up impressive numbers in the big population centers, uh, simple math, it gets you over the top because the Democrats are winning where more people live. It's, again, arithmetic in the end. But at the moment, 
That's a healthy lead. You're, it's 53% of the vote in North Carolina. The question is, how fast is the And rest they're keeping the polls in? open in Durham uh, right. at, at least an extra hour because there were some problems there. Let's take a look right. at Ohio. Blue at the moment. If, again, if that one stays blue at the end of the night, if we can call it. Remember, it was the day after in 2004. By the way, I want to show our viewers yeah. Texas. We showed right. it's blue. That's only because the votes that have been right. released right. so far, they haven't closed the Let's votes just, there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, she's leading right now because, uh, in Texas, but barely, but it's, that doesn't necessarily mean much. Barely because it's San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, the, you, know, you have one place report early. Again, watch us throughout the night. Remember, we haven't called these races. We have different maps and different graphics. If you're looking at this, you're looking at a live data feed. Same for Ohio. Uh, we haven't called New Hampshire yet. It's blue at the moment. But Ohio, <clears throat> excuse me, if Ohio stays blue, Hillary Clinton's the next president of the United States. That's simple. But we're early. We're only up to 27% of the vote there. And you, know, you see that looks like a big swing, but you don't know what's out. So you go through this. At the moment, we did not have any votes out of the Cleveland area, Cuyahoga County, earlier. And this is 32% of the vote, 68-29, if, if rounded up, 69-30. So it's a matching. Right now, it's a matching 2012. This state ended 2012 with a narrow Obama victory. President Obama carried Ohio well, twice. Carried Ohio twice. And so if you're the Clinton campaign, you like these numbers, you're waiting to see. Another key place to look is down here. Hamilton County used to be Republican, used to be a Republican area. The Democrats have made up a lot of ground here in recent years. That's, this is just early vote because we don't have a percentage right there. So we'll wait and see if this one stays like that. But if Hamilton County's blue at the end of the night in a presidential race, it's usually good for the Democrats as well. One of the questions was, would Donald Trump cut into the Democratic support in places like Akron? You just associate the blue collar workers I, and look I, at the margin right there. I want to go to Florida right now because, what, 84, 84 uh, percent, 85 percent of the vote wow. in Florida is in, look at this, uh, 3 million 876,000, 3 million 860, only what about 15 or 16,000 votes separate these two candidates in Florida with 85 percent of the vote in. Her lead once again has shrunk. It has shrunk. And again, what filled in? Some more areas up here filled in. Well, last time we were here, we had a big opening up here. Now we have a smaller opening up here. And you get it. Just out changed here. again. It's only 11,000 vote lead just now. It changed. Math on your feet. I like this. Well, yeah. this He's, he's, we have a living abacus right here <laughs> as we go through. As, as, but as you watch it fill in, it gets important to start going up to these counties and say, you know, we don't have a lot of vote here still. So there's votes to be made up for Donald Trump as you do this. And as you go through, that's what I mean about this. You're seeing a live data feed into the wall, so it will change as we're talking sometimes. Trump is doing what he needs to do in the rural areas. All right, take a look at Florida, because all of a sudden, take a look at Florida right now. Uh, you see with 85% uh, of the vote in Hillary Clinton is now in second place. Donald Trump has taken the lead in Florida. Uh, he's got 3,900,000, 3,900,029. Look at how close it is. You look look at, at how 700 votes 700. or so separate these two candidates. Donald Trump all of a sudden has taken the lead in Florida. 740 votes there. You remember a campaign long ago, 537 votes. That would be 2,000. Uh, yeah, that's what Florida is. I mean, Florida and North Carolina are these two states that are just 50-50 battleground states and why we're going to have to count deep into the night. 86% right now. So you start asking yourself, what am I missing? And significantly, remember last time I went to Pinellas County here, Hillary Clinton was leading. Uh, Donald Trump has pulled ahead. Now you think 48.3, 47.9, you know, does that make a difference? Well, it sure does when the margin in the state is inside of 1,000 votes. Winning a, winning a county like this where you have a population center, it sure does. And so you have a tug of war here. This is interesting because earlier today, a Democrat who was organizing down here said they got out on their early vote. They felt very encouraged, but then they saw the lines at the polls this Trump morning. Trump right now is 918 votes ahead. 918 votes. Uh, almost, what, 8 million people have already, their ballots have been counted, and he's got a of uh, just under a thousand votes. Eighty-six percent. So we're going to look here. Let's go down again. I just want to go down and look. Call your county. Ninety-two percent. This is where you start looking when the race is this close. What are we missing? So you're missing eight percent here, but they're getting there, right? So you're you got most of the vote counted there. So then you come over here and you get eighty percent here. So. If this All right, take a look at up. this. We'll just change it. Yeah. She has now taken the lead once right. again. Hillary Clinton it'll, is now in the lead. It's going to update in a second. No. Uh, we're watching there this very go. closely. You can see right there. Do uh, Hillary Clinton is the lead. She's got 3,972,000, 3,968,000, 4,000 vote lead. Right. And that's, look, it, this is, we're going to rock and roll with this for a while here. So let's go through. Here's an encouraging sign for Secretary Clinton. You say she just pulled into the lead. We've had a seesaw in the two or three minutes we've been having this conversation here. We may have another one as we have it. Now 3,000 yeah. votes are but there are votes, there are only 25% of the vote in, in Palm Beach County. She's winning 
60-40, 59-39 there. So if you're the Clinton campaign, you're watching this seesaw, you know there's a lot of votes missing from here. Let's go down to Broward County. We don't have the percentages here yet, so that tells me this is early vote, and we're not getting live votes yet. We'll see. We have to, we'll get some more votes, and that percentage will jump up very quickly. doesn't mean 0%, obviously. It just means when they dump in the early votes, they don't give us a percentage. Miami-Dade up to 80%. So there's more votes here. She's winning big. She's 1,600 so votes ahead right now. Reasonable to expect she'll get more votes out of here. The challenge for Donald Trump is in the areas that are red, what's missing? This is an interesting one for me. I've been watching this all night because Duval County, this is where Donald Trump had a rally the other day. The president of the United States came in after him. Duval County is a Republican area. Trump is up right now, 49 to 47. But when President Obama won narrowly four years ago, he lost this county by three points. Sometimes it's about the margins. You, you see the, the blue and the red, you think Democrat, Republican. But the margins within these large counties can make a big difference. And President Obama came within three points in Duval County. They were happy with that four years ago because they, they knew they were going to get the votes in Miami-Dade and the others. So if Hillary Clinton is this close in Duval County, uh, that's actually, it's, she can lose this, if she's losing this county by that, she's fine with that. The question is, can she keep the margin from getting any bigger? And that's the math you start to get into when you get up to 87% like this and you are in a seesaw of less than 1,000 votes there. Stand by. We're watching Florida, North Carolina, yeah. Ohio, other battleground states throughout this election night in America. We're going to show you the results in a very unique way on one of the world's most famous landmarks, the Empire State Building in New York City. Take a look at our running tally of the electoral vote built with CA Technologies. Right now, Hillary Clinton has 68 of the 270 electoral votes needed to win. The White House, Donald Trump, has 48. This night is all about your vote. You're looking at pictures from many of the millions of Americans who already have made their choice for president. They posted these photos on Instagram with the hashtag MyVote. Right now, we're counting down to the next round of poll closings, including results from New York, the home base of both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. We'll have much more results right after the break. Election Night in America is brought to you by CA Technologies. Business rewritten by software. This year, people have expressed their opinions by sharing a photo using the hashtag MyVote. See more on the CNN Politics app, built with CA Technologies. Here's another check of the electoral vote count so far. It's lighting up the Empire State Building right in the heart of New York City. Hillary Clinton right now with 68 electoral votes of the 270 needed to win. Donald Trump with 48. We're counting down to another poll closing and another chance to make a pr projection in the presidential race. Right now, here's a key race alert. All right, take a look here at Florida. We'll start with Florida. 88% of the vote is in. Look at how close it is, 48.5% to 48.4%. Donald Trump has now taken the lead. Uh, Donald Trump is ahead of Hillary Clinton by 8,071 votes. 29 electoral votes are at stake in Florida. 88% of the vote is in. Donald Trump has now taken an 8,000-plus vote lead. In North Carolina, more than half of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton maintains a steady lead of nearly 150,000 votes over Donald Trump, 51.7% to 45.8%, 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. In Ohio, almost a third of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton maintains her lead of about 120,000 votes over Donald Trump. 18 electoral votes are at stake in Ohio right now. Uh, let's take a look at the electoral uh, map count as we know it right now. Take a look at this. You see uh, Hillary Clinton with 68 uh, electoral votes uh, to Donald Trump's 48. You need 270 to win the White House. Remember, the blue states, those are states we've projected that Hillary Clinton will win. The red states, those are states we've projected Donald Trump will win. You see all those yellow states over there? Those are states where it's too early to call. We have not yet been able to make a projection in those states. And you see, you see all of those states, including Florida, where Donald Trump has just pulled ahead. Uh, let's go uh, and, 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 and show the votes right now. Look at this. Florida, 88% of the vote is in. Donald Trump's lead has grown almost 14,000 over Hillary Clinton, 48.6% to 48.4%. Donald Trump has a slight lead over Hillary Clinton in Florida. 
and John, uh, 40, uh, 88 percent of the vote is in, 12 percent outstanding. So this is uh, this is a, a significant number right now. And we're, yeah, we're, and we're again, this is going to be seesaw. It's a nail biter. So hang out for a while, brew some espresso. Uh, just as we were as earlier when you moved over there for a little bit, I was just going around and looking. And part of this is because Donald Trump started running it up up here in these counties, and there's still a lot of votes to be counted. The quick, these are the quick early vote deposits coming in, and Donald Trump running up by big margins up here in the conservative part of the state, which is exactly what he needs to do. Uh, down here in the southwest corner of the state is Republican territory, 76 percent of the vote, and that's one of the the things you start to get into when you get close to 88, 90 percent statewide, you're going county by county and saying what's left for Donald Trump to get and what's left for Hillary Clinton to get. Lee County just went to 100 percent as we were having this conversation. So it's a place where he's running up the score, but there's nothing more. And so that's when you, when you get trying to get from 88 to 100. Now we're at 89 percent. If you're in the Clinton campaign, you're down a little bit right now. But here's what's encouraging to you. If you look at Palm Beach County, She's running it up quite big right here, and they still have 75% of the vote. Only 25% of the right. vote is in. Right. So if, if the margin stays anything like that, there's a lot more math to be added in the Hillary Clinton column. Move down to Broward County. As we come in here in the middle, we still post a zero here. It's obviously not zero. We have a lot of votes in here. You get the early vote count released, and only when they start counting the live votes do we get a sense of what the percentage is. So we don't know. Uh, we assume there are more votes here, but we don't know the answer to that question in Broward County. Miami-Dade? They're almost done, but there's 20 percent more in a major population center. So that's a big chunk of votes. If that margin stays the same, this 20 percent comes those in. Those three more counties votes. alone, those three counties, yeah. Miami-Dade, yeah. Broward, Palm Beach County, they have, what, more than 30 percent of the population of the entire state. That's right. You just go through right here and look. 7 percent in Palm Beach County, almost 10 percent, 9 percent there, so you're up to 16 plus. Miami-Dade, 13 plus. So there you go. You're above 20 percent, 30 percent, I'm sorry, right there as you go. And they're big Democratic areas. And again, there's still some votes out. So you start looking at other areas. I looked up here a little bit. Discourage in terms of Clinton has what she's going to get out of Orange County up here. 97 percent of the vote counted there. So as you go through matching up these counties, what's left to count? Uh, you come in. I stand by right for here. a second. I want to quickly go to Dana. You've got two major projections in the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. That's right. Well, first, the first Democratic pickup in the Senate of the evening. You see there Tammy Duckworth, the Democratic challenger. CNN can project that she will beat the incumbent Republican Mark Kirk. This is a seat that Republicans, uh, frankly, gave up on a while ago. They knew that Tammy Duckworth, especially in a presidential year in a blue state, was very likely uh, to win. And CNN can project that that has happened. Now let's go to the state of Florida. Very close in the presidential level, but on the Senate level, CNN can project that Marco Rubio will go on to win another term in the U.S. Senate, defeating his Democratic challenger, Patrick Murphy. This uh, was a, 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 not a seat that Rubio wanted. He said he was going to retire until a lot of bigwigs came in and convinced him to reconsider. He did, and now he looks like he will go on to win re-election. Now let's look at some other pickups, for, uh, excuse me, other wins uh, that CNN can project this evening. Richard Blumenthal. The incumbent Democrat in Connecticut, CNN can project that he will win another term, defeating his Republican challenger, Dan Carter. Uh, now in the state of Maryland, CNN can project that Chris Van Hollen will uh, pick up, excuse me, will beat uh, his Republican challenger, Kathy Schlega. This was an open Democratic seat, so it stays in the blue column. Then in Oklahoma, James Lankford, the incumbent Republican, CNN can project there he will win re-election, defeating his Democratic challenger, Mike Workman. Now let's look at some of the key races that we're watching that will determine the balance of power. New Hampshire, the polls have closed there within the last hour. The Democratic challenger right now is ahead of the incumbent Republican, Maggie Hassan, uh, just a little under 6,000 votes ahead of Kelly Ayotte but not very many votes in, so we're going to be watching that closely. And then also North Carolina. Deborah Ross is the Democratic challenger. She has a significant lead right now against the incumbent Republican Richard Burr. Uh, she is hoping to unseat him, and Democrats are hoping that that will be another one in their column in their quest to take back the Senate. Now let's look at what all of this means, Jake, for the balance of power. At this hour, you see there on the big board, Democrats have 40 seats. Republicans have 35, uh, 25 left to call. But the big news uh, during uh, this hour is the fact that Democrats have their very first pickup in the state of Illinois. So what that means is they would need four more pickups, uh, holding all the rest, 
in order to become uh, the majority again in the U.S. Senate. This was the one that we knew the Democrats would get in Illinois, and that we also suspected that Rubio in Florida and Portman in Ohio would be able to hold on to their seats. Now we look at the real races and find exactly. out what happens in these ones that we have no idea what's going to happen. More. Yeah, but it could be very, very close in some of those key battleground states. And we're going to see what happens. As you point out, the Democrats need a net gain of five. Unless they win the White House, then they need a net gain of four. We have a key race alert right now. All right, let's show you what's going on in Florida right now. Uh, 29 electoral votes are at stake. 91% of the vote is in, and Donald Trump is building up uh, a sort of impressive lead, 63,297 uh, votes. Donald Trump has a lead over Hillary Clinton in, in Florida with 91% of the vote in, 48.8% to 48.1%. 56% of the vote in North Carolina is in. Hillary Clinton has an impressive lead of 131,000 over Donald Trump, 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. In Ohio, 31% of the vote is, is in. Hillary Clinton has a lead of almost 100,000 votes over Donald Trump in Ohio. 18 electoral votes at stake in Ohio right now. We've got more. Uh, in Virginia, 45%, almost half of the vote is in. Donald Trump has an impressive lead over Hillary Clinton in Virginia, 130,000 vote lead, in fact, over Hillary Clinton. 13 electoral votes are at stake in Virginia. More numbers coming in, more results coming in. 9% of the vote in Georgia is in. Donald Trump has an impressive lead of 169,000 uh, plus over Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. Only 7% of the vote is in, but Hillary Clinton's lead is 5,700 over Donald Trump, 53% to 41 0.8%. Michigan, they're going to be closing the polls, but we've got some numbers so far. Hillary Clinton has a 20,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. 6% of the vote is in in Michigan. And in Texas, they'll be closing the polls soon. But 46% of the vote has been released. Hillary Clinton, look at this, has a, a 56,000 vote lead over Donald Trump with almost half of the vote in in Texas right now. There you see right now. We have more projections to make right now. Two more wins for Donald Trump. CNN projects Donald Trump will win the state of South Carolina with its nine electoral votes. Another win for Donald Trump in South Carolina. Donald Trump will also win Alabama with its nine electoral votes. Donald Trump the winner in Alabama and South Carolina. Two uh, important wins for Donald Trump. We have a key race alert right now. The polls in Arkansas have just closed too early to call in the state of Arkansas. Bill Clinton's home state, Hillary Clinton, was the first lady of Arkansas. Too early to call in Arkansas. Six electoral votes right now. Let's take a look at the electoral college map. See where it stands right now with these latest wins. Look at how close it is. 68 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton. 66 for Donald Trump. You need 270 to win the White House. Let me remind you, the red states we've projected, Donald Trump will win. The blue states we've projected, Hillary Clinton will win. The yellow states, too early to call. No projection yet in those states. Uh, Jake, uh, this is a nail-biter in several of these states. It's been going back and forth, up and down. In Florida, especially uh, Donald Trump with something like a 60,000 vote lead right now. Uh, but there are still lots of outstanding votes in Broward County uh, and in Palm Beach County, the southeastern part uh, of Florida, uh, where there are a lot of Democratic votes. And still, it's, it's um, as we always said, this was going to be a very tight race in some of these states. And in Florida, really, I have no idea what's going to happen. Republicans and Democrats still anticipate Hillary Clinton could edge it out. But at the end of the day, who knows? Uh, and and Dana, Donald Trump really needs to win Florida if he's going to have a major shot. He could do it in other ways, mm -hmm. but Florida is so important. That's right. Look, it's important for him just emotionally and symbolically because he feels that it is a second home because of Mar-a-Lago and other uh, places that he, that he has there, but also, much more importantly, mathematically. It is very, very hard for him to get the keys to the White House without going through Florida first. And as you said, the counties that are out do seem to be more Democratic than the ones that we already have in that shows Donald Trump uh, slightly ahead. But I have to say, I was just uh, communicating with some Republicans saying, well, you can't say we didn't get our vote out <laughs> right. because it certainly looks like they did. Yeah. Uh, although uh, uh, we should point out, uh, again, we've already called Florida for Marco Rubio. Exactly. I mean, so the Senate candidate, the Senate candidate there. So he was running significantly ahead uh, of Donald Trump. And it's interesting, one of the subtexts of this night is how did Republican Senate, Senate candidates deal 
uh, with Donald Trump. Mark Kirk in Illinois, uh, he announced he was the first Republican uh, in the Senate to say he was not going to endorse Donald Trump. I think he said he was going to write in General McChrystal. Uh, he got decimated in that very blue state. Marco Rubio tried to keep an arm's length, but he did say he was going to vote for Donald Trump, and he tried to challenge his Democratic opponent. Do you think Hillary Clinton is trustworthy? Do you support her? And apparently his argument won the day. And can I just point out one bit of irony? Marco Rubio's presidential race ended because Donald Trump trounced him. Killed him. In yeah. Florida during the presidential primary. And now here we have Marco Rubio being convinced to run for re-election. We project that he's winning and Donald Trump is fighting for the broader electorate. Originally said he wasn't going to run for re-election. He decided to exactly. run for re-election. It was re only four, four months ago that John, he changed his uh, mind. let's take a look at the state of Florida right now because it's been, Hillary Clinton was ahead. Donald Trump was ahead. They're going back and forth. There are still votes outstanding. But take a look at this. 91% of the vote has now been counted. I must say I'm impressed that Florida counts its vote so quickly. Almost 10 million, what, 9 million votes. Look at this. Look at this. 48.9 percent, 48.1 percent. Look at a small lead over there for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. He's, he's ahead by only, what, uh, what 77,000 votes. That's a significant number. That's a significant number. And then again, you know, as I said earlier, we're going to keep looking. I was just emailing when you were walking over with some Democrats and Republicans in Florida asking them what they know on the ground. And they're where we are now. They're just counting votes. Except just, you start going through this. When you get up this far, you start saying, what's missing? And you still have half of the votes in Palm Beach County to come in. And Hillary Clinton has a big, healthy lead there. There's no guarantee, zero guarantee, she keeps that spread. But if she keeps anything like that spread, she's, you know, what, not, almost 90,000 votes up there. If the other half comes in and she, she'll pick up, if she picks up somewhere in the ballpark of 80,000 votes when the other half comes in, that's significant given how close this race is. So one of the most significant issues in Florida now is we get up to 91 percent statewide, and I'm going to keep checking it because it can change on the fly as we go through this, is what's missing. And there's a lot of votes missing in that Democratic stronghold. A lot of votes missing here. We don't have the exact number yet. Broward County turnout, we are told, expected to be up from 2012. These are the early votes, and there's always one county in any state that's a little slow to count. Uh, and we'll wait to see if we get more this votes. This bodes here. well for Hillary Clinton. The expectation is, we don't have the exact percentage, but the expectation is she's winning big, and unless there's a dramatic change in the results, she's going to get more votes there. And we come down to Miami-Dade. They're almost done here, but in a big populous county like this, 9% or 10% of the vote can make a difference. So if you're looking at the map right now, you're trying to think, are there places on this map where Donald Trump can make up what's still to come? And again, he's ahead by a very slight margin at the moment. There's every reason to expect Hillary Clinton will make up that margin and more down here. And so then the question is, where, where do you look for Donald Trump? So let's just go through. I'm picking these counties randomly. Well, here's one. Only at 32 percent of the vote. Again, it's not a lot of votes. It's, it's less populated. But that's the key in these states. In just about every state we're going to go through in these battleground states, you see a lot of red. Those are smaller rural counties. So the question is, how many can you get? They're at 100 percent here, Citrus County. That's bad for Donald Trump. You come over here, they're only at 32 percent in Marion County. So there are more votes to get. Are there enough? Are there enough of these rural counties? This one's at 100 percent. You come through here, they're at 96 percent. You move up here at 97 percent. So after a while, you start to think if all of these, if most of these counties, let's just keep picking them randomly to see 100 percent and 45 percent. So in some of these counties, very small, the question is, when you're getting 100 votes here, 500 votes here, 700 votes there, can you make up for this? And that's always the challenge for Republicans in a state like Florida, because when you get down here, I just want to come back to Miami-Dade and check it. This is where you're talking about tens of thousands of votes. When the percentage number moves up, you're talking about tens of thousands of votes, not hundreds of votes. And so if you're looking at this map right now at 91 percent, you're crossing them a little bit in the Clinton campaign, but you think you get enough down here still in the bank to get you over the finish line. But that's by no means guaranteed because we're going to have to go through all these smaller rural counties. He's 84,000 votes ahead right now. Right. But, but 80, there, as you 84, point out, ahead those right Democratic now, counties in the South, right. there's still a lot of votes outstanding. Uh, you could get those right here. You, you could get those right here in Palm Beach County. The combination of Palm Beach, Broward, and what's left in Miami-Dade to be counted is more than enough. The question is what else is still out there. And again, when you start to pick, you know, this is a large Republican. It's only 2% of the state population, but it's all Republican. Donald Trump's winning it big, but it's 95% in. You come over here, Lee County, here's a, here's a place where Donald Trump could do some business. Take a look. Let's go to North Carolina and Virginia. Donald Trump, by the way, in Virginia, Donald Trump is ahead. Uh, let's go to Virginia first. All right, you look at Virginia. I've been watching this one repeatedly because Donald Trump is ahead. And I just, just a cautionary note, again, this is more competitive than we thought Virginia was going to be, at least than a lot of people thought Virginia was going to be. So here's the big issue. Donald Trump is doing exactly what he needs to do out here. These are your smaller rural areas. You pick up these counties, 68%, 69%. 
79 percent. Donald Trump's doing exactly what he needs to do out in rural. But the problem for the, the issue is what's here. Only 50 percent in Loudoun County. Secretary Clinton running it up. This is where your population center is coming closer to Washington, D.C. Only 27 percent of the vote counted in Fairfax County. Again, look at the margin there. Go into Fairfax City and pull that out. Only 43 percent of the vote counted there. That's a very low number there. So we're waiting for a lot more votes out of Fairfax. Want to move over here. You come down here to some of these swing counties that you look at. Hillary Clinton, this is, this is a comeback for Donald Trump. When we looked earlier tonight, and we're only at 16% in Prince William County, uh, he was way down in Prince William County when we were in the single digits. This is a comeback of sorts there to show this will be the challenge. If Donald Trump can stay that competitive in these outer suburbs, then he has a chance. If you get into places just across the bridge in Arlington, Virginia, where you, you know, find the Pentagon, this is what you expect, two-thirds of the vote. So there's more votes for Hillary Clinton to come out of here. The question is, can Donald Trump stay more competitive in the outer suburbs and then run it up in these rural areas? But again, let's just check down here in the Norfolk area to see what we have here. Chesapeake County, 61% there. Fort Smith here, 41%. In these Democratic areas down here, Wolf, still some votes to be counted. So Donald Trump is ahead. Uh, that's encouraging. Uh, but we still got some business to do in Virginia. North Carolina, Hillary Clinton is ahead in North Carolina right now. She's ahead, what, by uh, about 80,000 votes, uh, 80, more than 80,000 votes. 80, 85,000 votes. 85,000 votes. And they are coming out of the big areas where she needed to get them. Mecklenburg County, just shy of 10% of the state population. That's a big margin. And we still have more votes to get here. Again, when you go into these states now, statewide, where are we? 59%. And so we still know, because we have a zero there, that means this is an early vote dump and we're waiting for more votes to come in. We still have more to get out of Mecklenburg County. Then you move over here, Wake County, again, used to be the back and forth swing county in the state. It's a Democratic county now, but the Democrats need to win it big. She's winning it big. That's about 100,000 votes. That's what she needs to do. And, the, and here, again, and this is where we're waiting because the polls were kept open. They should be closing now in that area, Durham County, right in this ballpark. So again, you look at this and the question is, where does Donald Trump get, where can he get his votes in these places where he's winning? Let's just look, Brunswick County. Again, it's a small area, but you want to compare it. He's running even with where Governor Romney ran. Romney was at 60% here. Donald Trump's just shy of that. So as you watch this pull out, it tells you the performance-wise, and we're seeing this in a lot of states, performance-wise in this race, it looks a lot like 2012. Now, Obviously, President Obama won in 2012. In this state, Mitt Romney won. Uh, and so we're going to watch this. We still have, you see the light, the, the gray. Those are mostly Trump votes. You can be sh pretty sure that in these rural areas, this one, you know, between two Democratic counties here, Democrat might win this one. But if you come through and you look back in time, most of these rural areas, up here, they're Democratic. Down here and out to the west, they tend to be Republican. So if you're looking at the map right now, a little bit more probably to be gained for Secretary Clinton up here. Trump has to run it up here. And then the population centers, we haven't looked at Winston-Salem all night. Again, we have a zero. This means this is early votes to come in. So if you're the Clinton campaign, you're looking at the map, you still have some, you know in these population centers. You know that 59% of the vote is in, so there's still right. lots of votes out there. Let's go to Ohio right now. Hillary Clinton is ahead in Ohio. Right. No Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. Right, and a quick footnote again as we go through this, if you're just joining us. These are states we're still counting the votes in. This one here, I just want to show you. We don't think Hillary Clinton's going to win Mississippi tonight. Uh, if she does, that would be a stunner. But these are live data feeds. So it's one or two precincts, one or two counties coming in. So bear with us as we go through the night. You wanted to go to Ohio right there, 49 to 46. Uh, again, if you're the Clinton campaign, you're encouraged. Uh, the map is filling in. I'm just going to show you. This is third of the vote is in. Jim. Right. So look at the map. Remember, it's mostly red. Remember where the blues are? It's pretty typical. A little more red up here for Donald Trump so far up here. If you look up along... The northern she's part ahead of the now by 50,000. But she's ahead by 50,000 votes. And so the question is, this is your biggest vote center, Cuyahoga County, where Cleveland is. 32% uh, of the vote. She's running it up pretty big. It's a reasonable expectation. There's more in the bank here for Secretary Clinton. So then you want to pull out and you say, here's the issue. It's a lot of red, right? They're smaller. But they're only, this is only 24% of the vote. Only 17% of the vote. Only 18% of the vote. 60% of the vote here, but still some more votes to come in to Trump. So Trump is winning all this red. And if you're Donald Trump, be patient. Republicans should not give up on Ohio. There's a lot of places here that have not counted the votes. And again, you're talking, it's not as big a margin, but if it's 2,000 here, you know, 2,000 here, 1,000 or so here, over time you can make it up. So there's still a lot to be counted in Ohio. We have, we're, up to we're up to a third of the vote. But if you look what you're looking for in the Republican areas, are you getting to 100 percent? Then if you're the Trump campaign, you'd start to get worried. We have a lot of counties to do still in Ohio. She's ahead at the moment, but there's a lot of business to be done. As you see, most of these counties are still in the 20s or the 30 percent wise. Let's as we go get back to North Carolina because Hillary Clinton's lead in North Carolina, critically important state, uh, has just narrowed uh, what to about 
66, 66,000 votes with 61% of the vote in. 66,000 votes. And so you're seeing what's happening. I just want to go out here to the Democratic area where she's getting 57%. You, you start to watch and see where Donald Trump is starting to pull in. He's got votes to be counted out here, too. 33% of the vote here. He's pulling, he's pulling pretty healthy margins in the smaller rural areas, and there's still votes to be counted. So as these counties come in, he's coming back. I just want to keep checking here because it's the, the big population centers to see if it's getting any closer. We're still waiting for more votes out of Mecklenburg County. And the question is, you have the early vote that comes in. The Democrats, in a lot of places, the Democrats feel very happy with their early vote turnout. Sometimes the, when you get the day of voting, you know, the Republicans will stage it. Even in a Democratic area, the Republicans will get closer because of the traditionalists who turn out on Election Day. So we need to be careful when we look at these big places where we still have votes to be counted. But here in Wake County, we're now up to 88 percent. And so this is to the same point. In a very competitive state, the Clinton campaign can count on some more out of Wake County, but they're starting to, this is where you run your models. You've got 12 percent left. Is it enough to offset elsewhere? Uh, Durham County's now up to 12 percent. This is an area where she needs that. They see the 85 yeah. percent, not only the 85 percent, but the gap. 22,000 votes right there. In, in, your, in your computer models of this race, you need 85 percent and big turnout in Durham. All Let's right. just pull out Stand by. a second. Very close. We're going to be here a while. All right. We got another check of the electoral vo vote count of the Empire State Building right now. Hillary Clinton now with 68 electoral votes of the 270 needed to win. Donald Trump not far behind with 66 electoral votes. We're just minutes away from another big round of poll closings in 14 states, including delegate-rich New York State. That's the home to both of the presidential nominees. Uh, New Yorkers, by the way, they're watching the results uh, on CNN. Uh, they're at a rooftop watch party down the street from the Empire State Building. Our election coverage continues right after this. It's a close race to 270 electoral votes right now. You can see our running tally on the uh, Empire State Building. Hillary Clinton uh, now with uh, 68 electoral votes. Donald Trump with 66. And just on the street from, from the world-famous landmark, New Yorkers are watching election results on CNN as we get ready for the polls to close in New York State. That's the home turf for both Clinton and Trump. We're getting uh, new numbers coming in right now. Here's a key race alert. All right, Donald Trump is ahead in two important states in Florida and Virginia. In Florida right now, 91% of the vote has been counted. Donald Trump has 110,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 49.1% uh, to 47.8%. 29 electoral votes are at stake in Florida. In Virginia, almost 60% of the vote is now in. Uh, Donald Trump is ahead by 128,000 votes over Hillary Clinton, 50% to 44.8 percent, 13 electoral votes in Virginia. Two important battleground states where Hillary Clinton is ahead. In Ohio, in Ohio, more than a third of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a lead of 36,500 votes over Donald Trump, 49 percent to 47.2 percent, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. And in North Carolina, 61 percent of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton's lead is 62,000 over Donald Trump. 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. So she's ahead in North Carolina and Ohio right now. Let's go over to Jake and Dana. We're watching Florida. Right now, let's say Florida, Florida, Florida. More than 90% Jake of the vote is now in. And uh, it's surprising how close it is, given the fact that uh, both Democrats and Republicans uh, in the state had thought that Hillary Clinton had a, a slight edge. We're still waiting for a lot of outstanding vote in southeastern Florida, which is a Democratic stronghold, uh, but he's up more than 100,000 votes as of right now with 91% of the vote in. Yeah, that's an impressive, uh, impressive lead, but it's, it, it could certainly come back depending on what happens in those heavily Democratic counties in the southeast. That's right. And look, they not only spent money, but they also sent their most prized resources the candidates themselves over and over again. Just really quickly, our, our embeds with either candidate, Ashley Killo and Dan Merica, says both of them, since the conventions, both of them have been there to Florida 25 times, holding 45 events in one state. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about why this is so close. Yeah, Anderson, this night is turning out to be a real nail-biter. It is. Fascinating. It's going to be a long night uh, indeed. Let's talk with the Gloria Borger, David Axelrod. I mean, as you look at Florida, uh, Donald Trump has a lead of some 100,000 votes, votes. But again, we're talking about Miami, uh, Dade County votes still to come in, Broward uh, and Palm Beach. There are, there are about 800,000. I was just uh, speaking with a Republican in the state, 800,000 to a million votes still out. Uh, they believe this Republican says uh, that uh, her Democratic buddies are very worried. 
uh, about this state right now. And I, I look, I think that you see the Latino turnout in the state was 18 percent. Uh, Barack Obama's, uh, David pointed out to me, uh, was 17 percent. So it's a little bit up, but it's not usually up, which is what we anticipated. African American vote is up mm -hmm. in the yeah, in the state. So that yeah. may that may uh, balance it out. David Axelrod, as you look at the numbers, what do you see? Well, it's a slightly less. Uh, it is a slightly more minority right. turnout, mm -hmm. and I, I, I think when you look at what's out. I think there's cause for optimism. What, what, in terms of out, what votes have not been counted not in, been, in those have, heavily have leaning Democratic areas. And as John King uh, points out, that is how you have to look at these things. There are some big pockets of support for her that are out. This is going to be close. Uh, assuming uh, the votes close. that have not been counted in those leaning Democratic areas yes. continue to mirror the votes that have been counted in those same areas. Then right. she would end up uh, winning the state. But, um, you know, so if I were sitting there and looking this, I would say, Let's count them because if you're on the Democratic side, this thing could turn out. But I mean, all along, the Trump campaign has been saying that Florida's a must win for them. Absolutely. And I mean, it, they it, can't it, win without it. I mean, the fact of the matter is that's can. 29 electoral votes. They have to have it. And they have to have other states as well that they've, uh, they've not been leading it in the polls. But this one, because of the size of it, uh, they have to have. So this is really, this, this is going to tell. A lot of the story of this uh, race, and and I was uh, texting with a Democrat in the in the state who was saying that uh, Donald Trump did better in the exurbs, rural rural areas, and what this points to is this divide in this country, yeah, you know, urban rural, and you see it in the state of Florida. You certainly do, Wolf. Anderson, we're standing by for the second largest wave of poll closings in the battle between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Just minutes from now at 9 p.m. Eastern, we'll be watching 14 states, including key uh, races in the battlegrounds of Arizona, Colorado, Wisconsin, and Michigan. The last polls are also closing in Kansas, Louisiana, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, Texas, and Wyoming. 156 electoral votes are at stake in this coming hour. Remember, 270 are needed to win the presidency. Uh, Jake, uh, we're heading into battlegrounds where the candidates have tried to clearly shake up the electoral map. That's right. As we move west, uh, we're looking at some states now uh, where uh, they've been trying to change the color of, of states. We've seen Hillary Clinton trying to make a play to turn Arizona from red to blue while Donald Trump would like to flip Democratic leading Michigan or Wisconsin or Colorado from blue to red. Let's check in with our correspondents who are at the major presidential candidates campaign headquarters. They're both in New York City. First, let's go to Jeff Zeleny at Clinton campaign headquarters. And Jeff, these numbers out of North Carolina and Florida have got to be nerve wracking for the Clinton team, especially Florida, which they felt pretty confident about. They did indeed, Jake. Really, for the last couple of days, the Clinton campaign's confidence has been rising uh, about Florida. And but it, what we're seeing here is seeing campaign strategy play out in real life. Keep an eye on Broward County, as John and you and everyone has been saying. Secretary Clinton visited there three times in the last week alone. They were literally dragging people to early vote. So that is something that is still out. That's why one top advisor tells me just a few moments ago there is no panic because of Broward County. But I can tell you, Jake, much closer than they thought. They're also watching Pennsylvania very carefully. But one advisor tells me we're flying almost blind there. This is old school. No early voting. They're frankly not sure what's happening in Philadelphia as much. But first things first and first for the Clinton campaign is watching Broward County and watching South Florida. Jake. All right, let's go to Sarah Murray, who's with the Trump campaign uh, just a few blocks away in Manhattan. And Sarah, uh, the Trump campaign, while uh, who knows what's going to happen? They've got to feel pretty good. They've, they're really turning some of these states uh, into a very competitive battlegrounds. They do feel very good about that, Jake, and particularly when you look at Florida and how tight the race is there, they're pleased uh, to see that. But this is not a campaign that's out there popping champagne or rejoicing about the numbers they're seeing. They expected Florida to be very tight and very nerve-wracking, and they are very aware of the fact that if they cannot pull out a victory in Florida, then basically Donald Trump's chances of reaching 270 pretty much evaporate. And so that's why when I was checking in with one uh, Trump staffer about how they're feeling so far about Florida, this person just told told me simply scared. All right, Sarah Murray at Trump campaign headquarters. Let's go to Wolf Blitzer right now. It's a lot closer, Dana, than so many people thought in these key battleground states. Uh, this is going to take a while. It is going to be a long night. Look, I mean, it is a divided country. 
and at least as, as far as the votes are showing us as they're coming in now, that is playing out. I mean, there's no question about it, and especially and incredibly so in the purple state of Florida. Well, let's walk over to John King and take a closer look at Florida right now. John, uh, some of those Democratic leading counties in the southeastern part of Florida, there's still a lot of votes outstanding. Still a lot of votes outstanding. The question is, are there enough votes outstanding? So you go through them as you look. And you look at Palm Beach County, we've been stuck at 53% of the vote counted for quite some time, uh, 57 to 40. So reasonable to assume there are a lot more votes here for Secretary Clinton if the margin holds up. It doesn't always. It could be some you know, more Republican-leaning precincts out there. We don't know exactly what's out there, but if you watch as it's built, it's been pretty consistent. The question is, what's left? Jeff Zeleny was just talking about this. We're only up to 13% in Broward County. Secretary Clinton has targeted this quite a bit. She's a 60, 60, 70, 30 almost right there. Let's just go back and look at it comparative in time, 67, 32. So at the moment, she's running a little stronger than President Obama was four years ago when he eked out the narrowest of victories in this one county in Florida. The president won statewide narrowly. We come down to Miami-Dade, which is the biggest place for Democratic votes, and this one's almost counted, 91 percent. But again, that 9 percent, when you're talking about, look at the numbers of votes here, that 9 percent, a decent amount of votes. So we've got some more counting to do here. And you, the other thing you start looking for, Wolf, is where are the Republican votes still out? So you're looking DeSoto County, 100 percent. A lot of these smaller counties, the rural counties where Donald Trump runs it up, still Polk County, we have nothing. So there's some potential gain for Donald Trump here. But you're starting to go through these. If you come out to the coast, uh, here's a place, Volusia County. This is Daytona uh, area. Uh, he's out, this is a place where Donald Trump outperformed Mitt Romney. You look 54, 55 there to 50. So there are some places where Trump is outperforming Romney, and this is a decent vote total, 40, uh, just shy of 40,000 votes there. Uh, he's running up the votes here. He's done very well along the northern, northeastern coast of Florida, Donald Trump has. But again, you find a county, you see a big gap, but it's at 100 percent when you're trying to make up votes. You move up here, a big gap, but it's at 100 percent. So you pull back out where the Democratic votes are, counted here in Orange County. Mostly counted here. One of the interesting areas, this is very, very close, and it's going to be very close to the end. If Donald Trump ekes out a victory, he may have his performance right here in the Saint, Tampa St. Pete area. Why do I say that? Let me pull it out and look at it. Let's take the lines away so it's not confusing. Hillsborough County, 51-45. You go back in time, President Obama won it a little bit bigger. You move over here to Pinellas County, you see that's the president's margin four years ago, five points. Uh, Donald Trump is leading here right now. It's a vote-rich area on the western part of the state, a swing area that goes back and forth in close races. Trump is outperforming Romney in that particular part of the state. So that's what's keeping him more competitive, keeping him in the lead right now. If he ekes out a narrow victory, he'll have his performance up here to think about it. And again, we're going to just come back down here and keep checking. Still at 53 percent. A lot of votes here still to come in. And so far, they've been going Clinton's way. This is the one now up to 16 percent. We'll check her lead in just a second as this vote comes in. But you want to watch as we start going from 13 to 16 to 20 to 30, does it stay 69-30? You know, does it stay in that margin? If it stays in that margin, she's going to make up a that lot of That Broward votes. County where Fort Lauderdale is, 9.3% right. of the whole population right. of the state. And so as you move up, if you're looking at that big of a population center, as you move up through the count, Miami-Dade's still stuck at 93. But this is the big one we're waiting on. I mean, there, there'll be some adjustments in the margins. But when we get more of this, when we get from 16 to 30 to 40, we'll see if this holds up and we'll see that we'll get to a better sense of the turnout. We'll see how much of the math. But if you look at just just imagine at 16 percent, you're talking about, you know, 260, 280,000 votes right there. Uh, if, if that continues, there are still votes to be had. But we've got some counting to do. I'm just looking at other places as we go through this. 76 percent here, Clinton with a big lead. So maybe some more votes for her there. Most of these other places. Let's do Virginia for a moment. Let's quickly with Virginia. Let's pull back out to the map. Again, these are states where the early votes are being counted. These are not states that have been tossed. But Virginia has stayed. Donald Trump lead for quite some time. We're up to 65%. Uh, this is a state, remember, Hillary Clinton's running mate, Senator Tim Kaine, former Governor Tim Kaine, is from here. You see the lead right here, 50% to 45%. That's a pretty healthy lead for Donald Trump. So let's take a look. Number one. He's doing what he needs to do, running it up out in the small rural counties. And this is incredibly important in these states, 74 to 21. You see how this goes here. The big issue, Wolf, we're still waiting for some votes out of the Washington, D.C. suburbs. See, only half of the votes here counted in less than half in Fairfax County, 50 percent in Loudoun County. So Donald Trump leads in Virginia, Wolf, but still a lot of math to be done in the more populated areas just outside of Washington, D.C. 14 states are about to close uh, the uh, poll polling in 14 states, including two huge ones, Texas and uh, New York. Uh, we're watching several other states right now. We're getting ready to make some projections.
All right, take a look at this. Uh, we project that Hillary Clinton will carry her home state of New York. That's 29 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton will win New York State. That's Donald Trump's home state as well. Hillary Clinton carries the Empire State. Uh, Donald Trump, we project, will win Kansas with its six electoral votes, Nebraska with its five electoral votes, and Wyoming with its three electoral votes. Donald Trump wins those three. Donald Trump wins some more states. Three more. He will carry North Dakota uh, with its three electoral votes and South Dakota uh, with its three electoral votes. Donald Trump carries those states as well. Donald Trump uh, carrying some more states. Let's take a look uh, at the uh, states where it's too early to call right now. Uh, these are the states uh, where the polls have closed, but we're not able to make any projections. Arizona, Colorado, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, Texas, and Wisconsin. No, uh, no uh, projections yet. Here's the electoral map as it stands right now. Uh, Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Donald Trump has 84 electoral votes. Remember 270, that's the magic number you need to be elected president of the United States. You see the map over there. The blue states are the states that Hillary Clinton has won. The red states are the states that Donald Trump has won. All those yellow states, all those yellow states are states where the polls have closed, but we're not yet able to make, not yet able to make a projection. By the way, Nebraska, uh, we are projecting that Donald Trump will win three of the five electoral votes in Nebraska. Nebraska, one of two states with Maine, where they distribute electoral votes according to congressional districts. So let's go over to Jake. Uh, this is a this is a big win for uh, Hillary Clinton in New York because Donald Trump, that's his home state. You know, originally he thought he, he would have a shot, not necessarily in Manhattan, but in upstate New York. Yeah, bragging rights at the very least. It's a Democratic state. Uh, let's uh, show some images there of the Empire State Building if you... Uh if you're watching right now um, and you and you sent a photograph of yourself voting uh, with the hashtag my vote to Instagram, uh, your images will be making up the, the mosaic on the Empire Strait Building uh, as uh, New Yorkers, Democrats uh, celebrate the win of Hillary Clinton of that state, the Empire State. But still, this is just the beginning of a very what looks like it's going to be a very long night. Yeah, let's get let's get back to, to the electoral map right now. Take a look over here. You see uh, the electoral map, the projected Projected uh, numbers that we have, 97 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton, 84 right now for Donald Trump, uh, 100, uh, 270 needed to be elected president of the United States. But Florida, that's the big story right now. It, it is so razor thin. Uh, you know, I'm d texting back and forth with both Democrats and Republicans. Frankly, both are surprised at how, at how tight it is and, and how uh, the Latino vote, at least it looks at this point, certainly it's higher than it was in 2012 and 2008 but not the surge in that particular state that many suspected would come. And at least right now, there are counties uh, where Donald Trump is outperforming every Republican that has run in Florida uh, for president uh, in 16 years. Uh, he's doing very, very well, mm -hmm. uh, driving up Republican turnout and re the Republican vote in some of these right-leaning counties. Yep. And, and that, look, this is the story that Donald Trump and his team said that we would be telling in, in many of these places, that there are people who have been disaffected for many, many years who see uh, a candidate, their candidate, finally, in Donald Trump, that they would come out and vote where they hadn't done so before. And that explains the story of these red-leaning uh, counties where the vote is very high. We have another key race alert right now. All right, let's take a look. Let's start in Florida right now. Donald Trump is ahead impressively with 91% of the vote now in. Look at this. He has a lead of 143,361. That's an impressive lead right now with so, much, so many of the votes already counted. In Ohio, Donald Trump also has a lead of more than 52,000 with 39% of the vote in, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. Donald Trump ahead there. In Virginia right now, Donald Trump still has an impressive lead in Virginia. 66% of the vote is in. Donald Trump is ahead by more than 108,000 votes in Virginia. 13 electoral votes at stake in Georgia. 29% of the vote is in. Donald Trump has a very impressive lead of more than 340,000 over Hillary Clinton. 62.5% to 35%. There are 16 electoral votes in Georgia. An impressive lead for Donald Trump in Georgia right now. Let's go on to North Carolina right now. 69% of the vote is in. Look at how close it is. Donald Trump has a lead, but of only 
689 votes. He just took the lead over Hillary Clinton in North Carolina. Now his lead has grown a little bit as we're speaking. His lead is almost 3,000 votes over Hillary Clinton, 48.8% to 48.7%. 69% of the vote is now in in North Carolina. Donald Trump has a slight lead. In New Hampshire, only 13% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a small uh, advantage right now, 45 hundred over Donald Trump for electoral votes in New Hampshire. This has been a battleground state. In Michigan, 11 percent of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton's lead is only 13,771, 48.7 percent to 46.2 percent. Michigan has a lot of electoral votes, 16 to be specific. Michigan, it's a close race in Michigan right now. Uh, it's a key state. Uh, Pennsylvania, only 5 percent of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has an impressive lead of more than 106,000 votes over Donald Trump, 65 percent to 30 percent. 20 electoral votes are at stake in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump really was hoping for Pennsylvania, but only 5% of the vote is in. Let's take a look at Colorado. Right now, 7% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 42,000 plus vote lead over Donald Trump, but very early, only 7% of the vote is in. Nine electoral votes are at stake in Colorado right now. Uh, the, uh, let's take a look at the electoral college map where it stands right now. You can see uh, Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Donald Trump has 84 electoral votes. Once again, you need 270 to be elected president of the United States. The red states we've projected going to Donald Trump. The blue states uh, we've projected going to Hillary Clinton. All those yellow states you see, too early to call, no projections there. Let's go over to John King. I want to update our viewers on Florida right now because that vote is coming in in Florida. Donald Trump uh, building up an impressive lead. He is building up an impressive lead. The question is, is there enough still out there for Hillary Clinton? And when you go through some of these other counties, Donald Trump running it up in the rural areas, only 57% of the vote counted here, Marion County. It's not insignificant, just shy of 2% of the state population. So again, there's more votes here for Donald Trump. And you're looking around trying to find out where they are, the 100% there and 100% there. And so the question is, as Trump runs it up in the conservative rural parts of the state, is there enough when you get to 49 point to 47? You know, you see the vote count there. She needs to make it up. Is it there? Potentially. Potentially. Palm Beach here, 83% of the vote in. That lead there. She gets some vote here. This is the big question mark. Let me pull this back up for you here. The big question mark remains Broward County. Are there enough Democratic votes left? We have it at 16%. We're waiting for an update. That's been held solid there for some time. So sometimes you get a vote dump. The percentage total jumps up pretty quickly. Is there enough there? That's really the biggest outstanding question is how much of a boost will Hillary Clinton get out of Broward County? And is it enough to overcome that Donald Trump lead? Because most of Miami-Dade is in, again, 7% left in a big populated county like Miami-Dade. There's more there, too. The question is, when you pull it out to statewide, is it enough? What's left down here? Because most of the other Democratic centers are in. You see 100% of the vote counted there. You see 92% of the vote counted there. Again, Donald Trump, she's winning Hillsborough County, Tampa, Donald Trump outperforming Mitt Romney here, keeping it closer. Donald Trump winning Pinellas County, where St. Pete is. President Obama won this county four years ago. Uh, so you see some strength for Donald Trump in this part of the state uh, that is giving him an advantage as we head into the final count. Now, we've been at this before in past elections where getting from 92 to 99 sometimes takes a very long time. Uh, so we'll see if the votes are still out here. One other thing, Wolf, since last time you were here, the last time you were here, Ohio was Before blue. we get to, before we go back to Florida for a second. Sure. Because I know we have, a, we have a feature where there's still outstanding votes uh, uh, remaining. We see 92% of the vote is in. You bring Can you up. isolate the areas where there are still votes uh, uh, outstanding? So you do this here, and you see this, is, this tells you where you have some, a lot of votes still to come in. This is where, uh, where I put it. You just watch the number right there, where we are below. So let's say we're, we're below 75% of the vote counted, right? You leave that right there. So you see the areas where you're still waiting, right? So we're, obviously this is the biggest vote center. But everywhere else where we're waiting... Because he's ahead right now by about right. 130,000 votes, right. uh, 142,000 exactly right now. Are there enough votes outstanding that could for Hillary Clinton to overcome that Donald Trump advantage. So let's look at it two ways, just based on this. These are places where you're under seven, you're under 75 percent. So these are this, these are Republican places here. You bring it out here. Fifty seven percent of the vote counted again. It's one point eight percent of the state population. But that's to be gained for Donald Trump. It's not as big as we're about to go. But again, that's that's a lot of votes there still for Donald Trump. If he keeps those margins, no guarantee. But these places have a vote history and these are Republican places. This is tiny, pretty small. But again, you're only at 50 percent. Here, right? So imagine that if, if 9,000, just shy of 9,000 votes there, if the other 50% comes in the same way, it adds roughly ballpark 9,000 more votes. So there's your advantage for Donald Trump. 
the only place for the Democrats, a big Democratic area that's under 75. I'm going to move the dial. No, for it just went just up to almost half. Just up to almost half here. And so the question is, because it's up to almost half, let me just pull this back and come all the way over. And let's just come back out and let's see what that did. Uh, it didn't narrow, we're almost up to almost half, and it narrowed it somewhat. So the question is, as we go through this, are there enough votes there that we're almost at half? You see the lead now? It's pulling away. Is, is there enough there for Hillary Clinton in what's left in Broward and in Miami-Dade to pull it off? If you start to look at it right now, you get more and more skeptical as you move from 93. The question is, as we move that up to 95 and beyond, uh, if you're in the Trump campaign, you're very happy with this right now. And again, you're looking at your performance in some of these, the, in the rock rural places, the rock conservative places, Donald Trump has performed well. And in some of these swing areas here, he's overperformed. Even where he's losing, he's overperformed Mitt Romney, again, particularly in the Tampa area, which matters because it's a population center. Look at the vote count there. If Hillary Clinton has a bigger lead here, She's got, you know, that's another 8, 10, 20,000 votes, depending on what the size of that lead is. Uh, that's a significant in keeping the margins down there. Uh, Florida, we're going to try to get from 93 to 98 to 99. But if you're in the Trump campaign, uh, it's 29 electoral votes you have to have. At the moment, if you're in the Trump war room, you're reasonably optimistic, but you're waiting to see, again, up to 48 percent here. Yeah. We're, only, we're up to 83% here. So this is where the clock starts to tick against Hillary Clinton. Now that you're up to 83%... Palm Beach County. 83% in Palm Beach County. So there's not that many more votes to come in. What comes in is coming in in her favor by a lopsided margin. But then you say, okay, we're up to 83%. Boom. Uh, she's getting closer. The question is, do you get close enough uh, with what's still left? Uh, so we'll count to the last vote in Florida. I just The point I was trying to make before is that earlier on, remember, as you look at this map, live results feeding in. Hillary Clinton is unlikely to win Nebraska. It's just the votes coming in early on. The same with these other, some of these, Illinois perhaps, but Missouri, we don't think so. But Ohio was Democratic last time Wolf was here. It has moved to Republican now, 51 to 44. And the reason, last time I talked to Wolf, I said there's a lot of votes to be counted in all of these rural areas here. They are now filling in for Donald Trump. So Ohio is shifting Republican as well at the moment, Wolf. All right, uh, John, we have some projections right now. All right, we project that uh, Donald Trump will carry a huge prize. Texas, with all of its 38 electoral votes, a big win for Donald Trump in the state of Texas. Democrats had hope, but not, uh, it's not going to happen for them this time around. Donald Trump also carries uh, Bill Clinton's home state of Arkansas with six electoral votes. Donald Trump gets two more uh, states in his column. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map right now, where it stands with those two uh, states that Donald Trump has just won. He has now taken the lead. Donald Trump has 128 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Remember, 270 are needed to win the White House. So let's go back over to John King. Uh, John, he's taking the, the lead of the Electoral College count, which is significant right now. There's still plenty of other states out there. I was just doing some experimenting while you were over there, just trying to do some math. As you look at this map right now, as you look at the map fill in, and I want to again caution our viewers, and I'm sorry for those who have been with us all night, I'm being repetitive, but these are live results feeding in. These are not states that we have called in many cases. You see Nebraska, you see New Mexico, you see Missouri, for example. We haven't called those states, so they're blue at the moment. It's very early results. But as you look at the map right now, if you're Donald Trump, you're leading in Florida, you're leading in Virginia. We've got some votes to be counted there in the D.C. suburbs. But you just pulled ahead in Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin, again, very, very early. But if you're in the Trump war room, you're looking at this, and you're saying, we told you so. We have a path. Now, does that path hold up as we go into the next hour and the next hour? And I sort of suspect the next hour and the next hour? Um, we'll see. We'll see. But the early results in these places, especially when you're looking, you know, a few moments ago, I was looking at Virginia. We're up to 71 percent now. Yeah. Now, we've seen this before. I have been through many elections where the Republican is leading in Virginia very late. They start to get happy in the Republican war room. Well, zoom into those then, counties the votes, where there's still a lot of votes right, outstanding. And then, then these, shows, you know, show them to us. Right. Then these votes come in. So you've got Loud Loudoun County, only 85 percent of the vote in right there if you pull Where's that Where's the out. outstanding vote? Yeah, it's, it's all over the place is what I'm saying. Prince William County, we're only up to 16 percent. Fairfax City, 57%. So in the Washington, D.C. suburbs, which, as you can see, are filling in predominantly blue, I just want to check Arlington. It's a vote set. They're up to 94% in Arlington, so fewer can, votes Can there. you do for Virginia what you did in Florida? Sure. Show us where those, uh, those votes, the, the outstanding so vote, really remains. And we're going to slide this back a little bit, pick a number. Let's just go back to 75% again. So here's where you're looking at the places where you have 75% of the vote or less, and you see some small pockets of red, 
The problem, if you're the Trump campaign, number one, you're leading right now. I'm not saying it's a huge problem, but these are smaller areas. The, you see down here, Norfolk area down here, I want to pull it out. It's 3% of the state population. Hillary Clinton is winning the 62% of the vote, and she's winning 68 to 26. So there's a potentially, again, it's not guaranteed that the margin stays the same when the rest come in, but potentially a lot of votes for the Democrat there potentially a fair chunk of votes for the Democrat here in Portsmouth. And then again, the biggest issue always in a close race in Virginia is what happens up here. And I just want to stretch it out a little bit. Let me turn this off and just stretch it out a little bit and look. So you're, here's Washington, D.C., and you're across the river. And so most of the votes are counted in these counties, which are lopsidedly Democratic. There are no votes in Arlington County? No, they're counted. That means they're already counted. They're past, they're, oh, they're, they're past the 70 oh, percent. So here's where you're still waiting. You're only a 57 percent Fairfax County. That's 13 percent of the state population. Well, that's a lot of votes to come in. And again, they're coming in at the moment, lopsidedly Democratic. They're coming in here closer. Prince William County, Donald Trump has made a run at this. And again, if, if Donald Trump ekes out a victory in Virginia, you're going to look at this county compared to four years ago and say it's one of the places where in the, the further out suburbs beginning to get into the exurbs, Donald Trump performed very well. Now I want to pull this back over just so we get the whole statewide perspective. And you look, uh, the map is filling in as you would expect it to, except for the fact that Donald Trump is running more competitive in some areas. But we're still waiting. I just want to check down here. We're only at 53% Richmond City. This is a Democratic area. She's going to run up some more votes here. You see 75 to 18. Uh, so there's more votes for here. But, but you're up to 72%. Again, we've been through many elections where the Republican is ahead early on, and then this vote comes in, and it changes everything. But if you're the Trump campaign, did you think, you know, did, or the, flip it, if you're the Democrats, did you think two weeks ago on election night we would be looking at Virginia as the count got up above 70%? And we were counting the votes. A so state this is, that President Obama carried twice. Carried twice. Now, it used to be a red state, but it has been moving, especially because of the growth in these suburbs and the, and the fast-growing Latino population. So the fact that Trump is so competitive, even if he narrowly loses this state, right now he's winning and he's in position to potentially win it, even if he narrowly loses this state, it tells you he is performing in a way uh, that is going to surprise some Democrats. And that's why when Let's you look... Let's go to North Carolina again, right now. North Carolina, you're just moving just to the south. Do the same thing for us in North Carolina. Because 71% right. of the vote is now in, and Donald Trump still has a lead. Uh, you see a lead of what, about 20,000 votes. So we move it back again to around 75%. And what are you missing? We've got a long way to go here. We've we got a long way to go here because you've got a lot of places where, and these are largely Democratic areas. So this is, but I'll show you the Republican. The population centers here are Democratic. You see Durham County here where the Democrats are looking for some votes. You come down here, Cumberland County, Fayetteville, only... It's a, this is the absentee vote. This means we don't have a big dump of real today, election day votes as yet. Uh, this is a smaller county, Robeson County, but still, lops, well, that's more competitive, a five-point race there in that county. So you're looking at what's left out there. Uh, there are some Republican areas. Let's go through them and look. Um, they tend to be a little bit smaller, but this one's not bad. There are some votes for Trump potentially here. We don't know what's coming over here. I want to move over to Wilmington. I showed you this before. Clinton was narrowly ahead. Now, Trump is very narrowly ahead, uh, very competitive. So North Carolina, again, uh, there's enough out here that you can't make any leaps. We have a very close race, and we're going to have a very close race as we count what through. What about them. Charlotte? The, uh, the, the, that's a well, heavily populated area, almost 10% right. of the population. Mecklenburg County, and we only have 14%. So if you're the Clinton campaign, in both campaigns, there's a little nail-biting, a little running to the math, scribbling, trying to figure things out, frantic phone calls to county chairmen and all these places to find out where, you know, which precincts are still out, where are they coming from. But if you're the Clinton campaign, you are assured that you've got a lot more votes to come out of Mecklenburg County and Charlotte when you pull out yeah. to the whole state. Let's so, go to Ohio. Again, we're going to keep at this. You can leave that up if you want if we go to Ohio and see what's still out. Again, a lot of the map filling in here. So just to remind our viewers, almost right. half of the vote is now in, in, in Ohio, and Donald Trump has a significant lead, almost 200,000 votes uh, over Hillary Clinton. Almost 200,000 votes, and yet, and yet, a lot of votes still to be counted because the votes coming in. Do the in here same the way, thing for Ohio. With, it's We've still up. For it, it is, it's still up. That's what, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. We moved this back about 75 percent. So you see how many counties? How many counties have yet to get there? It's a lot of them. It, it, see, you look over to these rural counties. 40 percent of the vote is counted. Just shy of 75 percent there. 64 percent here. So you're going through this. What does that tell you? It, it, this is encouraging news if you're the Trump campaign in the sense that. There's a lot of votes to be counted. Look at all this red. And there's still a lot of votes to be counted out here. So the Trump campaign, you're thinking, sure, it's only a couple hundred in this county, maybe 1,000 there, maybe 1,500 there. But that's a lot of counties. It's a lot of math to do. So the question for the Democrats is, can you make it up here? These, you know, again, you're talking 10% of the state population. Franklin County, only where Columbus is, is only a third of the vote is in. So, you know, what's going to happen is Trump will get 500 here, 1,500 here, 200, you know, 2,000 there. Can Clinton get 20,000, 50,000 out of a place like this as the margin comes up? The Democrats have to make it up. You, see, you can just tell by looking. 
There's a lot of areas where Republican votes have yet to be counted. The question, this is the biggest one of all up here. Cleveland, only 33% of the vote. Cuyahoga County there. Let's just move over to Lorain County, 45% of the vote. It's a Democratic area, but Trump's running reasonably. Let's see, 51 to 44. 57. Trump is running stronger. This is a blue-collar area. We've talked about this all along. Lorain, Ohio, you're, that's, you're talking about your trade message. You're talking about your immigration message. Trump running stronger there. So as you pull it back out, let's come back to 2016. So make sure we stay there. Uh, this is fun. I mean, this is, you know, but that's, it's starting to inch out a little bit. I want to just pull this over. Let me make sure we have the full count of the vote. And you look at it through. It's, it's, he's starting to pull away. I mean, in Ohio, pulling away. Almost 200,000 vote lead right now. Yeah, 200,000 vote lead. And, and that's significant. You're getting the 200, 200 300,000 vote lead. And then you're coming to here and you say, okay, you know, what have I got left? Um, you know, she might have 100,000 there, maybe a little bit more, but do you have 200,000? That's the math you're doing now in these war rooms when you're going to call all your people and say, in this Democratic area, what's still missing? How much am I going to get? Athens is relatively small, so there's some there for Clinton. Uh, Clearly, Trump more, is looking good in Ohio. Clinton. I want to go to New Hampshire right. right now because look at how close it is in New Hampshire. It's, it's only Hillary Clinton is only 72 right. votes ahead of Donald Trump in the state of New Hampshire. Look at this, 47.5%, 47.4%. Mm. 19% of the vote is in. Yeah. Noticing a trend? Yes. Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, now New Hampshire. And these are the states that are going to decide who the next president Ohio of the United States too. is. Ohio. Uh, these are the states. You go, you go Florida, Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio, now New Hampshire. It's only four. It's the smallest. We just went through, you know, we, only have, four electoral we, we, have, yeah, we haven't gotten to Pennsylvania yet, which is 20. It's only four, uh, but it's key. It's key to the Trump math, and it's a place Hillary Clinton very much wants to win. We don't know much about New Hampshire yet, to be perfectly honest, because if you look, it's 19 percent of the vote. Uh, it's come down to Concord. This is a liberal area. You know, uh, that's 100 percent reporting already. So in a sense, I say we know nothing. In a sense, that's, that is something. If that's 100 percent, there's not more votes to be gained for Hillary Clinton in one place where she would get them. It's not a giant population center. New Hampshire's more more many small towns than it is any one big population center. But you come down to Nashua, this is a place Secretary Clinton's going to have to run it up. You come over here to the seacoast, Portsmouth. We have no votes from Portsmouth yet. This is where she's going to have to run it up. Uh, you know, as you look at this, but you've got a whole lot of business still to be done. I just want to show you, you go back in history, it sprinkles back and forth. There's a Democratic area up here. This is where it's key for the Republicans to run it up. Manchester City, if you come in down in here, just come down and come around that's Goffstown, just outside of Manchester. Manchester City. We'll see what happens here. Yeah. Donald Trump. Donald Trump was there just the other night. This is a gritty blue collar. Uh, you know, if you go there's 51 to 43 in the early returns there. That means again, remember this: 51 for Secretary Clinton, 55. Donald Trump is not over before. It's, is it the same as Mitt Romney? This is a place you could have a state where you start to look. We haven't talked much about the third party candidates yet. There could be a state or two where we start to think, are they changing the margin? Uh, that could be one right there in the state of New Hampshire, that 4% for Gary Johnson. Let's go to Michigan right now because Donald Trump is ahead uh, with only, what, about 15% 15, 15 of the vote is in. But in Michigan, uh, this is a state that Donald Trump was predicting strongly he would do well. And you see the, right there. Uh, that's this is that's the, the national vote. I was just going to say, in the Trump war room right now, they would like to hit freeze. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, red at the moment in the early results. If they could just freeze the map right now, they'd be quite happy. I, I don't say that to be you know, a smart aleck. I just, they're, they're looking at themselves right now in the early returns. They're, He's up by almost 20,000 they're, they're doing what they said they would do. They are competitive across the Rust Belt, very early returns. So let's just you know, take a breath. But they are proving that they'll be competitive across the Rust Belt. We'll see when we get from 15% and higher. Uh, but that's a very close race right now. So what are you looking for here? Uh, number one, you're going to look here. In Wayne County, in Detroit, we only have 5% of the vote. This is your biggest chunk of votes, and it's your biggest chunk for the Democrats right here Almost 20 in Wayne County. Of the, yeah. now, so if, if Donald Trump keeps it that close in Wayne County, uh, then Donald Trump has more than a good chance to win Michigan. Again, it's 5% of the vote, so we don't know where it's coming from. We'll see how that one plays out. You move up here, Oakland County. This is in, out in the suburbs. This is Mitt Romney's birthplace, Oakland County. Uh, Hillary Clinton running ahead. I just want to match this one up, 51-43. 54-46. Uh, so she's a little under Romney, I mean a little under Obama at the moment. He's around where Romney is. 37% of the vote counted there. One of the places we will look at here, as always, just for historical perspective, Macomb County is the legendary home of the so-called Reagan Democrats. How did Ronald Reagan win Michigan blue-collar voters? Uh, Donald Trump wants to prove to us tonight that he can create new Trump Democrats. So we'll see what happens. We have zip, zero, from Macomb County right now. And just for you watching at home, because we have zero, we're not hiding Donald Trump. They're alphabetical. Until you get results, the names are listed on the, on the map in an alphabetical way. So once the once votes come in, 
uh, Trump will jump up ahead over the third party Let's candidates. Let's go to Pennsylvania. This is this is but this is just very quickly early on. It's, these are conservative areas. So Donald Trump is ahead right now because votes are coming in in conservative areas. But that's not to criticize. That's to say he's doing what he needs to do in these conservative areas. We'll see how it plays out as we go. You wanted to go to Pennsylvania. 12 percent of the vote. Um, Donald Trump is ahead by what? 107. I mean, Hillary Clinton is ahead right. of Donald Trump by what? A, about 177,000 votes uh, with 12 percent of the vote in. She's got 60.2 percent to 36.4 percent. That's a healthy lead early on. I suspect this is about the uh, this won't last very long, uh, but Gary Johnson is ahead in one county in Pennsylvania at the moment right now. I just wanted to point out to viewers at home what this color is. You're going to see, you'll see different colors in the map. If there's a tie, you'll see a different color as well. So we'll see if that holds up and pop it. So what are we going to look for here? A couple things. Number one, and I know Jeffrey Lord is in the room tonight. This, what in Pennsylvania they call the T. Up from the center and across the top is very conservative territory with the exception of Erie up here. One of the questions will be, as we we're talking about Macomb County in Michigan, uh, how does Donald Trump do in a place like Erie? Well, let's see. A five-point lead right there. I suspect that's better than it was four years ago. And there you go, 57 to 41. 16 points in Erie. Uh, if that holds up at 65 percent, that tells you something. This is, again, a blue-collar area, uh, not unlike Buffalo, New York, my friend's hometown, uh, a place where Donald Trump has tried to sell his immigration and his trade message, and that's a good number. So let's look down here in Allegheny County. This is more about where it should be, 60 to 35 if you're a Democrat. That's what you need there. Let's look back here, 57, 42, 15 points. So you come back in there. This one, only 9 percent. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, both candidates focusing on that area. But the, the key is over here. We have nothing from the suburbs yet. We have 37% from Center City, Philadelphia. Watch this number right here. In Philadelphia County, in an hour or two, when we're counting Pennsylvania, maybe three, uh, when we're still counting the votes here, uh, is this margin around 400,000 or more? If it's not, Donald Trump's in play in, in Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton has to run it up in Philadelphia by 400,000 votes, even more than that, if she can. And then after that, if she can do that, that makes her competitive. And you see all these suburbs right here. This race will be won or lost. She's currently leading by a little bit. This is significant. Again, this is only 1% of the vote. Donald Trump's running about even in Bucks County. The last Republican to win Pennsylvania in a presidential election was George H.W. Bush. He won Bucks County. Uh, no Republican has won it since. So is, can it be close? Mitt Romney kept it close. If you go back 50 to 49 in Bucks County four years ago, uh, if Donald Trump can keep it there, uh, it keeps him in play. He would, if this is red at the end of the night, that's a good sign for Donald Trump. And then you want to look at these other counties here. This is right here. This is where Melania Trump gave her speech when she went to Berwyn, Pennsylvania, Chester County. It's about 4% of the state population. This used to be rock-solid Republican suburbs. But, again, Let's the Democrats have done more successful, especially with suburban women. Watch, we'll watch Chester County as we get there. Let's check in Virginia right now and, and then North Carolina. You see the red? I mean, it's just, at the moment, it's staying. Uh, so you keep thinking, every time you look, are these states going to change? We're up to 76% in Virginia. Uh, we're getting 60,000 votes, right? 61,000 votes ahead in Virginia for Donald Trump right now. And so the question is, you start going, where's, where, where are the Republican votes? So you check these smaller rural counties, and so you're going through these, and you see all the 100%. So if you're in the Trump campaign, you know that in this rock-solid conservative area, yeah. you've pretty much... This is the state of uh, Senator Tim Kaine, the well, vice presidential running mate. This, he was once the governor of Virginia. This would be beyond embarrassing to the Democrats. And if Donald Trump wins Virginia, uh, Donald Trump is probably going to win North Carolina because this is a more Democratic state than North Carolina. So it's one of the things you watch. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're only at 76 percent of the vote. Again, one of the things you always watch in the state of Virginia is, number one, I just want to come down here to look at the Virginia Beach area. Uh, this is a very competitive area down here. Uh, Donald Trump running at 50 percent. Let's compare it as we go back here. 51, 48. So that's about the she's low. She's underperforming. Again, uh, if this holds up, we're going to look down here and see maybe the third party candidates are coming out of here down here. You have to check the exit polls, do some other research to do that. But we'll watch those numbers down there. And then you come up. I just want to check in these Democratic areas, 96 percent, 66 percent. So some more votes to be had here and some more votes to be had at Norfolk City. This is African-American turnout. So it's not just the percentage. In the end, it's the math. How many did you, not just what percentage are you getting, but how many of your voters have you turned out in a place like Norfolk? But then again, Wolf, this is going to sound repetitive and broken record, but this is where most of your votes are, just across the Potomac but, River but in, in the in, northern in Virginia County, suburbs. 85% of the vote is now in. 85%, 55 to 40, if you do that math, 52 to 47. So Secretary Clinton is running stronger than President Obama there. Fairfax County, up, almost up to 70%. But look at the numbers here. This is the, there's a population center here. You have more population center here. So you go through this one here. 
Arlington County is just about in. Alexandria City is all in. Those are big Democratic votes there. And so you're looking around here, you're trying to hunt, you come down here. Prince William County, we're only at 26 percent. Is that right? Yeah, Prince William County only at 26 percent. Hillary Clinton there. I just want to compare that to four years ago again. Uh, she's underperforming at the moment. She is underperforming Wolf here. So Virginia is very close. There's still a lot of votes to be counted in northern Virginia. That's the difference. Hillary Clinton has closed the gap somewhat, but got a little ways to go still, Wolf. All right, now let's do a key race alert right now. All right, let's start out with Florida right now. 94% of the vote is in. You see Donald Trump maintains an impressive lead of 141,000 votes over Hillary Clinton. 29 electoral votes at stake. Uh, Trump is ahead impressively in Ohio. Trump is also ahead. More than half of the vote is in. Donald Trump has a 235,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. Very impressive lead in Ohio right now. 18 electoral votes. In Virginia, Trump is ahead there. He's got a lead of 42,000 Plus, in Virginia, 77% of the vote is in. Donald Trump is ahead in Virginia. He is also ahead significantly in Georgia, 384,000 votes ahead of Hillary Clinton. 41% of the vote is in. 16 electoral votes in Georgia right now, another state where Donald Trump leads. There are more states, more numbers coming in. 76% uh, of the vote is in in North Carolina, and Trump has a 56,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 49.5% to 40. 7.9%. He is ahead in North Carolina right now. 15 electoral votes there. In Michigan, 17% of the vote is in. Look at this. Donald Trump is ahead in Michigan right now as well. 28,000 plus votes over Hillary Clinton. 49% to 45, almost 46% for Hillary Clinton. 16 important electoral votes in Michigan right now. In New Hampshire, 22% of the vote is now in. Trump is ahead in New Hampshire as well. 1,700 vote lead. Now it's just gone down to 900 vote lead. Look at how close it is. 47.7% to 47.2%. A quarter of the vote almost is in in New Hampshire. In Wisconsin, 12% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 25,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. 10 electoral votes in Wisconsin. Now, but this is very early. Only 12% of the vote in Wisconsin is in right now. Uh, we've got more. Colorado, 42% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 55,000 plus vote lead over Donald Trump. 42%, once again, of the vote is in. Nine electoral votes in the state of Colorado. And in Pennsylvania, Hillary Clinton right now has an impressive 154,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. 17% of the vote is now in. Look at this, 56% for Hillary Clinton, almost 41% for Donald Trump. Pennsylvania has 20 electoral votes, but only 17% of the vote is now in. And let's take a look at the electoral map, see where things stand right now. According to our projections, Donald Trump is ahead. He has 128 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Remember, 270, that's the number you need to be elected president of the United States. Donald Trump has the red states. Hillary Clinton has the blue states. All those yellow states, we cannot make a projection too early to, to call. Let's go to the, uh, let's check in with uh, some of the campaign headquarters right now. Uh, Jim Acosta is joining us. Jim, uh, you're over at Trump headquarters. Brianna Keeler is at Clinton headquarters. Jim, what is the mood over there? Uh, there are some happy campers over here at Trump campaign headquarters, Wolf. Uh, it is very clear every time the uh, returns are flashed on the screens here from the state of Florida, this place erupts into cheers. And it's been happening uh, in just the last several minutes when they've been flashing returns from Ohio and Virginia, these other battlegrounds uh, that Donald Trump must win. And Kellyanne Conway, the Trump campaign manager, sent out an email uh, that sort of captures the mood in their war room. She says there's a buzz in the war room that can be felt across the nation. A win is imminent and America will once again be great again. A lot of campaign spin in that, but obviously reflects where they are right now. We're hearing a lot of, uh, you know, pessimism and uh, some people sounding very glum inside this campaign, inside this operation earlier today. Uh, that mood has uh, done a 180, Wolf. Uh, they are feeling much more optimistic tonight. They were even cheering uh, when they were showing the returns for Marco Rubio, a past uh, Trump campaign foe from the primary days. Uh, and so uh, I, I would say, Wolf, uh, that this place does not sound uh, like a losing campaign at this point. They are, uh, I, won't, I won't say jubilant, uh, but every time they, they flash Florida on the screen, it goes wild here. Wolf. Yeah, New York City uh, over the New York Hilton. Uh, uh, Jim, let's go to Brianna Keeler. She's only a mile and a half away or so over at the Javits Center. That's the Clinton headquarters. What's the mood over there, Brianna? 
Well, I will tell you, Wolf, that there are a number of anxious faces, uh, faces that I am looking at here in the crowd. Uh, when we were listening to some of the projections come in at 9 p.m., Hillary Clinton winning some of the states that she was expected to, a lot of cheering. But as we're watching now, some of these very close states, there are a lot of people who are glued to the projections. They've been switching in and out of the uh, big screen between uh, an outside program going on where we just saw Senator Chuck Schumer speaking. He could be the Senate Majority Leader if Democrats are to take over the Senate. But going back now to watching projections, this is what the crowd uh, is anxious to be looking for as they see Florida, they see the vote count very tight. Now, meanwhile, Secretary Clinton is about a mile and a half from here. She's at the Peninsula Hotel. She is uh, obviously watching uh, these returns as well. She's with her family. She's with her husband and her daughter and her son-in-law as well as her grandkids and a, a number of close aides and longtime confidants. She has been working on her speech, uh, both speeches, I should say, and she has aides who are sort of working in some of the fixes she's been doing. But again, a lot of curiosity here about how the night is going to unfold and which of those speeches she's going to be giving Wolf. A lot of uncertainty right now. All right, guys, we'll get back to you soon. Let's go over to Jake and Dana. Look, look at the map right now. Take a look over here. You see Clinton with 97 electoral votes, Trump with 128. You need 270 to win the White House. Uh, and you see, uh, you see what's going on. Trump is doing remarkably well. We have said from the beginning that for Donald Trump to win, he would need to run the table. And right now we are seeing that there is a path, a very clear path for Donald Trump. He is very competitive in all the key states, including Virginia, uh, which could possibly be, uh, uh, there could be the crack in the blue wall, the firewall that Hillary Clinton had. We're seeing uh, very tight races in the Midwest. The numbers are still coming in. A very uh, nail biters, not just in North Carolina, uh, but Florida. It seems entirely possible uh, that Donald Trump uh, could end up having a very strong night, even the night that he's been dreaming of. We have a picture, I think, of Donald Trump with his running mate, uh, Mike Pence, watching the returns coming in. This is a much stronger night than a lot of Republican officials thought was going to happen. We still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, the key states that we really need, uh, that Hillary Clinton really needs to maintain, let's just put this on, on the board, uh, we need to make uh, Hillary Clinton uh, needs to keep Pennsylvania, and she, he, she needs to keep New Hampshire, uh, she needs to keep uh, Michigan, and she needs to keep uh, Virginia. Those four are the ones for all the Hillary Clinton supporters out there wondering, oh my God, we're going to lose Ohio. Oh my God, we're going to lose Florida. Those four are the path. That's the firewall. Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, New Hampshire, and Michigan. But if there is a crack in any of those four states, this is going to be uh, a night where the, the Jacob Javits Center is the wrong place for Hillary Clinton to be. And those four states are states that uh, President Obama carried twice. Mm -hmm. That's right. And look, of all those four states, Virginia is the biggest surprise for really mostly for democrats i will say that republicans uh outside of the trump campaign told the trump campaign long ago forget it virginia's gone even before tim kane became take a look at this so take a look at this sure. Dana. You, you see uh these four states right there and you see uh, the states that, you, uh, that jake just circled virginia pennsylvania new hampshire let's start with virginia donald trump is ahead there by twenty thousand plus votes in virginia and pennsylvania Don hillary clinton is ahead 221,506 votes uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton just changed to 227,000 votes. Look at how close it is in New Hampshire. Uh, only 404 uh, vote. Uh, that's a Donald Trump lead over Hillary Clinton with a quarter of the vote in, in New Hampshire. And take a look at Michigan right now. You see uh, Donald Trump has a lead of 44,000 plus votes in Michigan right now. 19% of the vote is in. You heard, all of us heard, from Donald Trump's uh, advisors over these past several weeks. They had a path, and, and at least right now, it looks like they do have a credible path. They do absolutely have a credible path. And, and uh, look, if this night ends up being the way that Donald Trump and his advisors uh, think and, and hope that it will be, um, boy, I mean, it's going to put the polling industry out of business. It's going to be the, the voter projection biz, uh, industry out of business because uh, there is there. I don't know of one poll that suggested that Donald Trump was going to have this kind of night that he seems to be on track to having. And in fact, you know, we're all we all look at these websites. Um, I don't need to name them, but but uh, that, that prognosticate the odds that Hillary Clinton has this percentage odds that she's going to win. And most of them had Hillary Clinton, the odds of her becoming the mm -hmm. president at over 65 percent. Well, I just logged on to one of them and it has Donald Trump at 54 percent. Now, these are not this is not science. This is prognostication based right. on data coming in and polls and, and the like. But really, we're seeing, first of all, this is not the repudiation of Donald Trump 
and, and Trumpism that I think a lot of Republicans uh, in Washington, D.C. and Democrats hoped. But beyond that, we're seeing, abs as you say, Wolf, a credible path for Donald Trump to the White House. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it certainly could. And, and you know, Jim was talking about the feeling inside the Trump uh, victory party, uh, which, of course, they always call it before we get, they get the results. It's not just there. It's the photo of Donald Trump and Mike Pence watching the returns with the people who have been working on their campaign in the war room is one thing. And then the people who are closest to Donald All Trump right. are watching in a room right now, and they said that the mood has changed completely. Dana, we have two more projections right now. All right, CNN now projects that Hillary Clinton will carry the state of Connecticut with its seven electoral votes. Hillary Clinton wins in Connecticut. Uh, CNN also projects Donald Trump will win Louisiana with its eight electoral votes. Uh, another win for Donald Trump in Louisiana. Let's take a look at the electoral college map, see where it stands with these latest two projections. You can see right now Donald Trump's still ahead. He has 136 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 104 electoral votes. Remember, 270, that's what needed. That's what needed to be elected president of the United States. The red states we projected going to uh, Donald Trump. The blue states we projected going to Hillary Clinton. Let's go over to John King to watch what's going on. John, you're studying this uh, at the Magic Wall so closely right now. Uh, just going through and you're trying to look. Let's just start down here in Florida. I was just emailing back and forth with a key Democrat and Republicans who know this state very well. The Republican is not a fan of Donald Trump, trust me, who thinks that Donald Trump has enough to hold on here. That doesn't mean he will, uh, but we're up to 95 percent here now. And so every time we do this, we go back to the bank of what's left out there. And there's still some votes left in these Democratic areas, but 94 percent. First, let's just go back and do the statewide math. You see right there, 49. Go ahead. I was going to say, I want to get back to Florida in a moment, but let me take a quick break. Uh, we're counting down. We're counting down to another round of poll closings right now at the top of the hour. We're going to get results from three more battleground states that will help decide this presidential election. We're talking about Nevada, Utah, and Iowa. In Miami Beach, uh, people are watching CNN. They're following the close race unfolding in Florida, very close. That crucial battleground state still too early to call. More votes coming in right after this quick break.